Alright, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Shane. That's Shane is Games, and tonight we're going to be playing Grey Matter, uh, a point and click adventure game by Jade Jensen, the same person that made the Gabriel Knight games, which you know I love very dearly. This is going to be our very first time streaming this, so if you just joined us, you haven't missed a thing, but if you'd like to check out some of the games I've played in the past, be them obscure, unusual, or nostalgic, feel free to check out my YouTube channel, where I archive all that stuff. But for right now, let's go ahead and get into the game, shall we? Take a look at items in your inventory to get an idea of their use. Actually, a smart tip for basically any adventure game right there. Jensen! Jensen! Alright, we got the intro cinematic first, so enjoy. completely dead. assistant for Dr. Styles. Oh, she's not. Center for Cognitive Abnormality Research. I can't believe what I did last night. I need to get out of here before they figure out who I really am. Yeah, they're gonna be a little pissed when they find out you completely, totally lied about that. <laughs> Alright, Bravo Tango, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you are doing well. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe I'm the new assistant. You don't know. I suppose I don't know. I suppose I don't know very much about that. Who is she talking to? Which one? The first lady or our character right there? Because there was a little intercom right there, so she pushed the button and she was talking into the intercom. Um, I think that's what you mean. Uh, let's see. Let me catch up on chat. Yeah, riding bike in the rain, I cannot imagine it is, is any fun. I mean, she had, like, a helmet and leathers, so I suppose that's something, but it still seems like it would be a really bad experience. Uh, we're just really sort of damp and cold and unpleasant. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I apologize, I should have warned you folks beforehand, but the cinemas in this game are way louder than anything else, because, hey, it's an old game, of course it is, and there's absolutely nothing I can do to smooth that out, so... Uh, high up, it looks like, uh, looks like Automod actually grabbed that. Um, I didn't put that in there. I think it's just part of the Automod rule set. Um, I, I don't specifically have a problem with it, but that was definitely Automod grabbing it right there. Uh, let's see. I have set manually very few things in Automod. I think I have, I have a bunch of terms in Automod, but I think only like one or two of them have ever been used, and the rest have just been things that are in the Automod default rule set. So, surprisingly, that's actually in the default Automod rule set. 
Go figure. Spinach, that's how all your opening job interviews go to? Wait, which part, Spinach? The part where you're scared away by a hideous creature in the night? Or the part where you just pretend to be the actual applicant and the slide in there? <laughs> oh, let's see. I suppose my, I suppose they do actually need a new assistant at this point, so possibly, possibly she could potentially be the new assistant. Could possibly be. <laughs> uh, let's see. Decaffeinated should be banned. My dad drinks decaffeinated. I don't understand it. Like, here's the thing. I understand decaffeinated in coffee in the sense that you're like, oh, I drank coffee for years and years and I like the taste and I'm accustomed to it, but I'm trying to cut back on my caffeine input. So I just try to split the middle. That I can understand. My dad, my dad has never drank coffee in his life except when he started drinking decaf. I don't get that. I don't understand how that happened. I don't. I don't understand the uh, the appeal. Personally, it's very confusing to me. <laughs> decaffeinated does not taste like coffee. I'll have to say I haven't actually had a lot of decaffeinated. In the I've only had like one or two cups, and I'm like, this isn't. I don't like. I like coffee enough, but I think if it wasn't for the caffeine, I don't think I'd go for coffee. I don't think I enjoy coffee that much. That if it didn't give me a kick, too, I'd go for it as well. I think that's uh, probably my thing. All right, so we're doing a tutorial first. You're going to recognize most of this, but there's a couple interesting facets to this. Learn how to play by helping Sam get her pet rabbit Houdini settled in. You need to find Houdini and then give him food and water. This, I think, is cute because the tutorial is optional. You can see there's a skip button right there. But, um... Uh, if you do choose to do the tutorial, it's actually a special puzzle that isn't in the game otherwise. They set up this puzzle just for the tutorial, and it's really cool. I like that. Let's see, Emperor, I can understand decaf if you want a coffee-ish drink, and that's another good thing. Basically, if you, if you like coffee, but you'd like, I don't want the caffeine right now, that I can totally get. But to say, I've never drank coffee, I'm just going to start and end at decaf. That's weird to me. That really is. Your mission, should you choose to accept it. <laughs> Geek Boy, I really hope my computer doesn't self-destruct at the end of this. That'd be terrifying. <laughs> Alright, first find Houdini, look around the room, move the cursor over items that look interesting, click on everything that gives you a special cursor. So, standard adventure game stuff right here. You can see when my cursor turns to an eyeball right there, that means I can look at something. And if we hover over something for just a moment, we actually get a name that we can see what we're actually highlighting right there. It doesn't happen immediately, so I can't just scroll around the room until I get a tag. Uh, but there are some things that I can click on like that. Houdini likes to climb into beds, but he's not in this one. All right, so he's not in the bed right there. There's water, but I can't give any to Houdini until I've found Houdini. Where did you go, you silly rabbit? Can you imagine how miserable it would be transporting a rabbit by cage on a motorcycle down a dirt road in the rain? I feel bad for the poor rabbit, but I almost feel as bad for her. That seems like that would be horrible. <laughs> have you tried cappuccino? You know, I don't think I have. I'm still kind of new to coffee overall, so there's a lot of stuff I haven't tried yet, but I'm trying to expand my horizons. I would very much like that. The Desperado, I have three rabbits, you don't want this? Oh man, I can't even imagine. I forgot you had those rabbits, too. They're cuties, too. They absolutely are. <laughs> I can imagine they probably wouldn't enjoy... I, I don't think they'd sit very still being on a motorcycle. <laughs> I can imagine that might make them lose their little buddy minds. The poor things. I feel worse for them thinking about it. There's something odd about that plant. All right, hang on, I see something moving down here. And see, we get a little hand cursor down here, too. And there's the little bastard. Houdini! There you are. Are you scared? Or just up to your usual tricks, you furball, you? I was worried. Don't pick up a rabbit by its ears, holy shit, don't Stay do that. Stay put for at least ten minutes, will you, Who? 
That is a horrible piece of animation right there. Do not pick up a rabbit by its ears. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let's see, they get all skittish in the car in a carrier, some motorcycle- Oh god! And I suppose the worst thing would be if, uh, if it, like, starts running around. I imagine the weight moving around wouldn't make, uh, balancing a motorcycle super fun. Yeah, she picked it up by the friggin' ears! Why would- why would she do that? Also, should I say I love that she named her rabbit Houdini, because it's got a dual purpose, because number one, our main character is a magician, and number two, her rabbit keeps escaping from its cage. Houdini! Perfect. Absolutely perfect. She watched too much Bugs Bunny? Honestly, probably. Probably. It's you pick it up by their front paws, let their back legs stay on the ground, and then you have a little dance with them. You let them you make them dance. You make them dance and then you put it on Instagram. That's how it works. Very simple. I'm glad you know the rules, Rin. <laughs> Alright, good, you still need to find give Houdini food and water. Check around the room to find these items. Make sure not to miss Sam's backpack. Now this part of the tutorial is handy because it's very easy to miss Sam's backpack in this room because it's not super obvious, but you are not going to progress in the game if you don't get the Sam's backpack. If you haven't seen it in the room already, it's this thing right here. This little brown splotch laying against the bed right there. That's, that's her backpack, and we absolutely need to get into it. So let's do that right now. Because there's more than one thing we need in there. Excuse me. Progress. We're making progress. So let's see what all we've got in here. A clean, crisp deck of cards is one of the necessities of life. All right, we got a deck of cards. Hey, mom and dad. Looks like the rain didn't hurt you. That's cool. Can you tell her dad's a magician? Is it obvious enough from that picture? You never want to say, "Wow, that dude looks like a magician," but wow, that dude looks like a magician. <laughs> have some Houdini goodies left. That rabbit eats better than I do. Alright, we got a carrot for Houdini. You found the carrot, now give it to Houdini. Access the inventory by moving the cursor to the top of the screen. Right click on the carrot to ready it. Then left click on the cage to feed Houdini. So this, the, the game in here uses a system where you kind of equip items. You'll see once we get out there, but it's uh, interesting. Alright, what else have we got in here? The Deedless Club London. I will get there, one way or another. So the basic story here is Sam is a magician, our main character, and she is trying to find a secretive society of elite magicians called the Didas Club, based in London. Um, that's her, her overall motivation right here. All I have is five pounds. I should never have bought that piece of crap bike in Liverpool. It wiped me out. That's a bad thing to be traveling in the middle of the country and you've only got five pounds in your name. Brutal. A girl traveling alone has to have more than a few tricks up her sleeve. Swiss Army knife, nice, nice. Here's a water bottle. Houdini's water bottle. Unfortunately, it's empty. Amazing considering how soaked I got last night. A towel is the most massively useful thing a hitchhiker can have. She said it. She said the thing. She said the thing. <laughs> My first magic book. The tricks are kind of juvenile, but the basic techniques are timeless. I never go anywhere without it. I'm almost done reading it. Trey Gothic. I don't need to carry it around, though. Never forget your towel, Kirby Pink. Never. Now, I personally am a hoopy fruit that knows where my towel is. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying is that I know where my towel is. A letter from the foster care department back in D.C. I don't need to take it. All right, and that is everything we need out of Sam's backpack. So we need to give Houdini his food, so we go to the top of the screen, and here is our inventory. We can scroll through there, but we've got the carrot right here, so we right-click on that, and you see it appears in that hand right in the top right corner of the screen, and that's basically your equipped item, and that's the item you'll use to interact with things right now, so... We've got that, so you notice when I hover over the cage now, it's got a little hand icon with a question mark in it. Which means you can use your current item to interact. He's not huge, it's just like right next to the camera. For shortening. There you go. The hard stuff. Don't overdo it now. You never could hold your carrots. The hard stuff. 
Good job! Now you just need to find water for Houdini. Keep looking around and clicking on everything that gives you a special cursor. Well, we've already seen where there's water in the room. We just need to get her to move out of the way. Let's see. The cursor is the empty inventory item cursor. That means you need to use one of the inventory items. In this case, the water bottle. Open the inventory, right-click the water bottle, and click on the picture. All right, easy enough. Let's get her to move out of the way real quick. Go back up to our inventory, right-click the water bottle, and then click on the water picture. Excellent. Now give the water bottle to Houdini, open the inventory, and right-click the water bottle, and click on the cage. All right, so we need to select the now full water bottle, equip that, and then click on his cage right there. Ease peas! Yum. Nice, cool water. Congratulations! You have looked after Houdini and finished the tutorial. Now you are free to explore the rest of Dread Hill House. Good luck. All right, we have officially started. That's the tutorial right there. Kind of cute. I appreciate it. Also, Houdini is a cute little bun bun. I like that too. <laughs> I mean, technically, you know, like fresh carrots are pretty hard. So it could be a literal thing too. You never know. So let's check out the other items in our inventory real quick. Because uh, there's a couple things in here. Yeah, Bob, that name is uh, very ominous, most definitely. So let's check out the items we got, because a couple of them warrant a little bit further inspection. I thought we would look after the real Houdini. <laughs> We're not going to feed and water Houdini. He can do that himself. He better do it. No, so, so first we've got Sam's diary. The diary contains all the dialogues and descriptions you have found. Select the chapter you want by clicking on the numbered tab. Right click on the page to turn it. So we've got a, a record of everything we've seen and said and heard in here. Uh, which will definitely fill up very quickly, but if we need to refer back to anything, we can do it in here. It's going to get a little unwieldy, but if we absolutely need to, that can be done. Hey, John! Welcome in! Got here just in time for the bunny portion of the stream. How are you doing today, John? Hope you're having a good weekend. Feel like maybe that rabbit needs a bigger cage? I mean, I suppose she's traveling right now. So that's a, as a travel cage, it's actually pretty spacious. Like, as a cage to be loaded on the back of a motorcycle, that's a pretty generously sized cage. But yeah, as a cage to, like, live in regularly, that's very tiny. Very, very tiny. But luckily, it doesn't have a wider bottom, because I know that rabbits don't like wire bottom cages. So there's the thing. So there's our journal. What else have we got in here that we need to look at? Uh, we need to take a quick look at her magic handbook as well. Sam's magic book contains basic tricks that may come in handy. Right click on a page to turn it. If Sam decides to perform a trick, pick one by left clicking it. So this is an interesting thing. Is Sam's got this book here of basic magic tricks. And these tricks can be verbs that we use to solve puzzles. Now, you might be thinking, how would a magic trick solve a puzzle? Well, you don't do the entire trick. You just use the basic idea of a trick to get yourself out of a situation. Um, so it's a really interesting mechanic, and we will be using this several times throughout the game. So we'll take a quick look through here. Let's see. John doing well, still busy with the packages. Taking a break, coffee time. Excellent. I hope you have a good coffee and a nice relaxing break. Jenna, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you are having a good weekend. Good to see you. So let's see, several things a professional magician needs to remember. In the first place, you need to choose the right trick according to your situation, browse through the book to find it. Once you've made your choice, mentally prepare yourself to pull it off. Consider the moves you need to make and remember to line up the right amount of steps. If you make a mistake, you'll have to go back to the last correct move. So beware of losing your concentration. When you have the right sequence memorized, you're ready to perform the trick. A professional stage magician employs simple moves. Basic moves, you may recognize this if you've seen Penn and Teller explain the basic moves of a magic trick, which if you haven't seen that, go check it out. Uh, load an object from your inventory to a secret location on your body. Palm an object from the inventory or from a location on your body. Vanish an object from a hand or pocket or sleeve. Move an object from hand to hand. 
excuse me, take an object from the environment into a hand, plant an object from a hand into the environment, manipulate an object in your hand, and misdirect the audience. You'll be seeing those terms in uh, all caps come up a lot in this book. Let's see, Jenny, your week weekend is going okay. I started your last semester in university and you are stressed. Ooh, think of it this way, Jenna. If you're in the last semester, that means you are in the home stretch. You've already come this far. You've only got a little bit more to do before you have knocked it out of the park. So good luck to you, Jenna. I hope you do great. I, and if you ever need a place to uh, unwind and de-stress, we will be here for you. No worries. Oh, I'm making another pot of coffee. Excellent, Rin. Mission accomplished. So what kind of tricks did we have in here? We've got the locked room mystery, uh, which this one it basically just involves using a little tool called a remote noise maker, where we toss it in a room and then push a button and then it makes some noises. Uh, we've got the destroyed and restored ring trick, where you basically take someone's wedding ring and pretend to toss it into a garbage disposal or something while you actually palm the real ring and then restore it and be like, ta-da. Uh, we've got the Divide and Conquer, uh, which is where uh, you you find somebody's card in a shuffled deck, uh, but you also appear to cut some of the cards with like with scissors, um, which is interesting. Uh, they actually explain how to do the trick in real life, which is pretty cool. Uh, the Shredded and Restored Newspaper. Um, which involves, uh, similar to the other, the, the fake ring trick, um, I'm pretending to destroy somebody's newspaper when you actually palm the real thing. Uh, you've got the last great disappearing ink trick, which is where you basically splash ink on someone and then they're like, Oh my god, you've ruined my clothing, but surprise, it's disappearing ink. So there's that too. Let's see, Jenna, honestly, the classes aren't even that bad, it's just anxiety. Oh yeah, anxiety doesn't really care if it's logical or not, it just comes in there. I feel you there. Now, we've got the ominous mailbag, which is basically the, uh, that thing where you have, like, a super long scarf that you pull out of somewhere. So that's a thing. Um... Oh no, sorry, this is the one where you, uh, you hand someone a letter, but you, you swap it at the last second with a letter that you, you set up beforehand so you know what's in there. So there's a thing. Uh, telephone Psychic, which is basically the magic trick of palming your cell phone and then calling them from the other room. Um, you got the Bottomless Cup, which is a trick involving uh, a magnet and some metal, metal object that you appear to disappear into the cup. Uh, you got the Up in Smoke, or you have somebody uh, sign a card and then you appear to burn it and then you produce it later. Uh, you got the super gross out self healing wound, which is a trick involving a fake thumb, spirit gum, and stage blood, which we don't have any of that, so we won't worry too much about that. And the fruit bowl, which is where you have a bunch of people put names into a hat, and then you force the name that you want out of the hat. So many of those are going to come into play in the game as verbs that we'll need to use to solve puzzles before. That's why I wanted to run through it really quick. So that's going to be interesting. All right. So I think we're all done in here. So let's go ahead and head out. Start exploring this place a little bit. See what we can see. I need to get out of here before they figure out I'm an imposter. But first, I need to find a map or bus schedule or something so I can figure out where I'm going. All right, there's our objectives. Get the hell out of the mansion before we're discovered and find a map or bus schedule. So what do we got? We got a door to the foyer right there. Let's go check that out real quick. See what that looks like. Oh, that leads out to the, the front of the mansion, doesn't it? This is fancy. Not a soul. Pretty quiet, too. Alright, press the space bar to turn the hotspot labels on and off. This function displays all the interactive zones on the screen. So this is handy if we ever want to make sure we've seen everything on screen. 
there is all of this right here, so that's good. But it's not on by default, you have to turn it on. Uh, so let's explore the rest of upstairs real quick, and then we'll head downstairs. What else have we got in here? Gargoyle statues. Those gargoyles look like they were taken from an old building or something. I like the look. We got a cabinet. Some dusty old armor in there. Again, very gothic feeling. I kind of dig it. We've got a monk statue up there. Looks like a monk, or Quasimodo post-surgery. I, I suppose, sure. We got a painting over here. Weird painting. A woman and an owl. I like it. Pretty surreal. That's actually pretty cool. I kind of like that painting. I would have that painting most definitely. Let's see. I don't think I... <sighs> I don't miss school that much. What I miss is the amount of free time I had during my school days. Oh my god, do I miss that so much. And the just general lack of responsibilities. Now, what do we got over here? David's bedroom. Can we go in there? Hmm. Looks like it might be another bedroom. Don't think I'll go there. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous. Let's not do that. Alright, let's head over to the foyer then. I got more free time than I ever had, you're lucky then, because I am functionally working 60 hours a week every week between uh, stream and work, so I don't get much in the way of free time these days. <laughs> Whereas back when I was in school, I would get bored sometimes. I would get bored. I would have periods where I had nothing to do. I don't even remember what that's like anymore. <laughs> Lack of responsibility doesn't sound very Boy Scouty. Boy Scouts have downtime. Boy Scouts definitely have downtime sometimes. Do I miss seeing your friends from school? Sometimes. I mean, I still do see the ones that, uh, well, you know, COVID aside, I still see the ones that I uh, really uh, knew well from school. You know, nothing keeping you from keeping in touch with people, especially with, you know, as much social media as there is. You can always poke people when you want to. Get reacquainted. It's a thing. Excuse me. All right, what do we have to look at around here? We got another fancy portrait on the wall over here. She's beautiful. Kind of a Grace Kelly type. Wonder who she is. Good question. I like how the painting actually looks like a painting. Like, you can actually see, like, the brushwork on there. Like, the, the, the texture of the canvas is actually in there. That's a nice touch. It was very cool. She's beautiful. Exactly. Your life doesn't stop when you leave school. That's basically the prologue is over. You finish the tutorial. You're ready to start the main body of the game. <laughs> All right. Let's see what else there's to look at. Oh, there's a lion at the bottom of the the stair uh, banister. That's not something you'd want to run into while stumbling upstairs in the dark. I can imagine. That's true. Out of high school for 41 years. Oh, that's wild. That's wild. <laughs> Alright, we've got a phone over here. I don't think we have anybody to call for right right now, but we'll take a look at that. There's no one I can call. I don't know a soul here. And I can't call a repair shop because I don't have any money. Truth, truth. Uh, I got another I got a lady statue up here. It looks kinda like the monk upstairs. Look at that statue of a veiled woman. I have no idea what it's supposed to mean. But it's sinister as hell. I love it. Excellent. Uh, let's see what else. We've got a door right here. It leads to the kitchen. And we've got an envelope here labeled New Assistant. Let's see what that's all about. Now, for the New Assistant, it says... It says, for the New Assistant... Hopefully, by the time they figure out I'm not that person, I'll be long gone. Alright, so we're not going to take that yet, because we are not, in fact, the new assistant. That makes sense. Let's see if we can get into the kitchen. I hear someone in there. I better not. Alright, kitchen's occupied. Let's not do that. Uh, how about the parlor? Can we head into there? Let's see. 
Let's see. Deficits are usually time and or money. Man, do I feel that. And a holy hell is this a parlor right here. Alright, I think we've... I think we've got a few things to look at in here. How about the skeleton over here? I take it the patients have to wait a long time around here. Rim shot. Uh, you got a big old bookshelf back here. That's awesome. Someone must read a lot. Someday, I'll have a library. Man, that is the dream right there. That is the dream. Girl of Tomorrow, welcome in. How are you feeling today? How are things going for you? I hope you are doing okay. And it is a pleasure to see you in here. Alright, so let's continue looking around. There is so, so much to see in this room. It's hard to know where to start. Um, let's sneak, at the de sneak on the desk. There are no maps or bus schedules lying around. Not even an address. High up looks like you'll buy this game. Awesome! I hope you enjoy it when you play it. Now, I, I forgot to mention at the start of the stream, actually. This game has a very tortured uh, development. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that because this game was originally announced in 2006 and didn't end up coming out till 2011. Uh, during that time, it was dumped by two different publishers because that was kind of the, the adventure game apocalypse when every publisher was deciding that they don't want to make adventure games anymore. Uh, so it ended up eventually being released by a German publisher. Um, the horrible thing is this game was unavailable in the U.S. for a very long time because shortly after the game came out in the U.S., its American publisher went bankrupt um, and that meant uh, even though it was supposed to come to Steam, it never did. Um, so recently, a few years ago, a different company finally acquired the rights and they put it on Steam, so you can get it on there right now. Um, but despite it coming out in 2011, you could not buy this game for the longest time in the United States. Um... Which is why when I originally got into this, this was a pretty rare game, uh, at least from my perspective. I'm glad you can uh, just pick it up now. That's a very good thing. Uh, let's see. Girl of Tomorrow, you're doing all right? Thanks. Good to hear. Good to hear. Emperor, you have no rebuttal, so I have a buddy vote. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Let me catch up right here. I mean, they do make a lot of decent single-player games. I mean, Ghost of Tsushima? It just came out pretty recently. I heard that's a very good single-player game. There's there's some companies that are turning away from it, certainly, but they're still out there, most definitely. All right, what else have we got in here? Let's check out this globe over here. There's no, you are here on the globe, unfortunately. It, it, she's so sassy. There's a zippered pouch on the desk, too. Let's check that out. I could really use a bit of that, even 20 pounds. I'm stone broke. But it's the magician's creed. Never take cash or other valuables. I just can't. Alright, so no petty thievery. I suppose that's a good thing. Take a peek at the computer here, too. That computer is ancient. It might as well be an abacus. You know that gray case usually is a good indication. Haven't seen any that you like lately, so there's a big difference between the, they're not coming out with any and there's none coming out that you like. But I do understand that, and I, I hope you'll be able to find some that you enjoy. Alright. I don't think there's anything else on the desk to see, but I'm making sure. It's a very big clickable area right there. There's a box of photos here, too. Oh, that's on the floor, though. Looks like family photos. Nothing of use to me in there. Alright, nothing to worry about there. Got some photos of patients on the desk back here. Well, all right. Are these some of the doctor's patients? Um, interesting. We've got a guy that's missing a leg. We've got a woman that might be missing an eye. And a child that's missing both of her arms interesting pictures to keep around, but we don't know much about the doctor that owns this place yet. Uh, we've got a big anatomical statue over here. Huge anatomical statue. Lovely. Just what I want to see when I'm waiting in a doctor's office. It is a little gruesome. Maybe it didn't need to be that huge. I'll agree. Oh, what else have we got to see in here? 
Fire dogs? What the heck is a fire dog? It doesn't look like anyone's used that fireplace in ages. What in the heck is a fire dog? I haven't heard that term before. Let's see. Shadow, welcome in. There is a spooky, scary skeleton in here. He's sending shivers down my spine. I can't confirm. <laughs> Let's see. Havoc, welcome in. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. The bone saws. Sorry, it is very hot over here, so I'm very thirsty. Marksman, welcome in. How are you doing today? Oh, what else have we got? We got another bookshelf over here. We got a demon statue. That's a little spooky. You know, this house is downright creepy. And I'm an ex-goth. I know creepy. <laughs> she says ex-goth, but she's only wearing black and white and has on a shitload of eyeshadow. I think maybe old habits die hard, perhaps. Now, we got some diplomas over here. See what we got. Dr. David Stiles, neurobiology. Hope he finds the assistant he's looking for. All right, so the scientist that lives in this house is a neurobiologist, which raises more questions about those photos he had of his patients, but we'll see where that's going right there. The doc is a real cut up, oh God. 24C over here, let's see, right now, Right now in my room, it's about 78 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's actually coming down from where it was when I started streaming, but it's still pretty toasty in here. Ren, you say a fire dog is used to hold the logs off the base of the fireplace. Oh, all right, so like a like a little like lift grate type thing. All right, I, I can picture that. I've never heard that term. It's interesting. Thank you for looking that up. Lee to it's 25.5 degrees uh, Celsius. It is pretty ew, and that's with the air conditioner running for the last two hours as well. So it was much hotter in here before. But how are you doing, Lee Two? Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. And irons. I've never heard that term either. But then again, I've never lived in a house with a fireplace. So that might be part of it too. Quite possibly. Oh, let's see. go ahead and back out of there and there's also a photo of a couple down here let's check that out nice couple they look happy annoyingly perfect maybe but happy all right we got that Nash right here we'll take a peek at that I suppose doing fantastic it's good to hear Leah too excellent I don't smoke all right guess we don't need the ashtray um anything else Take a quick peek. Huh. I think we actually got everything. Cool. What's the door back here? Office door. Let's see if we can peek in there. It's locked. All right. We're going in there, I suppose. Uh, all right. I think I've seen everything we can see in here. Let's go head out. Whew, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, Bob. That is nice and comfy. I do like those temperatures. All right, let's head to the front entry right here at the bottom of the screen. Or heading into the foreground, I suppose. Let's see what we've got out here. I think I noticed a plaque yesterday. I should have a look. Uh, yeah, the plaque right in the front of the house right here. That looked a lot more worn in the opening cinema. Center for Cognitive Abnormality Research? And this seemed like such a good idea last night. That does sound a little bit spooky. No lie. Excuse me. Oh, I know I love the music in this game high up. That, that chill, sort of vaguely unsettling piano music. It's very cool. Alright, let's take a look at the house. What does she got to say about that? A bit creepy, but I kind of like that. It's got a nice vibe. I respect that. Uh, let's head to the back exterior, see if there's anything to see over there. 19C there, and rainy. I, I do like uh, a little bit of rain. That's why I like fall so much. A little bit of wind, a little bit of overcast, a little bit of rain. It's nice. All right, what do we got back here? Got a garage. I stuck my bike in there last night. I'll probably ditch it. It'll cost too much to fix it, and it's a piece of junk anyway. 
Yeah, it's probably for the best. Probably. Got a big old tower over here. That tower looks strange standing by itself like that. It's almost like a miniature or replica. A little spooky. Got a statue over here too. I love all this old gothic stuff around here. Neat house. I didn't notice it until she commented on it, but actually, if you notice, the tower isn't connected to the rest of the building. Completely disconnected. That is really strange. We can't actually go into the tower or anything. Uh, so it looks like the only thing to do here is head back to the front entry. Don't miss monsoon season? You miss monsoon season? You don't miss the humidity, but the storms are amazing? I bet those are pretty cool. I would like to see a couple of those, most definitely. We have gotten a lot of rain in uh, the Chicagoland area. Seems like it's raining on and off every uh, every day or two this year. Um, let's see, anything else to see here? I need to find a map or something. I have no idea where the nearest bus stop is. Alright, so we must have missed something inside of the house. Let's head back in and see if we can find a map or a bus schedule. Typing with a sleeping toddler in your lap is harder than you think. I, I've tried uh, I've tried playing World of Warcraft with a sleeping cat in my lap. It's not very, it's not easy. I can imagine. Oh, hello. Uh oh. There you are. I was just going to see if he was awake. Oh, hi. You aren't sneaking out on us, are you? Me? Nah. -uh. Well, come and get your breakfast. I've got eggs, porridge, toast, and ham. Be a shame to let it go cold. No shit? I mean, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Way to blow your cover immediately. I'm starving. I guess if they aren't onto me by now, another half an hour won't hurt. Just completely blew the cover instantly. <laughs> oh well, we're getting something to eat at least. That sounds tasty. Do we head in the kitchen? Yeah, let's head in there. <laughs> Go ahead, dear. Don't be shy about it. Mm, it smells amazing. I didn't know how you took your eggs, so I made them the way I like them. But I can do them however you like starting tomorrow. I'm not picky. One way's easy as another. People need a good breakfast, I always say. Oh my god, these are the best eggs I've ever tasted. <laughs> well now, himself does like them fresh. We've got a farmer drops them off every few days. Bit peckish, are you? What do they feed you over there at Oxford? Oxford? Um, the usual. And I never saw anyone in my life as cold, wet and tired as you last night. Hope he didn't walk all that way. There's a bus stop just down the road, no more than 20 yards. Takes you right to Oxford Centre. Wow. Still going on about them eggs, are you? No, I just can't believe my luck lately. Well, before you go off, himself left instructions for you on the door to the basement. Himself? Oh, I mean Dr. Stiles, of course. He's working down in the lab this morning and doesn't want to be disturbed. Now, I know you must have a question or two. Don't be shy about asking, Samantha. It's Sam, but funny. I don't remember telling you my name last night. There was a tag on your backpack when I washed your clothes. You really should update it to your Oxford address, dear. Wouldn't do having someone ship it back to the States if you lost it, now would it? Oh, and I'm Mrs. Dalton. I did tell you, but I suspect you were half asleep at the time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're, we're not doing great at this whole maintaining a cover identity, but apparently we're still doing okay. I suspect they didn't want to animate her actually eating, so they're just having her uh, turn her back to the camera. Right, let's ask some questions here. Who all lives here? Lord, it must seem a big old empty place to you. Sometimes I forget. It's only himself and me. Just two people? In this huge old house? He can't abide company. Look, he can be difficult. 
I'll never say otherwise. But no matter what you've heard over there at that university, don't believe it. All I ask is that you make up your own mind. If you can do that and not be faint of heart, you'll be all right. Okay. But whatever you do, don't mention the accident. Okay, a couple interesting things there. Apparently there's rumors about the good doctor at Oxford University. Um, apparently you need to have a, a, a strong stomach to work for him. And apparently we must not mention the accident. Yeah, there's some red flags going up here. I'm not, I'm not quite sure we should be sticking around. <laughs> I saw a plaque by the door. Center for Cognitive Abnormality Research. What does that mean, exactly? The center was Dr. Stiles' idea. He started it with his friend, Dr. Hellborn. How excited they were. It was busy, too. Or starting to be. Then something happened, and... Well, he closed it. What does that mean? Cognitive abnormality. Didn't that school tell you anything? Dr. Stiles worked with patients who had strokes or brain injuries and the like. Always said those kinds of cases helped him understand the workings of the brain better than looking at a healthy one. He's retired now? Oh, you could say that. He hasn't seen patients in years. All right, so the doctor works on brain damage cases, but he's retired from active practice. He's just doing research right now. Interesting. Hey, Fuzzy Dimples, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you're having a good weekend so far. Yeah, Hellborn is a pretty badass name. Sounds more like a, a, a gothic superhero or anything. Yeah, the music is a little loud. I'm going to see if I can turn down the music after uh, once we get out of this dialogue. Um, I, I've, I've been myself having a little trouble hearing it over the music. I don't know if there's a separate slider for that, but we'll hope so. How far are we from London? London? Oof, hour and a half, I'd say. Car or train would run you about the same. Of course, you'd never catch me driving in London. Oh, not for a million pounds. That's not bad. Far enough away to be grateful, not so far as to be sorry. <laughs> or so the locals say. Can I say? You know, before I came to Oxford, I would have never imagined there was so much uninhabited countryside so nearby. Oh, there's plenty of country around here. And thank heavens for it. How long does the bus take to get into Oxford Centre? 30 minutes like. Makes a lot of stops on the way. By the by, what college are you in? Did the student employment office say it was St Edmund Hall? Or am I thinking of something else? Mm, it is St Edmund Hall. Nice college from what I've heard. Hmm. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a feeling we're going to be struggling to maintain this cover identity right there. Washing her hair with whatever that drink is supposed to be. She's really putting it away. Seriously, how much does she have on that plate? Fuzzy Dimple's having trouble sleeping, so you thought you'd hang out with us? Well, excellent. I hope you're able to get to sleep soon, though. But I appreciate you stopping by. So, what exactly does Dr. Stiles' assistant do around here? I mean, as you see it. Never had one before. I'm sure they told you at the student employment office. It's mainly paperwork he wants done. Files sorted, computer work, things of that sort. You should have plenty of time to keep up with your studies. I told him there's no use sending over a medical student. He'd never let you touch his actual work. <laughs> I take it you're not in the sciences. Was it the tattoos that gave me away? <coughs> no offence, dear. <laughs> what is it that you study? Um... English lit. Well, that's all right then, isn't it? Now, I wanted to ask, will you be wanting the room or will you be staying at the university? The room? The room you were in last night. It's yours whenever you want it. It's empty otherwise, isn't it? Empty. Meals too. If you're late, I'll leave you dinner in the fridge. I'm sure a girl like you knows how to use a microwave. <laughs> sure. All right, so the assistant job comes with a free free room and board. That's pretty classy. Definitely pretty nice. Oh, let's see. I know they told me this at university, but I'm not sure I remember it correctly. Besides the room and board, the position pays. Well, I never. Catch a fever last night, did you? I'd have thought that would be the first thing on a student's mind. Sure. 
But I was looking at a whole list of available jobs, and I'm afraid I might be confusing them. 50 pounds. Right. That's what I thought. Thanks. Not terrible. Not terrible. I noticed the painting on the stairway. Beautiful girl. Is that Dr. Stiles' daughter? If you want to get along in this house, that's the sort of thing you don't ask. Ever. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay. Touchy about the painting. Very touchy about the painting. Good to know. Duly noted. Alright, let's see. There's the chapter progress. Oh. I need to find a map or something. I have no idea where the nearest bus stop is. There's a current objective. Uh, is it just escape for the options menu? It is escape for the options menu. Um, let's see. We do have a music slider. Let's try turning the music down a little bit. Let's try turning the game audio up a little bit. Make the voices a little bit louder. Let me know if this is any better as far as audio. And we will adjust from there. Hopefully per day. Yeah, she didn't actually say whether it was per day or per week, per month. There's there's a lot of uh, wiggle room right there. Yeah, seriously, Havoc, this seems like a pretty good deal. I mean, d depending on whether it's how much that 50 pounds is. She just said 50 pounds. But the room and board alone makes this a pretty sweet deal, especially for uh, our protagonist right here. She seems nice enough, but you never can tell. The suspicious type. I get you there. Anything else to see around here? They're well stocked for just two people. I suppose there must have been a lot more living here once upon a time. Presumably. You don't build a house this big for two, I don't think. It looks a bit gloomy out there. And she's completely wiped out her uh, breakfast, so nothing more to see there. Seems a bit better. Does it need to be more better? Because I can do that if need be. Take a look at that envelope again. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. Let's see. Want a closer look at an item? Zoom in and out using the mouse wheel. Move the item around by holding down the right mouse button. Alright. To the new person, there is one thing for you to do today. Call it a test, if you will. If you cannot accomplish it, pack your things and return to the campus by evening. I plan to start an experiment, but despite putting up a few of these notices in town, no lost lambs have telephoned. Find me six student volunteers for tonight. Leave your cell phone number with Mrs. Dalton, Dr. Stiles. I'm sorry, lost lambs? Lost lambs, that's a... That's a very specific wording and a very strange wording. Alright, so we need six student volunteers. He didn't say what for, but it looks like there's something back here. Cash paid for, exp for experimental subjects for a neurobiology experiment. 15 pounds per hour. Register with Dr. Stiles. Alright, so it still doesn't say what it is. It just says it's a neurobiology experiment. I can see why people might be a little hesitant to jump into that, especially if the doctor's quietly referring to people as lost lambs. It's a little weird. This shouldn't be too hard. Students always need money, right? Betsy, sure doesn't sound like someone will be poking around my brain. I'm in. I mean, I hope they wouldn't be. Otherwise, that's pretty unnerving. The phone number setup is very jarring. Oh, because it's in the UK and it's an American style number there, isn't there? <laughs> I, I assume so. All right, so we have our uh, task. Uh, so let's see. Is that our next objective? Styles wanted me to leave my cell phone number. I should talk to Mrs. Dalton about that before I go. All right, so we talk to Mrs. Dalton, then we head over to the university and see if we can find some recruits, I suppose. That feels like it's going to be a little tricky since we don't actually know anybody at the university, but a job's a job, I suppose. 
I have a problem. Dr. Stiles asked me to leave my cell phone number with you, but I don't have one. Oh, take mine. My sister's the only one who ever calls me on it, and she's on holiday. Are you sure? Thank you. I had one, but there was this incident with a ground squirrel. Ugly. They could be nasty blighters, can't they? I can't tell if that was a legit thing or not, but that's... That's a very strange story to tell. Alright, let's take a quick peek at that in the old inventory. Oh, it's an old, like an old, like, uh, candy bar style phone. That's all there is. Oh, it's got games! It's got Snake! Oh my god! <laughs> Mrs. Dalton has a max score right there. 9,999. Miss Dalton, you're a beast. Can we, can we actually play Snake? Oh my god, we can actually play Snake. Yes! New game found. We're playing Snake now. This is the next 12 hours of stream. Oh god, this is right on the edge. That's the tough one. Alright, we got it. Back to the center. This is tough when you don't physically have the keys to press. Oh, we got that one. We're getting kind of big and chunky. We're getting kind of big and chunky. Nope. nope. Oh, we got it. Oh, God. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, jeez. Mad gaming skills. God damn it. 598. We did okay. We did okay. <laughs> Snake is a must, it's a classic. An absolute classic. <laughs> Alright, we should actually check out what else is on there. Looks like they're calling the kitchen the kitchen to be hip. That does sound pretty hipster. <laughs> I take it we've got some folks in chat that remember having like an old flip phone with snake or bejeweled on it. Rin, you never knew how to play a snake before? Oh my gosh. That's wild. Welcome to the wild world of default flip phone games. <laughs> noise phone. Very noise phone. Oh, I just noticed the name. It's not Nokia, it's a noise. Noise phone. <laughs> games within games, the best ever. I do appreciate that. All right, what else have we got? We can check the context. And we've got Dr. Styles. We've got Dread Hill. We've got one that just says Doctor and her sister. I'm not sure who the doctor is, but Dr. Styles is presumably our new employer, and Dread Hill, I would guess, is that phone just outside. So we got that right there. Kind of annoying, if you catch my drift, I do. Well played. Welcome in. Welcome in, Yeet Master. How are you doing today? Let's see. Geek Boy, never had games on my phone. I just don't want to play games on my phone. I have like 30 games installed on my phone right now because I get bored easily. <laughs> Ah, gotcha, Rin. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh my god, I'm actually trying to find a way to emulate Doom RPG because I played a little bit of Trade Dog and it looks like a trip. I'm very interested. The Dread Hill is a hell of a name for a mansion right there. Hey, mister, do you have any games on your phone? <laughs> uh, what about options? What are the options here? We just got a mute button. It's weird. I don't know why I would want to mute the phone, but that's... Oh, actually, no, I think the uh, one of the tricks required you to mute your phone. So that's a thing. There's a thing. You watch Twitch or YouTube on your phone while riding the bus. Nice, nice, that works. My games is too old to support games, oh my goodness. Snake and Tetris. Nano, welcome in, how are you doing today? For me, it was Snake and Bejeweled on my old Nokia phone. Snake and Bejeweled. Alright, I didn't notice there was a notice board over here before. Let's take a peek at that, too. Uh, anything worth noting over here? That calendar is out of date. So it is. It's very old, as a matter of fact. This game was released in 2011. It's a card for a psychologist. Now that's a phone number I'd have handy. You never know when you'll go stark, raving mad. <laughs> Uh, what else have we got on here? Oxford Police Department. Gee, that's reassuring. Why do they have the police phone number on the notice board? It's a little worrying. 
Eric Director, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you are having a good weekend so far. Good to see you. Alright, uh, nothing else worth noting on the board. That's plenty to see, though. Alright, well, I guess it's about time to head to Oxford University, then. Oh, your birthday was this week. Happy birthday, Eric. Hope you had a good one. At least had some nice relaxing times. Ideally. No, no, Inspector. The scream's just the TV. Again. No need to worry. Please leave. <laughs> oh, wait. No, we don't need to go to the parlor. We want to head to the front entry. There we go. You need more cola in your brain? I know the feeling. We're only like uh, an hour and a half into the stream and I've already drank all, of, drank all of my drinks. So I might need to go get some more water in a bit. Because it is still very hot in here, my goodness. Yep, still about 77 in here. A little toasty. Of course I have to bring a bit to the celebration of the Shane Arcade. Well, I appreciate you stopping by. Always a pleasure to see you in here. I'm doing good, thank you for asking. Alright, you now have access to Oxford. This map lets you visit the locations you know and gives some clues about your adventure. Open the map by pressing M or clicking the small compass icon to the left of your inventory. New locations have a white blinking outline. You can also tell something about a location by the color of its label. Gold means the location contains one or more tasks required to end the chapter. We're going to have to keep that in mind. However, it may not always be possible to complete these tasks right away. Uh, that's important. So gold is the places we have to go to, though not at this exact moment, but before the end of the chapter. Silver indicates a location with one or more bonus tasks, but no more required tasks. And dark gray means you've completed all tasks in this location for the current chapter. That's handy. I appreciate that. That's pretty cool, actually. You're on vacation, so I have another soda live it up. Oh, I might. I might. Quite possibly. <laughs> you need one of those scammy desk personal swamp cooler USB things for a thing? What thing? You got me curious now, do you two? What on earth do you need one of those for? Alright, so right now, we've only got two locations. We've got Dread Hill House, and we've got the Oxford Town Center, which is currently blinking silver, which means it has some bonus bonus tasks there so let's head over there since we don't appear to have a way to get directly to the college yet but the oxford has deep historical ties with christianity a fact reflected reflected in many of the college names so this is oxford not bad i need to line up those students for the experiment but while i'm here i really want to snoop around see if i can find any reference to the deedless club here in oxford all right, we got a couple of objectives right there. Let's take a quick look around and see what we can see. Uh, let's see. There's a phone booth. Old-fashioned red phone booth right there. I don't need to use the phone booth right now. And it works too. That's handy. Uh, what else have we got here? We can go to Corn Market Street. That appears to be one of our options for where to go. Do we have any other options? We can go to Queen Street and Corn Market Street. Well, right over here. Can't go in there. So let's check out Corn Market Street. See what's over there. Is the phone booth bigger on the inside? She didn't even check spinach. That's shameful. You'd think that'd be the first thing you do. The girls took the Coddington and the fairies photos later to they were faked, but still claimed they'd seen fairies. True story. I mean, that part is a true story, at least. Let's see. Day two, you want to make vegan blue cheese. You bought a wine cooler for the perfect environment, but the air there dries too much. Tried to set up a USB ultrasonic humidifier in there, but it just ends up basically spraying water on the surfaces. All right. That's an interesting idea right there. That is very fascinating. Good luck to you. And keep us posted on that. I'd be very curious to hear how that goes. All right, what have we got over here to see? Anything? Got a shop called the Black Wand. Let's check that out. That sounds possibly relevant to our interests. Sam being a magician and all. Cool, a magic shop. All right, let's head in. Let's see what they got in there. 
All right, this looks fancy. I like it. Look around and see what we can see. Some sort of slot machine right here. Says you must be 21. This deserves a careful approach. I should see what the owner can tell me about it first. All right, so we'll talk to the owner before we play around with it. Makes sense. Check out the shop shelf over here. All right, what do they got for sale? They've got a breakable wand. Break and repair this magic wand in the blink of an eye. We've got flash powder trap. Triggering the invisible wires coming with this device will trigger the flash powder and cast a bright flash of light. We've got a special deck of cards, the bread and butter. Uh, eye color changing mask makes your eye color change without any kind of glass. Interesting. We've got stage blood. The only thing that differentiates this fake blood from real blood is the fact that it's easier to wash out. Uh, we've got a side changing die. The sides of this cube can be swapped by pressing a button to match your prediction. That's handy. I can see the value in that. We've got disappearing ink. Any text written with this ink will disappear within a few minutes. All right, lots of goodies right there. We don't exactly have any money right now, though, so hold off on that. See what else there's to see around here. There's another shelf over here, too. Possibly some more goodies. See what they got over here. Solid water. The contents of this vial will switch from liquid to a solid state when salt is added. Interesting, interesting. Cry for help noisemaker. This discreet device will play the associated sound when pressing the button on its remote controller. They also got a shredded paper noisemaker. This discreet device will play the associated sound when pressing the remote. All right. Uh, what else? Spirit gum, useful adhesive to fix wigs, beards, and other costume prosthetics. Handy, we know one of the tricks uses those. Selective Devil in a Box. A little switch on the back of the box allows you control whether the devil pops out or not. Clever. That's more color changing masks. The Little Thief's Money Box. The money you put in the coin slot disappears into a hidden compartment. Don't forget to give money back afterwards, otherwise that's theft. Now we got fake thumbs worn over your own thumb and fixed with spirit gum. It is unnoticeable. Uh, what else? More solid water. Telephone spy. Your genuine private life violator. Holy shit, that sounds kind of illegal. <laughs> Cirrus, I'm doing good. How about yourself, Cirrus? How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. We got a magnet. Classic bar magnet right there. More special decks of cards. Alright, that's everything there. Lots of magic goodies. I like it. I like it. Uh, what else is in here? Anything? Did you mention talking to the uh, guy that runs the shop, but I don't actually see anybody in here. However, we don't actually have any money right now, so it's kind of a moot point. So we will come back here later. <laughs> Leave it to Shane, the Boy Scout. I am who I am, Emperor. I can't do any else. Einstein described quantum entanglement as spooky effects at a distance. Spooky action at a distance, actually. But uh, mostly correct. Let's see. Nintendo mode, welcome in. Nice art style, but boo, the crystal ball does not refract the view behind it. It's true. It's true. This was made by a relatively small company, though, but I'm glad you appreciate the art style. How are you doing today, Nintendo mode? Welcome in. Let us head over to Queen Street. That's the other place we haven't explored in this part of the neighborhood. See if there's anything down there, hopefully. Let's see, Daedalus flew from imprisonment with his son Icarus. Icarus died when he flew too close to the sun, and his wings melted. So the story goes. Do you love the music in here, Sirius? I love the music too, it's so chill. Alright, I'm also going to save the game because I notice it's kind of hanging on the loading screens. That's making me nervous. Let's just make sure we're doing okay right there. And we are 50% through chapter 1. That's handy. 
Let's see. Very well, apparently it's all set in the UK. Correct, we are in Oxford right now. Although our character is an American who is traveling right now. No references to Gabriel Knight yet, unfortunately, but we'll keep our eyes peeled. Because that would be amazing. <laughs> Alright, what do we got to see around here? Um, the Windy Dog Pub. Is that a fart joke? I don't know. That's a possible thing we can do right there. Uh, we've got uh, Brazino's College. I suppose that could be a place to recruit college students for a strange experiment. Uh, we've got an exit to Carfax. We can check that out too. Well, let's start with the Windy Dog Pub. Let's see what that is right there. Yet. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Gives you a Sherlock Holmes vibe. I, I appreciate that. I think it's a. I think they're kind of going for like that that sort of European mystery feel, but also I, I like the the sort of gothic vibe of the creepy mansion and everything. Also, check out that graffiti right there. That's amazing. Unfortunately, they're closed. All right, no getting in the pub. Um, but maybe if we come back here later, we'll be able to pop in. But you have a gas in that pub. Oh my god. All right, let's see if we can head into the college over here. Recruit some college students. That'd be cool. We gotta get six of them before evening falls. Otherwise, we're fired. From the job that we're not supposed to have in the first place. Your ID, please. Driver's license? Student ID. Oh, that. I left it in my room. Sorry. Not so fast. Them's the rules and there's the street. Have a nice day. Thanks. All right, well, we're not getting in there without a college ID, so that's uh, a bit of a problem. Let's continue exploring, then. See what else we can see around town. There's people staying around. We don't know if they're college students or not. We've got no way of knowing just yet. Oh, this is where we started out. Alright, so we've seen the whole town then. Alright, so it looks like there might be a couple things we missed around here. Uh, we didn't check the plaque on Carfax Tower, so let's check that out. Interesting. This crossroads once consisted of dusty roads in this tower. Now the tower is kind of lost in the middle of the city. This landmark is one of the oldest in Oxford. It was built in the 12th century as a lookout at this important crossroads. The name comes from the Latin word uh, quadrifucus, meaning four, or quadrifucus, meaning four ways. Interesting. We've got an atmospheric little steam vent over here too. We'll take a look at that as well. Let's see what's going on there. It's a steam vent. Oh. Glad we checked that out then. Alright, let's see if we miss anything in the other parts of town then. And if we can't find anything here, we'll head back to the... Head back to the map and see if we've got anything else to do there, I suppose. We shall see. There's another steam vent here and that's about it. So let's head down to Queen Street, see if we miss anything over there. Doesn't look like there's much to do in town. So what are steam vents even for? Letting out steam out of the sewers. Because otherwise the steam would just build up and then you'd have like a, a problem with pressure in the sewers and you'd have to worry about explosions. The steam puts out a lot of pressure and that's a bit of a problem in a, you know, big closed system. <laughs> Nobody wants exploding toilets. That's a bad thing. All right, anything here? Oh, we missed a whole bunch of things here, actually. All right, so let's see the, the windy the sign over the Windy Dog the pub. The pub is called the Windy Dog. Appetizing. Yeah, that's what I said. Oh, uh, we can talk to some of the people out here. I didn't realize that. Exploding sewers? Where do I pay to see that? There was a Mythbusters episode, actually, where they set off an explosion in a sewer. And if you can look that up on YouTube or something, I would highly recommend it, because the result is amazing. One of my favorite things on Mythbusters. Hey, Cider, welcome in. It is going very well. How about yourself? How are you doing this weekend? Hope you're doing good. 
Uh, let's see what else is there to see here. Let's talk to this girl. See what she's got to say. May as well try and gather some more information around here. Hello, miss. You won't want to miss this. Easy money for a few hours of rest and relaxation. I can sign you up right now. Dr. Stiles, are you insane? Um, okay, they did mention that uh, Dr. Stiles has a bit of a reputation around Oxford, but, uh, apparently, apparently, the exploding gas boiler is pretty good. Of course, I love the classic uh, exploding uh, concrete truck, too. The noise that thing made. Oh, my God, that one I remember very clearly. Cherry bomb in the exploding toilet, I remember that one, too. Those pulsing alien looking balls? Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, how about this guy? We can, let's talk to this guy. Hey, you're losing a paper. What? Take a look. If you're free tonight, it's just an easy few hours for 15 pounds. Every student needs money, right? This is like taking candy from a baby, my friend. <laughs> Oh, oh, this is great. Brilliant. What do you mean? Oh, th this is a joke, right? Styles? Experiment? No, it's 15 pounds. What's so funny about that? Ah, you're serious. I guess it takes a freak to work for a freak. Good day. Great. It appears I'm working for Dracula. Nice. Well then, this is going very badly. <laughs> Uh, okay. So, uh, we're 0 for 2. Uh, but looks like there's a shop over here. Let's check this place out. Alice's shop. An Alice in Wonderland gift shop? Not really my thing. Well, something to keep in mind, I suppose. Oh, hey, let's talk to this guy. Maybe this guy is interested in money for shady experiments. Let's hope we still need six people. What is it? Chance of a lifetime, or, at the very least, the most fun you've ever had in a straitjacket. <laughs> Just a little neurobiology humor there. <laughs> Not bloody likely. Look, you won't find anyone stupid enough to do an experiment with styles, I guarantee it. Over oh, three. Oh yeah? There's gotta be somebody stupid enough <laughs> in Oxford. Or maybe not. Well, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Sorry, Houdini. I tried. Oh. Man, there's something in the street. First year student orientation party at St. Edmund's Quad. It's today. Freshmen. Freshmen? Fresh meat? They might not know about Dr. Styles yet? Hmm. What did he call them? Lost lambs? Name seems oddly appropriate now, wouldn't you say? We might have something to do right there. <laughs> Just a little probing. We'll pay you afterwards. You should never get probed without getting paid for it. We'll take care of you. Be fine. <laughs> nobody has regional accents yet. Yeah, nobody has regional accents yet. But those are all minor characters without names. Maybe the name characters will have accents. It's possible. We'll see. Uh, let's save real quick before we go to a new location. And then, uh, let's see if we can find that other university. See if we can pop over there. Get to that party. Maybe, uh, con some freshmen, you know, neurobiology experiments for reasonable amounts of money. Excuse me. Uh, let's see. I know I saw the exit out of here before. Oh, we can just do it from the, uh... Is something about a compass? Is it something about a compass? Um... Oh, we can look at that flyer, too. Let's take a look at the flyer. 
first year student orientation party at St. Edward's. Oh, yeah, apparently, apparently we can't actually take a look at it. It's a shame. Oh, how do we get back to the map from here? There we go. Right down this street, it looks like. Now, and St. Edmund Hall has been added to the map. And it looks like there's nothing else to do in Oxford Town Center this chapter. Excellent, excellent. As the saying goes, there is a sucker born every minute. True, true. Are you doing more streams than usual? Been glad to see more alerts from you. No, same amount of streams than usual. But uh, I'm glad to see you stopping by more. Always a pleasure to have you here with us. Um, I know I missed, like, a week of streams a couple weeks ago because of uh, uh, overtime. So I, 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 it might be there was less before, and now we're just getting back to normal. That could be it. But yeah, we got lots of things happening. Lots of streaming going on. We did a super long one yesterday, too. That was a lot of fun. All right, hopefully this university doesn't have a guard at the door. Otherwise, we're, we're going to be very, very screwed. All right, nope. Looks like we can just slip in here. Wow, this place looks uh, a little dilapidated. Oh, come on. What do you want, blood? I told you I'd delete your scene. And I'm supposed to trust you. Please, I'm whining now. I'm whimpering. You're killing me here. Maybe you'll think twice next time. I've nothing more to say to you. Wonder what's going on there. All right. Uh, what is going on with this plant back here? Like, there's there's tasteful ivy, and there is just I, whatever is going on back there. This is kind of apocalyptic. <laughs> like, is, is this still in use? Are, are the freshmen actually going to university? Or has this place just been, like, taken over by nature and they're just squatting in the abandoned buildings? What is going on here? Start of The Last of Us 3, seriously? <laughs> what is going on in here? All right, let's take a quick peek around. Look at this. Hmm, no doubt I'm in the right place. Let's hope I can recruit enough rookies. No comments about the shitty condition of this banner? I've got lots of questions. I've got lots of questions. Uh, all right, we got some people to start talking to. This is normal for England, is it? Holy crap. I suppose this is the, the place that made a Day of the Triffids. Maybe that's where the inspiration came from. All right, person number one. Let's see if we can recruit her. If I have to pick a side, the boy looks like the easier mark. I should try him first. That's true. He, he looks like not, not a great person. Maybe we can just... Uh, Con him into it. Let's do this thing. Hey, hi. Sorry to bother you, but I overheard your accent. You're an American? Yeah. Me too. I'm Sam from DC. I'm Harv. Harvey Kinderman, the Big Apple. You don't look American, you know. Maybe French? What? Oh, come on. There are a lot of people like me in New York. I guess. Those French are everywhere. <laughs> I'm glad to see you still have your sense of humor. I noticed you were fighting with your girlfriend. Girlfriend? President of the Lynch Harvey Kinderman Club is more like it. You haven't been here long enough to get into trouble, have you? Are you kidding? I can get people to hate me in under 10 seconds flat. That girl, for instance, Lisa, she loathes me to the point of breaking into my room and deleting my latest film from my computer. And she took the only hard copy I had, a Kinderman masterpiece, gone. And I've known her less than two weeks. I'm telling you, it's a gift. Wow, all right. We just broke into her room and stole his movie. All right, that's kind of shifty. <laughs> uh, let's, let's see if we can get some more information about that. Why would Lisa do something like that? No reason on God's earth. Hmm, she's in the film, right? What'd you get her doing? Well, it was uh, a commode soliloquy. Artistic truth, man. I mean, the film's about superficiality and how we're all really just flesh and blood underneath all the glamour. I'll buy that, but I wouldn't if I were Lisa. She didn't. She's pretty much being a major B on toast. Commode soliloquy. I think I'm maybe seeing why this person doesn't get along with other people very often. I don't think I like him very much either. Does Lisa have your movie with her? Yeah, it's in that Godzilla purse of hers. 
I would have kicked her shins and run with it, but then she'd have to hurt me. Is it on DVD? The Super 8, why? Do you have a spare Super 8 film cartridge with you? Uh, yeah. Again, why? Just weighing my options. You have options? Wow. Can I have some? I'm fresh out. This guy is tiring. I don't like him either, Bob. Pretentious bullshit, you love it, you you oh my god. Yep, basically that's what I'm hearing here, spinach. Say, I bet you could use some extra cash. You know, for film or production costs or whatever. What's the catch? My prof has this little experiment going on tonight. It's um a neurobiology thing. Easy as pie, and it pays 15 pounds for just a few hours of work. Boy, have you got the wrong guy. I won't even go to the dentist. And the last time I had blood drawn, they had to call in the National Guard. I don't want anything to do with needles. Anything needle-like. Or anything that involves putting anything small and shiny anywhere close to my skin. Even jewelry makes me nervous. <sighs> well, this is going nowhere, but we tried. We tried. What are you studying, Hart? Technically? Technically, I'm in the International Law Program. But, not really? No, I am. It's just, you know how you can get splinters under your nail and it bleeds and stuff under there and it hurts so bad you just want to hit something? Law is kind of like that for me. And you're studying it. Why? My dad. He has this high hopes thing. Talk about guilt. But hey, it's fine. I'm in England and I wanted a chance to check out British filmmakers. So it works. Gee, suck it up and tell him, Hart. It's your life. Yeah, thanks. I'll get right on that. All right. How badly do you want that movie back, Kinderman? You shouldn't call me by my last name. It uh, turns me on. Ugh. Listen, if you do this experiment for me tonight, I'll get your cartridge back. But what is this, Torture Harvey Day? Do I get my choice of the guillotine or the rope? Is that it? Stop being a wuss. This thing tonight isn't going to hurt or anything. Besides, I thought your film was Orwellian. Do you want to be talking about it at the age of 50 in the actor's studio as your lost masterpiece? Sheesh, turn the screws. All right, all right. But what are you planning to do? Trust me, she won't feel a thing. Give me the spare cartridge. This ought to be interesting. All right, all right. So we got that. Uh, let me hit the options real quick, because that fireplace was super loud. I'm going to see if we can turn the sound effects down a little bit. Try turning that down to there and see how that is. And we'll go ahead and save here, too. <laughs> he's he's not a he's not a pleasant person, Gamma Gumo. I'm definitely getting that. Yeah, that sounded like a threat. Definitely, definitely sounded like a threat. Let's see. Oh, Havoc, you're heading to bed. Sorry, I missed that. Havoc, Havoc, you have a great sleep. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out. You take care of yourself, and we will see you around. <laughs> All right. So we have the Super Eight in our inventory right now. Harvey Super Eight tape. It's about the same size as a deck of cards. All right, that sounds like another hint there. Is there possibly something we can do with a magic trick here? Let's see. Let's see if there's a magic trick that might work for this. Let's see. Something involving a deck of cards. Uh, let's see. I don't think that one. Because that involves an actual pack of cards on the table. Let's see, shredded and restored newspaper. I don't think we're going to do that, so that's possible. Uh, let's see, telephone psychic, bottomless cup. Let's see, up in smoke, you need two identical decks of cards. One should be signed by an audience member. The other is a duplicate deck. All right, so that involves a deck of cards. It involves one of them signed, and one of these is... You know, it's, uh, uh, it actually has something on it, so that could be a thing. So let's see. Load the duplicate deck up your left sleeve. Take the signed deck in your right hand. Home the duplicate deck in your left hand. 
move the signed deck in your right hand to your left, turning as if you were examining the backside position on top of the duplicate deck, misdirect your audience with a remark or joke, take hold of the duplicate deck that is underneath, and move the duplicate deck to your right hand, vanish the signed deck up your left sleeve, and now you burn the duplicate. Well, we do have that fireplace right here, so this sounds perfect. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna swap, we're gonna take the, uh, the, her copy, or Harvey's actual tape from her. We're gonna swap it with a blank tape. We're gonna burn the blank tape, and then hopefully that'll assuage her and we can uh, give Harvey back the actual tape. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a thing. That definitely sounds like a thing. So, let's talk to her first. I think we might have to talk to her before we get in there. I know, the handbook's adorable. That's a really cute gimmick. Yeah, I can take her down. No problem. But first, I need to pick the right trick. Alright. So let's get back to that trick and we'll pick it out. And I need to remember the steps as well. That's going to be important. So load, take, load uh, the duplicate, take the real one, palm the duplicate, move the real one, misdirect, move the duplicate to my other hand, and then vanish the, the real one. Yes, that should work. All right, welcome to the magic interface. This is where Sam prepares herself for a trick. Once she has the right sequence of steps in mind, she will perform the trick. Sam must adapt the trick from the magic book to the situation at hand. To open the magic book for reference, click on the icon in the upper right corner. So this is the unique thing about this game, is you actually use magic tricks to solve puzzles, which is pretty interesting. The action window on the right represents Sam and her environment. Plan the trick step by step. Drag items into the various slots and select basic moves. Load, vanish, take, plant, palm, or move an item by dragging it into one of the available slots. These appear with gold titles. Here is an inventory item required for the trick. Use it by dragging it to the appropriate slot in the action window. Alright, so we've got spare cartridge up here and Lisa's cartridge down there. So let's go ahead and take a look. Refer to the instructions of the magic book. Click on its icon in the upper hand corner again to put the book aside. So first, load the duplicate deck up our left sleeve. Let's do that first. The sequencer window on the left shows the number of steps required for the trick and lists the sequence of actions you have selected so far. You can delete a whole series of steps from the sequencer by clicking on the number of the last step you want removed. You can also use the right mouse to backtrack one step at a time. All right, so we got the first step. Load spare cartridge in the left sleeve. Then take the signed cartridge into our right hand. Cool. Then palm the duplicate in the left hand. There we go. Uh, then move the real one um, from the right hand to the left. Alright, we got that. Then misdirect with a remark or joke. This move allows Sam to misdirect her audience for a few seconds. Click on the icon to add this move to the sequencer. Gotcha. Then move the duplicate to the right hand. And finally, vanish the real one up our left sleeve. A magic wand icon appears when the sequence is complete. Click on this icon to confirm the trick. If any of the steps were wrong, you'll need to continue planning this trick from the last correct step. All right, let's uh, see if we got it right. Got a magic wand. Let's try it out. Hi. I saw you talking to Harvey Kinderman. I wanted to warn you about him. Seriously. You're a little late. You're joking. Did he film you? As a matter of fact, he did. You don't mean to say he filmed you too. Yeah. 
I was at a party a couple of nights ago, and I was feeling sick, so I went outside to, you know, be sick. I looked up, and that degenerate was filming me, puking, in the bushes. He's a worm. I'm glad I'm making him suffer. You are? How? I've got the film he took of me, and it's the only copy, too. I made sure of that. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. I deleted it from his computer myself. Are you sure you got the right cartridge, though? I was in his room looking for mine, but there was so much crap everywhere. Most of the tapes weren't even labeled. I bet you didn't get the right one. I have the cartridge. This is the name of the film he said he was making. It's on the label. Can I see? Careful with that. You know what I'd do if I were you? See that barrel over there? What are you? Wait a there. minute. There. Now you'll be sure that no one will ever see it. What a nerve. Americans. Tell me you didn't just burn my film. Hey, this is it? What are you, like the amazing Kreskin or something? I never saw you make the switcheroo. Yeah, forget it. But don't forget about tonight. You promise. I'll be there, never fear. Hey, I got my film back. And the best part is, Lisa thinks it's destroyed! <laughs> Yay! We did it! And I feel terrible. <laughs> yeah, he seems, he seems nice and sane. Not the grossest dude around. Alright, we can go ahead and save. With one uh, mission accomplished there. Alright, so that's one down. We still need to get five students before nightfall if we're going to accomplish this thing. Yeah, me too, Game of Me too. Why do these people have a barrel fire in their yard? I don't know. That seems so low rent. This whole college just seems very dilapidated. <laughs> like I said, post-apocalyptic almost. I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Alright, what else is there to see around here? So we can head into that building over there if we wanted to. That's a thing. Uh, there's a payphone over there if we need it. There's a girl on the bench back there, and there's a another woman sitting on the the bench right here. Let's talk to her first, because she apparently she thinks she's on the French Riviera. Not really my type, but beggars can't be choosers. And that is us. We as beggars. We as not choosers. Secretly the last of us, it does kind of have that vibe, especially with that giant plant in the middle. It's huge. Hi. It's a good day for the sun thing. Oh, a diversion. Thank God. I was about to die of boredom. I'm Helena. Sam. Antha. Or just Sam is fine too. You're a student here? You don't look like one. Ouch. Of course I am. Are you? For two glorious weeks now. Time of my life. Hey, Freyas, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Where are you from, Helena? You don't sound British. God, not remotely. I'm from a tiny little country. You wouldn't have heard of it. Wow. I wouldn't have heard of your country. Trust me. Wow, all right. She's, she's a hipster about her homeland. That's unusual. All right. Sure. <laughs> Hasaka, welcome in. How are you doing today? Had to take your dog to get a vaccine, but you're back. Hopefully that went well. I know taking pets to the, uh, the vet can sometimes be a stressful experience for both you and the pet. But I hope everything went okay. Monaco seems like a good pet. It's a tiny country and the accent... The accent could definitely be Monaco, quite possibly. What are you studying? Art history, which isn't horrible. I do have an interest in the subject. Antiques mostly, and paintings. That's why Papa sent me here. He said if I was going to spend money, I should at least know what I'm buying. Wow. Gee, sounds rough. You have no idea. Care for a vodka and soda? I can run up to my room and whip up another one. Um, tempting, but no. Maybe later. Suit yourself. 
So, she seems like a little bit of a trust fund baby. Gotcha. Gotcha. If you're really bored, why don't you come with me tonight? To do what? I'm going to a psych experiment. Pretty amusing, actually. Very Dr. Strangelove. Not for me. I have plans for this body of mine, and no doctor's going to get his greedy little hands on it. It's just a psych thing. I'm sure Dr. Styles won't do any permanent damage. I'm not interested. I take it you don't like Oxford. God, no. Papa insisted. He thinks I can't possibly get into trouble here. Well, I thought I'd show him. But now that I'm here, I think he might actually be right. What a pedestrian snore. You look like someone who knows how to party. Where do you go? Haven't found much of a scene yet. Mostly pubs with fish and chips. A snore like you... What is it? Well, the one thing that can be said about Oxford is it has some delicious men. That is the plat du resistance. Nice. Nice? Darling, that prime specimen is Charles Ettington. I've tried to talk to him a few times, but he's mortally shy. I think he might even be a virgin. Yeah. You think? Charles Eddington will be at this experiment I'm going to tonight. You're lying. Not. Why would he be in this psych experiment? I don't know. Maybe he needs money. Or maybe he's interested in neurobiology. You'd have to ask him. I doubt Charles Eddington needs money. In fact, I don't believe you even know him. We'll see about that, won't we? All right, so we were absolutely lying there. So we are going to need to talk to him right there. Let's see, let's catch up right here. Last of Us prequel? Oh, it could be a thing. Possibly. We don't know what the experiment is yet. Let's see. Franz, is the background music too loud? We can turn it down a little if need be. Alright, so we need to convince her that we actually know Charles Eddington and that he's going and ideally get him to actually go to the experiment because we still need five people. Let's go talk to him, see what we can do here. Mind if I hang around? I was supposed to meet a friend here. Uh, well... All right, yeah, he seemed kind of shy. Homer's Iliad. All right, so he's reading the Iliad right now. That's interesting. There's a letter right here, too. The letter on too. top is from Gertrude Eddington. I bet that's his mother. Solid bet right there. Probably a good idea to turn it down a bit still. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, sound... Music. Let's go ahead and turn that down another 10. Let me know how that is. We can turn it down further if need be. Just uh, keep me posted. Hopefully that helps at least. Don't be afraid to ask. Uh, of course, I I, I want to get the sound balance right, but it's very tricky for a game like this, most definitely. Let's see. Nintendo encouraging creepers, etc. to grow our own stole buildings is a thing in the UK, but this is taking a bit far for artistic license. Interesting. Let's see, the Iliad, where the scene it's best known for isn't in the book. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, let's ask him about what we've seen there. Did you get mail from home? Sorry, it's just that I've been expecting a letter from my mom for days. I'm beginning to think the Oxford Post is eating it. No. I've been here for two weeks, and I still haven't received a letter from my mom. She promised to write all the time. It doesn't take that long for stuff to get here from the U.S., does it? Don't know. Never got anything from there. Uh, of course not. Duh. I'm sorry. Ragging on like a total loser. I get mail every day. My mum, she writes to me every day. No way. God, you're lucky. I miss my mom so much. So how come you haven't opened it yet? Um, mum and I always ate dinner together, so I like to read it then. Aww, Aww isn't that sweet? Mom and I love to ride bikes together, but reading her letters on a bike probably wouldn't be the best idea. <laughs> All right, we're, we're, we're kind of getting in here. 
He's very shy, but we're working our way in. I see you're reading the Iliad. The Iliad and the Odyssey are my favorite ones. You've read the Iliad? Yeah, but I like the Odyssey best. I love the gods and their infighting. Total soap opera. But my favorite part is where Odysseus comes home and Penelope has all those suitors, and you're just waiting for him to kick some serious tail. My favorite part is the Cyclops. I like the way they tie themselves under the sheet to escape. I love that part. Can you believe those were the first novels ever written? And Homer still beats the crap out of anything Hollywood has put out, in my humble opinion. Absolutely. What's even more amazing is that he recited it from memory. Can you imagine hearing him do that? That would be amazing. Wow. Well, I'd uh, better get back to it. All right. Oh my god, that movie is so good, but then again, it's Coen Brothers. It's almost cheating. Everything they do is amazing. Rose, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. Good to see you. All right, we've got him on the hook. Let's see if we can reel him in. Listen, there's something you might be interested in. It's not for everyone, but since you like Homer, I've gotten into a psych experiment that's being done by one of the Oxford neurobiologists. It's really fascinating, and it pays cash. That would be interesting, but... I'd need to check with my mum. She calls me on Saturdays. I could talk to her about it then. But this starts tonight. Then I can't. I couldn't do something like that without talking to her. Anyway, I'm sure they'll do it again. Oh no, Dr. Stiles is a really famous neurobiologist and he almost never does this kind of thing. Oh, it will be so educational. I'm sure your mother would love for you to have an experience like this. That's what she sent you here for. Isn't it? I can't without talking to her, sorry. Okay. No big deal. Damn it! Ah, uh, we struck out. We struck out! That's not good. Roadbug, you're heading off to bed. Alright, thanks for hanging around, Roadbug. You have a good rest. And a good rest of your weekend. If we won't see you before then, you take care. Let's see. I don't want Fop of a Dapper Dan, man. <laughs> God, that movie. So I haven't seen that movie. In a very long time. I gotta watch that again sometime. You have a suggestion, Bob? Alright, what do you got as a suggestion? I'm thinking I might need to... I'm thinking I might need to swipe that letter. That's what I'm thinking. Swipe that letter and swap it with something. Give him the cell phone? What would I have him do with the cell phone? Like, he's already super shy. We don't want to spook him too much. He was already kind of put off by us asking him to do something without Mama's per, uh, permission. To ask her for permission? I suppose we could do that. Uh, let's just give it a shot. I think we might have to con him, though. That seems to be the answer to most things in here. This one is tough. I'll have to find a really good trick. No, we need a con. We need a con for this one. Let's see, what kind of trick can we use to con him here? I'm thinking maybe the ominous mailbag. Except you think you'd know about that one. It's not conning, it's prestidigit... Pre it's, it, it's a magic trick, is what you're saying there. <laughs> I suppose, but... I, it feels like more of a con if the, the mark doesn't know it's a magic trick, you know? Perhaps? Alright, so we need... I feel like the ominous mailbag is what we gotta do, because then we can swap out that letter from his mom. But, uh... We don't have, like, a, another letter to plant there, though. Uh, but we can do step one, at least, to seal the letter. So let's see if we can do that first. Um, let's try it. I can only set up the first part of the trick to get the letter for now. Right, so we'll go ahead and do that. So what is the first part? Uh, misdirect, take in the left hand, and then vanish up left sleeve. So misdirect, take into left hand, vanish up left sleeve. Well, you know what they say. Fluffy white clouds means it's a beautiful day to fly a kite. I don't see any kites. 
<laughs> it's just an expression. See you later, Homer. All right, we have stolen the letter. And it says we need to use steam to open it. And I don't think this is actually how it works, but we do know where there's some steam. So, uh, let's head over there. See what we can't do with this letter. See if we can use the steam vent to, uh, steam it open right there. Who says that? I, I guess she did right then. Technically, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in that sense. We, we did still steal it. Maybe just a little bit. Right, let's take a look at it. I'll need to find something to help me open this without it looking like I've opened it. All right, so let's go ahead and get it, and then we'll head over to the cement. Borrow! Technically, we are going to give most of it back. Part of it back. At least half of it back. We borrowed. <laughs> Charles's mother certainly is involved. Must be nice to have someone who actually gives a crap. Convenient of her to include a health fair flyer. That works. Alright. Rolling stones are worth two in the bush. Oh god, Nano. <laughs> I mean, opening with steam actually works. I just didn't think steam from a steam grate would actually be hot enough to steam the letter open. That's my uh, confusion. Because, like, we've got some vents around my area that, like, steam, but it's not, like, super hot, as far as I know. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can read this letter here. D Darling Charles, everything has been uh, so quiet here. I miss you so. Mrs. Bertle was selling kittens yesterday. Do you remember when you were ten and she put out kittens? Poor Mitzi. We never did find out what happened to that cat. Poor Mitzi. I spoke to Mrs. Wells, whose grandson graduated from Oxford. He was pressing upon me how many wonderful opportunities you'll have outside your classroom schedule. I do hope you will try to get involved, darling. Excuse me. I saw this flyer at the market. I don't know why it was posted here at Milton, but I wish you would attend. Please do, for mummy, love and a thousand kisses, mum. And the flyer that she included... Take a look at that. Uh, it says, uh, Health Fair Oxford Town Center, 10 November 2005, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Free screening for high cholesterol, high blood pressure, diabetes, HIV, and pregnancy. Also free eye and ear exams. Sponsored by the British Hospitaliers Oxfordshire Chapter. All right, so... What I think we need to do is, can we load this up and then use it on here? Now I can seal it and it's ready to go. There we go. So we swapped her flyer for one of our own for the neurobiology sessions. That should take care of things right there. Let's see. I know games open with Steam. God damn it, Nano. Oh, that's too good. That's too perfect. And Gamma Gobo, thank you for redeeming 15,000 channel points towards a Harvester sequel. It's a new higher number, but I only do that so we can afford a higher standard of things. Except that the points are still worthless, and that means they don't actually buy you anything. And certainly not a Harvester sequel. But thank you for doing it nonetheless. I appreciate that. <laughs> Gonna become a Sith? No, we're, we're doing it for a good cause. And the good cause is we need to get paid there is no better cause than that all right so we got charles's letter right here um do we need to seal it up first do we need to do something with it no i just need to return this to its rightful owner no apparently we're good all right cool so let us head back to the college then and we will just uh, do the other half of the magic trick to slip it back on the bench. And then we'll let events take care of themselves. Alright, back to St. Edmund's Hall. Let's see. Seriously, we don't really have steam vents in the UK like you see in the New York scene, so that's a bit more artistic license. It's weird because this game was written by an American takes place in the UK 
and was published by a German company. So I suppose a little bit of a translation error here and there are going to make sense. It does make sense. It did go up spinach. Inflation. This economy is terrible right now. <laughs> All right. So. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and look at him and that should start the trick, I believe. Now I can finish the trick and put the letter back. All right. Let's do the thing. What else do we need to do for this trick? That wasn't it. All right, place the envelope back in the pile of unopened mail. Again, if it must be done in the presence of the subject, palm the letter in the right hand, misdirect, and then plant. All right, so where is the letter? Palm the letter in the right hand, misdirect, and plant. Cool. Let's do this thing. Hey, Homer, do you happen to know if that payphone over there works for international calls? I was thinking about calling my mom. Um, couldn't say. That's all right. I'll go check. See ya. All right. So it's not confirmed, but that seems like a pretty good, a pretty reasonable assumption that's two people taken care of for the experiment tonight. Two down, four to go. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk to uh, Helena again. See if perhaps we can convince her th to go now. Yeah, that was a little bit of unfortunate uh, design right there, Lee, too. Damn it. What's your secret? I haven't been able to get as much as a hello out of the boy. And there you are, chatting away. Well, you know, you get really close to people when you work together. But you have to be gentle with Charles. He's so inexperienced. You are diabolical. I know. So are you coming tonight? Or do I have Charles all to myself? Funny thing about virginity, it's such a temporary state. Holy shit! Satan incarnate! Are you sure this is safe? Would I steer you wrong? All right, I'll be there. Oh, what fun. Well, that was some intense innuendo right there. Holy shit. But all right, that's three down, three to go. We're making progress now. We are making progress. We might actually pull this thing off. 69% complete with the chapter. Nice. And we do have one other person out here to talk to. So let's see if we can get anything out of her. She looks like the timid type. That could work. Statement of intent, you know? You know? You know? <laughs> Because I'll tell you what I know. <sighs> May I hang around? I'm waiting on a call. Oh, sure. Should I? Do you want me to leave? No. God, no. You were here first. I'm very much the timid type, it sounds like, from first blush. I like your accent. Are you Scottish? Yes. Well, I grew up on an island in Scotland. An island? Wasn't it claustrophobic? Not at all. It's a big island. I could ride my bike around it, but it took hours. And in the autumn, like now, the leaves were so bright red and gold. You could ride your bike and the tires would crunch through them and make the best sound in the world. From the cliffs, the sea looked like wild horses. My father always said that. <laughs> Sounds nice. I don't really have any place like that. Home, I mean. Sorry. I don't know why I said all that. I'm, I, I do need to finish this chapter. Interesting. Like a good Scottish accent? I haven't actually known too many Scots IRL. Uh, let's go ahead and introduce ourselves. Looks like I missed the party. Did you get to meet a lot of people? Oh, I just came out to get a little sun. I'm not a first year. Oh, well, I'm Sam. Samantha Everett. Angela Mulholland. All right. What are you studying? Uh, nursing. You don't sound very sure. I've changed my focus a few times, but I do want to go into medicine. I want to help people. What about you? Me? English lit. 
I used to be in that department. I know all the professors here. Is there anything you'd like to know? Not right now, no. But if I think of something, I'll be sure to look you up. This, uh, this, uh, cover identity is just paper thin. It's gonna wear through eventually. How did you end up at Oxford? I got a scholarship. Lucky. Oh, it wasn't luck. It was fate. You know, sometimes things happen and it's like a sign that you should do something. Sometimes you don't even have a choice. Oh, yeah, fate. I believe in that. Totally. <laughs> She's so convincing! Do you go home a lot? Sounds like you miss it. I do. Do you have a lot of family there? Oh, yes. Lots. But we, we didn't get her in for the experiment. Angela seems ripe for something. But which trick? Do we have a trick we can use on her? What on earth would we even do? Um, we can show her the divide and conquer, I suppose. Maybe that'll impress her? Possibly? We don't really have any items to show her here. Yeah, the best thing I can think of is divide and conquer, maybe. Since we're talking about fate. Let's see if we can do that on her. Person is sometimes Scottish, only occasionally. Only on uh, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and every other Saturday. That trick doesn't fit the situation. Now, apparently not the divide and conquer. Um, what, why, shit. What can we use on her hair? We don't have any disappearing ink. Um, she's reading something? Maybe we could use the shredded and restored newspaper? Uh... Well, we need a simulated, uh, copy. We need, like, a blank piece of paper if we're gonna do that. Um, is there anything else we could possibly do here? Nothing else really makes sense. Oh, there's one other trick in here. The cup and ball psychic. That would be cool, but we don't have any cups or balls. So I don't think we can do that right now. That trick doesn't fit the situation. No, alright, so the only other thing I can think of would be the the shredded newspaper trick, maybe. If she's reading something, right? Maybe? I don't think that really applies here. No! I have no idea what to do with her then. Think about her conversation? I mean, she talked about, uh... Talked about fate, and she talked about having to finish a chapter right there? If you got any ideas, Bob, I'm all ears. <laughs> Good use of the command there, Spinach, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think I'm about ready for a hint if you guys are seeing something I'm not. What are you guys seeing here? The wound one? Oh, cause, she, cause she's going into nursing? We could? That's possible. She's sitting- oh, she's sitting next to a phone! Spinach, I like that. Because, Bob, the problem with the wound one is that needs three things. That needs a fake thumb, a fake blood, and a uh, spirit gum. And we don't have any of those things, and we don't have money either. So that might not be a good trick for right now. But she's sitting next to a phone, Spinach. That's a smart thinking. We're going to need a little setup for that, but that might be a good thing to do. So let's take a look. Take a look and see if that's the trick we can do here. Uh, so what do we need here? This trick impresses strangers, especially if they have a tendency to believe in the supernatural. Well, well. Alright, so we need the phone number of the phone. Um, and then we need to program the number for the target phone into our phone. Cool. And set the so phone on silent as well. Alright, so we'll need to do a little bit of setup, but we can do that there. Yeah, I mean, they'd figure it out eventually, right, Gamer Gumo? You'd think so. Hey, Chris Technician, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you are doing well. That payphone might come in handy. I'll need to get the number off it. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and do that then. All right, is that the number down there? Uh, oh, we gotta, we gotta grab our cell phone first. 
There. I put the number into my cell phone memory. It should be dialed automatically if I press dial. All right, excellent. Next thing we need to do is we need to set the phone on mute. So let's go ahead and do that. Go into menu, options, mute on. There we go. Cool, we're good there. All right, and we are ready to do the trick then. Let's do this thing. All right, so how do we start this? Uh, palm the phone in your left hand. Got that. Then misdirect. Got that. Uh, then manipulate the phone. Uh, oh, it's... Oh, is that just right here? Sam can manipulate an item she holds in her hand. Click on the item to move this to the sequencer. Got it. And then finally, uh, vanish the phone up the left sleeve. Cool. All right. That looks... Uh, yeah, it's basically a Nokia phone. One of the old candy bar phones is what we used to call them. It's a noise phone. It's very noise. <laughs> All right, let's see if we got this right. That phone is about to ring. I can feel it. Hello? This is Sam Everett. Terrific. Thank you so much. I'll see you tonight. How did you know the phone would ring just now? Oh, you know. Just this little twinge I get when something really big is about to happen. But... That was a call I've been waiting on. It's about this exciting research project. Everyone in Oxford would want to do it if they knew about it. Fortunately, nobody does. It pays well, too. I'm very happy for you. But you really get premonitions? No. Just, you know, when fate's involved. The way you said? Anyway. This experiment is being done by a famous neurobiologist. I've played with the idea of going into medicine someday, so I wanted to see a clinical experiment firsthand. Angela? Famous neurobiologist? Who? He's a professor. Um, Dr. Stiles. He's really amazing, world famous. There are some stupid rumors about him. So not true. Anyway. This is a great research project, and such a valuable experience, especially if you're going into medicine. You know what I mean? I think there might be a slot left for another volunteer. You could do it with me if you want. It would be fun. Could I? Sure. Tonight if you want. It's the first session. Are you sure? Do you need to call them and ask? No. He mentioned that they need a few more volunteers. I'll call and let them know you're coming. Thank you, Sam. I'll see you then. No problem. Well, that worked very well right there. Holy crap. All right, that's four down, two to go. We're doing well now. Karbachev, welcome in. That's a candy bar phone, actually. The brick phones were earlier ones. But yeah, it's an old phone. It's a very old phone. How are you doing today, Karbachev? Hope you're having a good weekend so far. <laughs> yeah, not shady at all. She's conning like everybody she runs into here. I'm going to make sure and turn the phone off silent, too, in case that ever comes up. Because that seems like something that could cause a problem. There we go. Alright. We're good there. Remember bag phones? I remember. Well, I mean, I don't remember personally, but I remember seeing them. Alright, let's go ahead and save again. Now that we get another sucker. I mean, perspective test subject. We're doing good. Let's go ahead and head in this building and see if we can find some more students in there. We just need two I more. Need to go inside. I've got some good targets right out here. No, we already... We already got all of them. We already got all these people. What are you talking about? Um... Um... I'm, I'm gonna double check them? Getting her to join was easier than I expected. Weird, but easy. Yeah, it did work well. How about Charles over here? I'm pretty sure he'll take the bait and show up tonight. 
At least I hope so. You should. I feel pretty good about that. I don't need... No, we can't go inside there. She insists there's more targets out here, but there's not. There absolutely is not. What's our current objective? No, that's the map. Uh, what's our current objective? That's still the map. That shows what our completion is. Oh, this actually shows where we've completed things. Interesting. The, the tutorial was called Houdini's Habit. That's really cute. Alright. Still got more to work on here. Let's see. Maybe somebody's hiding in the bushes? Wouldn't that be creepy? Phone in a bag. Or kind of like a, like a whole phone system that requires an entire carrying bag. Whew, 6,000. That's horrific. That's the one I was thinking of, Gamma Guma. When I think bag phones, I think Yakuza Zero, basically. <laughs> Alright, so she says we don't need to go inside there, but I disagree. Um... Yeah, take a look at this leaf burner, maybe. Possibly. It's a barrel of burning leaves. Hmm. That's a smell second only to new car leather. And maybe chocolate. Really? Is, is that a nice smell? I'm not familiar with this. Alright, yeah, there's nothing else to see here. Uh, so... I guess we'll go head back to town and see if we can spot anybody there now. I suppose. Yeah, it was definitely before my time, too. I don't ever actually remember seeing one in the wild, but... I've seen them in uh, Yakuza, so there's a thing. Alright, yeah, Edmund Hall is now listed in uh, Dark Grey, so we don't need to head back there. Um... Oxford Town Center is in gold. That means there is things that we need to do there to complete the chapter. And Dreadhill House is in white, which means there's some bonus tasks that we can still do there if we want to. Um, let's pop back there and see if we can do anything about the bonus tasks. I'm not sure what we do. We can poke around a little bit, see what we can see. Yes, I did turn the phone off silent, so I'm not sure if that's going to have any impact, but... Better safe than sorry there, I believe. Uh, let's see. Now, the very first phones I remember seeing were either car phones or the giant mass brick phones. Um, so I remember those, but I don't ever actually remember seeing bag phones, oddly enough. Don't think there was such a thing as texting. All it did was call for a while. It definitely wasn't a thing. This is true. Excuse me. Now, uh, we'll see if the, uh... Oh, hey, we didn't see the dining room before. Alright, let's check this place out, too, while we're in here. Ooh! A hi-fi system. Let's see, Rin, your oldest brother had one of those giant brick phones? Holy crap, nice. My very first phone that I ever owned was a Nokia flip phone. And the hilarious thing was at the time I was... Well, I mean, I usually am a giant cheapskate. Um, so I asked them to give me the cheapest flip phone they had. And they said, well, here's the thing. The different colors, we, we basically price them by popularity. So we can just give you the least popular color. And I'm like, hey, it's going to be in my pocket the whole time. Who cares what color it is? Um, so they gave me a sparkly gold one. <laughs> and it cost me $15. And it was just hideous. Just absolutely hideous. The funny thing is I had the thing for like two years. And then someone's like, you know, you can pop the external faceplate right off and just put whatever color you want in there. I'm like, God damn it. Because <laughs> no, I did not know that. 
Let's see. There's a car company that added touch screens to cars in the 80s but removed them because customers complained they got distracted. The uh, In the U.S., the National Highway Transportation Safety Commission still complains about uh, touch screens being distracting. So I can see that being a thing. Um, I mean, I'd love, I, I would love if they did something with like one of those uh, projected heads up displays on the windshield, like a holographic thing. And I know some car companies are looking into that. That'd be rad. But we're not quite there yet for the most part. The red you missed your slide out keyboard phone. I had a very good friend of mine that was obsessed with those slide out keyboards. Did not want to give up her physical keyboard. Now, did you have one of the ones that came straight out or one of those cool ones that sort of flipped out in a half circle motion? Those were neat. Let's see. Freya, you had a cheapo track phone with a built in flashlight. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that, that's me right there, Chris. I was a little frustrated. <laughs> All right, what do we got in here? We got a whole shitload of CDs. Mostly older stuff, but someone likes the blues. They can't be all bad. All right, what else we got in here? We got a stereo. This doesn't look like it's been used in a long time. I guess Dr. Styles and Mrs. Dalton aren't big on music. Then why buy all the CDs then? Kind of a shame. All right, what else we got in here? We got a bunch of owls. Oh, we got an owl up there. Stuffed owls. Adds a nice fresh from the field vibe to dinner. <laughs> I suppose that works. Ooh, I've never seen one of those, Rin. That's kind of cool. I like it. I like it. Uh, we got a bunch of weird, creepy looking heads up in the rafters. Wow. Those are up there. I think they're Viking heads. It's kind of majestic. All right. Got some watercolors over in the wall over here. Classy. Let's see. Oh, we can look at the individual ones here. These watercolors are good, but I'd say homegrown. Someone in the family must be an artist. Fair enough. L plus D. Live and die? Laurel and Darty? <laughs> No, well, we know the, the scientist's first name is David, so it could be him. A couple in a boat. Kind of symbolic of a relationship. Except if it were one of my relationships, we'd be adrift in a storm in the middle of the ocean. Dramatic. I like it. A lewd and daring? Oh, I like that one. Adrian, welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you're having a good weekend so far. Got some uh, fancy looking cool, candles. Candelabra. All I need is a nightgown and a stormy night, and I could play Jane Eyre. Classy, I like it. Got a big old cabinet. China and silver, fancy. All right, let's check out this fancy-looking table. It's huge. God, you could feed the House of Representatives at this table. Some people have this kind of money. Then there are the rest of us. With five pounds in your pocket, I know, I know. Labbit and Dostella, Wobbin, welcome in. How are you doing today, Wobbin? Hope you're having a good day. Oh no, the razors. They were kind of everywhere, Rose, weren't they? I do remember those days. I do remember those days. Check out this huge window. I can see the long drive I came up last night. The road is still there. That's a good thing. Uh, oh, we can't look at the giant angel statue. You'd think that would be an interesting thing to check out, but apparently not. How about the fancy-ass chairs? That velvet's a bit worn. Bet those chairs have been in this house a long time. Quite possibly. It seems most things have been in this house for a long time. Someone seems to be taking good care of the plants. The housekeeper, no doubt. All right, I think that's everything to see in here. Let's take a quick peek. Yep, we got everything. Let's see, Shira, welcome in and thank you for the raid. How are you doing today, Shira? What was, how was your stream and what were you playing? Tell me every little thing. Shira, you actually played through this game and you enjoyed it? Excellent, excellent. I've played through this one before. This is not my first time playing it, but uh, since we're running through all of uh, Jane Jensen's stuff, uh, I wanted to make sure to touch on this one. It's a, it's a unique game. It's got a cool vibe to it and I like the whole magic trick gimmick that they use for solving puzzles too, it's very neat. Oh, Destiny 2 with a friend, nice. Destiny 2 has some really satisfying combat in it. I really enjoy the movement and the shooting and a good good range of weapons as well. 
Most definitely. Ah, all right, I didn't see this door before. So you got the dining room there and you got the kitchen there. Cool. Comment is great, nice visuals. Agreed, agreed. All right, go ahead and grab some food, but thanks again for stopping by. I appreciate you bringing your community over. Always kind of you. All right, was there anything else to see in here? We didn't look at the oven, I suppose. Someone modernized an old fireplace. Cool idea. All right, I think we've seen everything there is to see there. <laughs> Yeah, grab some food. No worries. No worries. Hope you grab something tasty. Shiro will be here when you get back. No worries. All right, I'm curious. How are we looking for uh, objectives now? We well, made progress on the chapter one bonus. There's that, at least. If I remember correctly, we've got this strange objective called the Betrayer's Price. If I remember correctly, that's an objective that's going to take us all game to complete. So that one, we're, we shouldn't be in a rush to complete, I don't think. We'll uh, do that as we can. <laughs> you guys are hilarious, oh my goodness. Oh, no, that's not the way out of the house. That's the way into the spooky study right there. And while there is some money that we could use for stuff at the magic shop, we're not supposed to steal money, anyway. So we're not gonna do that. All right. So let's head to Oxford Town Center because apparently there is something we need to do there. We'll see what we got going on over here. It's borrowing when it's a letter, but it's stealing when it's money. Apparently the magician's code is no stealing money or other valuables. I, I don't know why, but apparently that's a thing. All right, we can't talk to the dude that's just walking past. So let's uh, explore around and see if anything has changed. We'll see. What about a letter with money inside that could be an edge case? Could potentially be an edge case. Not stealing an adventure game, just money or valuables. Worthless stuff we can take wherever we want to. We've already got a... Oh, we haven't actually taken most of the stuff in the inventory. Most of that stuff is just stuff we already owned or got legitimately. We're doing pretty good so far. Uh, we'll see if there's anybody at the magic shop yet. There wasn't last time we popped in. Might be now, though. You never know. Nope. Still don't see anybody working the cash register in here. I don't think there's anything for us to do in here right now. I'll double check we didn't miss anything. Oh, we didn't take a look at the Houdini portrait right there. That does not look anything like Harry Houdini. He doesn't look like Harry Houdini. That's what I just said! Doesn't remotely look like Harry Houdini, what the hell? Also, Lotus's cards. Those aren't actually real cards that exist, what the hell? There is no one card in... Oh. What is this painting? What the hell? <laughs> Everything is wrong with this painting. I don't I don't even know where to start with that. I'm disgusted by that painting. Yeah, the infamous one of bunnies. What in the hell? What is that right there? I'm sensing some shenanigans as well. I've got a nose for shenanigans. And that seems like some shenanigans right there. Most definitely. Certified shenanigans. I assure you. Alright, so it looks like it's a little later because the sky is a little darker. So maybe we can get into the pub now? That could possibly be a thing. I've never seen playing cards before, but I've had them described to me. <laughs> possibly this game's artist. Quite possibly. Alright, is the windy dog open? Unfortunately, they're closed. No, it is not. Dang it, alright. Still can't get in there. Can we get into the Alice in Wonderland shop yet? It doesn't look like it. Uh. He's campus security. Interesting choice in headwear. A bowler is a bold choice in this day and age. This is true. A lion and unicorn. 
The architecture in England almost makes up for its weather. Savage! Uh, Alright, is there anything else to look at right here? I don't think so. Can we try and sneak in? Try to get past the guard, but not sure it's worth it. Yeah, I guess we don't know if there's anything to do in there just yet. Um. So what else is there to do here? It said there's something in here we have to do to move forward the episode. Not really seeing much. We'll see if there's anything we can mess around with in the magic shop first. I know there's stuff we want on the store shelves. Maybe if we try looking at one of them, the store shopkeeper will come out? Possibly? Could be a thing. Certified shenanigans? I've got a seal of approval right here. I will put it on these shenanigans. Most definitely. I have this power. I will use it if necessary. Let's see. Can we, can we just try picking up any items on the shelf? See what happens then? Let's see. What do we need here? What looks like something we need? Disappearing ink? We might need that for a trick. Any text written with this ink will disappear within a few minutes. Alright, no, we can't actually pick it up. That's unfortunate. Sticky gloves! While looking perfectly normal, these gloves will make any object stick to their surface. That sounds handy. Triggering the invisible wires coming with the device will trigger the flash powder and cast a bright flash of light. Alright, so that just reads the description for any of these things. That's not going to bring the shopkeeper out or anything, unfortunately. Uh, can we do anything with the game machine now? This deserves a careful approach. I should see what the owner can tell me about it first. No, I guess we can't mess around with that yet. It's the Deedless Club logo. Ah, so that's... Is that really why? Ah! Wonder? <laughs> Hi. This is a Daedalus Club puzzle box, isn't it? Is it? My, my. What a mystery. Well, this guy's hiding some shit, I see. But this is what she's basically trying to do. is She wants to find the Daedalus Club, which is supposedly some sort of secret organization of magicians, and she wants to try and join them. Let's see, was the scene tilted while I was looking at the shelves? It might have been, I'm not sure. Can I be of assistance, young lady? I hope so. I noticed it said his name was Mephistopheles as well, and that's... That's dramatic even for a magician, holy shit. That is a Daedalus Club puzzle box, isn't it? I recognize the club logo. Do you? And what would an American like you know about the Daedalus Club? I've been in Europe for almost two years now. I know a lot of street magicians on the continent. Ah. I thought you had the look. Watch carefully. Where's the ball? Where's the ball? Very nice, my dear. My name is Mephistopheles. And who are you? Samantha Everett. Sam. But my stage name is Lady Byron. Nope. Never heard of you. Well, I haven't been in England long. So the seventh guess, he does kind of have a stoff feel about him, doesn't he? Most definitely. Yeah, yeah, there's no reflection in the magic ball, unfortunately. Why would you put a giant crystal ball in the foreground if it's not going to have any reflective effects? That seems like a bad idea. Finkelroy, welcome in. How are you doing today? Game is good so far. I enjoy this game. I played it before. It's a, it's a cool one. And we're making good progress, too. We have conned several people so far, and we shall con many more. And Game of Goomba. That was totally a magic fight right there. That was pure, unadulterated, unchained magic combat right there. They're both lucky to be alive at this moment. So about the Daedalus Club. I know they have a dinner club in London. Are they here in Oxford, too? Do they run this shop? As in the Roman times, we are merely a lowly outpost, and not the thing itself. I heard they run public games, riddles, and scavenger hunts. That kind of thing. Is that what the box is? A public game? They might put those in any friendly establishment. They might. 
All right, interesting, interesting. You're curious to know what I know about the Daedalus Club. Oh, very. Will you indulge an old man? I worked with the Great Scarpelli in Rome last summer. He told me a lot. The Great Scarpelli? Red-haired, garlic-breathed old con man who favors chickens in his act. That's him. He's very talented, you know. Oh, I know. He said it's the most secret club for magicians and illusionists on Earth. All the great masters belong to it. Do they? And what other morsels did he divulge? To become a member, you have to pull off a grand game, like a major public illusion or legendary con. He's worked on one for several years, but hasn't perfected it yet. Ah, a common fate, I'm afraid. But one must always start somewhere, Miss Everett. And a good place might be that box. Yes, I believe you're right. Thank you. Alright, so in order to join the Daedalus Club, you have to pull off either a legendary con or a major illusion. Interesting, interesting. Let's see. HOG, I'm not sure I'm familiar with that abbreviation, Finkleroy. What is that uh, for? And also, let's go ahead and save, and then let's see if we can check out that box, see if we can figure out anything with it now. What could its secrets be? Oh, a hidden object! It does look kind of like a hidden object game, doesn't it? I think this was because it was made by a, a normally mainstream publisher that makes kind of budget games. So I think the publisher's house style is kind of hidden object game. So I can kind of understand how you're getting those vibes. Although I always think of hidden object games as looking a little bit more like kind of like watercolors a little bit. But the characters definitely do look like the characters in this game. All right. What is there to see? So there's two buttons on here. And on the left one, we've got the seven of hearts. And on the right one, we have the seven of clubs. You must be 21. All right. I think that title right there is a uh, a misdirect. I think it's supposed you're supposed to think at first blush, oh, it's a gambling machine. You have to be 21 to gamble. But no, I think this is a reference to blackjack. I think you're supposed to get 21 on your cards here. That's what I'm thinking. Can I get the one of bunnies? I hope not. What is wrong with that friggin' painting? What the hell? But yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking this is blackjack right here, and we have to get 21 on here. So right now we've got 14. And that is a V? I assume that's a king. And let's see, his king is uh, what, a 13, so that's a 20. A king. That's an R, though. Is that a jack? I don't, that's a weird letter scheme. Yeah, the queen is a D. What the hell? Not English, perhaps? I'm not sure. I've never seen those. Base cards are all 10, are they? All right. All right, so... Wait, if face cards are 10, then it's not possible to get a 21, is it? Aces are 1? Or aces 11 as well. So can I get an ace on one of these? 21. That did it. There we go. I forgot aces could be 1 or 11. I should know this. I played Deadlands. All right. Cool, we got a 21. Let's tell this guy that we... I, I clearly don't play blackjack. I don't... I don't enjoy gambling very much. I'm very risk-averse. Which is probably not a surprise to anybody in here. <laughs> uh, can we not talk to him? We just beat the game. Shouldn't we be able to talk to him and say, Hey, check it out. We beat your game. We can't interact with the game anymore. The Deedless Club logo. I don't understand. We got a 21 and then nothing happened. You must be 21. Uh. Did I miss something? That's really weird. I mean, there's the door over there. There's that stupid painting and there's the bookshelf. Oh, here's something. There is something. There's a prize. This is a Deedless Club riddle. My first one. All right, so we got a riddle that we're going to need to solve for the Daedalus uh, Club. The Betrayer's Price. 
five pieces of gold in the scholar's heart, where high and high above high and reigning over queen, find the room with the view, the quadrifurcus, then fire, water, earth, wind, and the fifth is at the end, where souls choose their fate. All together they point to a place. There enter the name of the one who sold his soul for 30. All right, so there's a couple piece, there's a couple things that I recognize in here. Let's see, what do we know in here? So the quadra, uh, quadrifurcus we know is that big tower in uh, the center of town. So that one's easy. Um, and the name of the one who sold his soul for 30, that's Judas. That one's easy as well. But those are the only lines that I recognize off the top of my head in here. But if I remember correctly, this is a pretty big puzzle in the game, so I'm not sure if we're able to solve all of this in Chapter 1. Um, but uh, we can see if we can get into the uh, Quadrifurcus, I suppose. That could be a thing. All right, let's see if we can talk to him now. What happens if I win the game? What happens? Only one way to find out. Which we did. The riddle says something about the scholar's heart. Is that a particular part of Oxford? I'm not familiar with the city. Hmm. I would take that to mean the heart of the university, which is where you are right now. But I wouldn't depend on my help if I were you. I'm a miser with it, for one thing. And if you got aid, how would you know if you were worthy of the game? And the game of you. I didn't. Right. Never mind. Alright, so, so we're in the Scholar's Heart right now. So we're already there, so that's a good thing. So we got that, at least. So maybe this is what the, this is. To solve the riddle, we have to get the five pieces of gold. And once we have all five pieces of gold, they'll point to a place. And once we get there, we have to enter the name Judas. I suspect that's probably what this uh, puzzle is saying right there. I think so. Oh yeah, Finkleroy, I heard about that. Unfortunately, I don't think we'll be seeing any Hitman games on this stream because I've tested several of them out for streaming. And it turns out, to the surprise of all, I'm terrible at them. Absolutely awful. I tested three of them, and I had a lot of difficulty even getting through the tutorials. So unfortunately, I don't think we'll be playing any Hitman games on here. Probably not any Thief games either, because I tried those, and I was also really bad at them. <laughs> Alright, let's see. Yeah, there's, there's nothing reflecting in the Crystal Ball. Nothing whatsoever. Which is really disappointing. Why would they put that in the foreground? And then just not have it do anything. That is such a waste. Well, what uh, what highlights in the shop now that the machine is done? Uh, just the shop shelves and the Houdini portrait. Can we look at the portrait now that he's here? Oh, now I get it. It looks like a younger Mephistopheles. Is that a joke? Or is Mephistopheles more famous than I thought? Or more conceited? That is a question. Why does he have a picture of himself and then title it Houdini? That's very confusing right there. Shade is Agent 86? Not at all. Not remotely. Oh, I don't see the portrait in the reflection either. That's a lot. Alright, we need to head to that tower though and see if we can do anything with it. Oh, I didn't see if the signature on the portrait was clickable. Shoot. We'll check that next time we're in there, Wobbin. Portrait is in there to punk people? It might possibly be. Not everyone's going to know what Houdini actually looks like in this day and age. And so it's possibly just some sort of strange little inside joke. <laughs> Alright, Carfax Tower. We need to see if we can get in there. Ah, oh, it looks like we might be able to actually. I mean, I, I, like I said, I tested the game out, and 
I wasn't good at anything involving that game. I tried. I tried doing it quietly. Yeah, I tried. Up here. Tried doing it loudly. I was real bad at both. <laughs> I really was. The modern ones look like they might be a little bit more forgiving. Uh, but they're not at the, the top of my priority list. I will definitely grab the free one when it goes free, because why the heck not? Uh, but we'll see. This is a cool angle. I like how it's got a little bit of a tilt, and I like how you can see the smokestacks in the background with the, the sun peeking through the clouds as well. That's a nice touch. Alright, so... Let's see. We can look at the sky. Pretty nice view up here. It is lovely. I will agree. Got a weather vane right there, but it doesn't look like we can look at it. Um, what else is there to look at here? No, not much. Can we shut the door? Is that a thing? Aha! There's something behind the door. There's a little box attached to the wall. The box has a Deedless Club logo. Interesting, interesting. And that is Prometheus, I believe, right there. Being eaten alive by vultures, if I remember my history correctly. Or my mythology, I suppose. Finkle Roy, your terrible at adventure game puzzles, but you love the stories? Well, you're welcome in here, where I, with some help from chat, will take care of them for you. Eagles, eagles, thank you, Bob. I appreciate that. All right, so I need to do something with this box, but I don't know what. Yeah, that's a good question. Are there any? There's a vent at the bottom. Looks like the bottom might come off, but how? Maybe it has something to do with those vents. All right, so we might need some sort of item. Let's see if there's any other clue right there. Fire, water, earth, and wind, maybe. Hmm. We do have matches, the Dennis Club matches. Let's see if we can use those to make fire. That might possibly be a thing. Fire! It worked! Sweet! Alright, what do we got here? A coat of arms paper. It's a piece of gold. And the second paper looks like a coat of arms. Maybe it's a clue to the next location. Prometheus stole fire and gave it to the humans, so we need to use fire. Perfect, perfect. All right, let's see what we got here. Coat of arms paper. Hmm, I bet it's a clue to a new location. I wonder where I could find a reference to the Oxford coats of arms. That's actually a very good question, I'm not sure. <laughs> now we light him on fire, no lighting on fire, no. What is this jigsaw here, though? It's a piece of gold for the betrayer's price. According to the riddle, there are four more hidden somewhere around Oxford. Help Sam assemble the jigsaw puzzle and solve the Daedalus Club riddle. Move a piece around by holding down the left mouse button. Right click on a piece to rotate it. Alright, well that's clearly the top right corner of something. And it looks like maybe once we have all the pieces, it'll give the clue to the last piece, possibly? But there's nothing we can do with that right now. Alright, so we've got a coat of arms, but we need to find some way to reference what it goes to. Have we, I don't think we've seen a library yet. We have, or, I mean, I suppose the doctor does have a library at the mansion. We could see if there's a book in there that would come in use. Let's see, if only there was something like a library where everything published in the UK was stored somewhere in the city. I don't know much about the UK. If that's an actual reference to something, I have no idea. <laughs> All right, so we, we got the first one, though. We got the first one. That's a good thing. Um, I do want to check one thing out, though, because I remember there was a coat of arms above the college here in town. So I want to check that out. We are next to a college. We haven't actually been able to get in there yet. But... Uh, I know there was a coat of arms over the entrance, so I want to see if that was anything relevant. Let's head to Queen Street and see if we can check that out. Oxford is home to one of the libraries in the UK where a copy of all published materials are starting. See, I did not know that. That is interesting. 
Uh, I think the equivalent of that is the Library of Congress in the United States, but there's only one of those. Um, very cool place, though, I'm told. I've never actually been there, but that's part of my bucket list, is go and check that place out. Oxford Library is the equivalent of Library of Congress. Thank you, Rin. Excellent, excellent. All right, what is the coat of arms up here? A lion and unicorn. The architecture in England almost makes up for its weather. All right, what was the coat of arms on this? Not a lion and a unicorn. All right, um... Let's check the map real quick. Where are we at? So we still need to do something in Oxford Town Center to complete the chapter. And there's still bonus stuff that we could do at Dreadhill House. Um... Well, ah, I'll keep that in mind, Emperor. Thank you. I, I really have no idea about any of this stuff, so it's really good to learn this. I appreciate that. Um, I guess we can check the library at Dreadhill House, see if they might have anything about coats of arms. That's the only place I've actually seen books that I can recall in the game so far. And we haven't seen any, like, actual scholars or anything. We've seen the freshmen, but I don't know that they'd know anything about it. I don't think any of them really had a focus in that. So let's see if we can check out the, uh, library in the parlor, see if there's anything in there. Ah, you can't go in unless you have a letter of introduction. Well, you can, but also can't. Are we talking, like, stealth mission? Are we talking sneaking? I, I'm really bad at that, is the thing. Someone must read a lot. Someday, I'll have a library. Uh, what if we load that up? Nope, that still doesn't work. Alright, nothing here. You can enter, but you can't, like, do anything. You're just sort of being a tourist, I suppose. I guess that works. Uh, can we get into his office? Oh, wait, a computer. Can we use the computer? Can we Google it? That computer is ancient. It might as well be an abacus. But can we Google it? We can't Google it, dang it. Uh, this, this might be pre-Google, I'm not sure. Or maybe the computer can't even get on Google. I have no idea. You can stand there and look American? I'll have you know, Emperor. I'm an expert at that. I've had years and years of practice. It's locked. I right, still can't get into there. Walks in, yep, that is a place where there are books. Turns around, walks out. <laughs> that sounds like an exciting little uh, adventure, surely. All right, um, uh, heraldry. <laughs> heraldry. I guess we can go talk to the other people at the college. Well, no, it says there's nothing else to do at the college, didn't it? There's some bonus points we can get here. And that's about it. We'll check and see if there's anything we missed upstairs. Because I'm curious what bonus points we missed here. I know there was a lot of clickables in Sam's bedroom, so we'll check around there a bit. You're a bit of a bibliophile? Nice, nice. I do enjoy me a good book as well. Alright, we didn't look out the window before, that's a certainty. My window overlooks trees at the side of the house. I could climb down if ever I need to escape in a hurry. That's good to know, I suppose. Windows Defender, thank you for popping up in the middle of the stream, I appreciate that. Let's see, spinach cards in the machine look like uh, bet or best cards, an old French trick-taking card game. Oh, that's interesting. That I'd never heard of before. Very interesting. I've put up with an awful lot to keep that bed. I'm so over sleeping on the ground or in cars. That's fair. Hey, 
Hey, looks like we might hang out here a while after all. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Wish me luck, Bunny. Okay, okay. I know you hate it when I call you that. <laughs> Does the rabbit know coat of arms? That rabbit would eat that piece of paper. You know this to be true, Bob. You know this. Windows Defender is keeping me safe. It is my current antivirus right now. I've just never seen it pop up in the middle of a stream like that. We're gonna have to have a talk after the stream. Most definitely. Uh, coats of arms. Coats of arms. And look at the plant again, I suppose. Houdini must have mistaken this plant for a really large salad. That's fair. Uh, nothing else to see in here. Hmm. Old jet in front of the door, I suppose. But I imagine his major is telling people, show me your ID or leave. I could always be wrong, though. It's possible. Um. Let's try something else. Let's try cold calling people. Yeah. Cold calling people. Because we don't know what this doctor is. I'm very curious. No reason to call there at the moment. Apparently we can't. Uh, I think that was the only person worth calling anyway. Is she not going to let me call people randomly? That's disappointing. No reason to call there at the moment. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Emperor, thank you for linking that. Um, is there anything we missed out here? Oh, there's a spare room over here. What is this? I guess none of these rooms have been used since the clinic closed. Alright, can't actually get in there. That's fair. Can we sneak into the bedroom over here? Last time we didn't want to, but maybe we can slip in there now. Um... Not sure whose room that is, but I think I better stay out of it. Damn it. All right. Worth a shot. <laughs> I do love that clip so much, Emperor. Just between you and me, I do check it out sometimes. Because it gives me a good laugh. And who doesn't need a good hearty laugh from time to time? All right. Did we get everything down here? There is a lot here. Yeah, we got everything down here, too. Uh, we'll go see if the housekeeper has anything else to say, and then I think we'll head back to town. Yeah. <laughs> like that? Is that how I do? And I'm going to go ahead and load that up in case we can interact with it with anybody. She seems nice enough, but you never can tell. Nope, can't talk to her again. Like that? Excellent, excellent. Alright, um... <sighs> yeah, about the only guy left we can talk to in town is the guy in front of the gate. I suppose we can try talking to Mephistopheles as well, but he already basically said don't ask me for help. But I don't think we're going to be able to get too much out of him. Like I said, I think this is something that takes a good chunk of the game to complete, so I don't think we can do all of it right now, but we'll see what we can do. <laughs> the laugh at the end, excellent. That cracked me up like crazy, holy shit. I think the problem was, Spinach, I wasn't looking at the screen for a second. I was like looking at my stream deck or something, and then I looked up just in time to see it zooming in, and it just, it just killed me. It just absolutely slayed me. <laughs> I did not see that coming and was taken completely by surprise. The word magic comes from an old Persian root. A magush was an astrologer, astrologer priest. Collectively, they were known as the Magi. I did not know that. That's interesting. Dravula Inquisitor, welcome in. Today we are playing Grey Matter, a point-and-click adventure game from Jane Jensen, the same person that created the Gabriel Knight series. And we are having a good time with that so far. He's campus security. Interesting choice in headwear. So no, we cannot interact with him any right now, unfortunately. So nothing to be done there. 
Let's see. Cool, another game I know nothing about. Time to get comfy. Excellent. Grab some snacks, a nice cool drink. Not really my thing. And I will see about entertaining you. Yeah, the bar was closed last time we went over there. I suspect it's not open yet still, but we can check. That might be something to wait for later, though. Although, if we're waiting for later, I'm not sure what else to do. Ampra, thank you so much for the gift sub to Traveling Inquisitor right there. Gift sub number 462. I appreciate that. The support always means a lot, Emperor. Thank you. And Traveling Inquisitor, enjoy your absurd emotes. Have fun with those. Unfortunately, they're closed. All right, Winnie Dog is still closed, so I don't... Oh, but it said there's nothing else to do at the college right now. <laughs> Geek Boy, I appreciate you trying, but Nightbot cannot be made to hype under any circumstances, unfortunately. He just won't do it. Rebellious little bastard that he is. It says there's nothing else to do at the university, but we could pop back there, I suppose. I'll see if we can milk anything else out of Mephistopheles, but the game insists there's something we need to do in town for the next objective. There's got to be something to do around here. Maybe there's another shop on the street we can go in now? No, no, there's not. Unfortunately. Bonus emo to Braibu. Excellent, excellent. Geek Boy, thank you for throwing down your own hype. Somebody's got to carry the weight for Nightbot around here. I appreciate it Hi, being you. Miss Everett, how kind of you to visit. All right, we actually can't interact with Mephistopheles at all at this moment. So, uh, probably not him in that case. Nothing else to see in here. All right. So, yeah, unless there's anything new in, uh, Carfax. Viltrican! Hey, welcome in! Thanks to Emperor for your gifts of Viltrican. Thank you for 21 months! of hanging around and subbing in here. I appreciate that. And uh, good to see you in here, Viltrican. How are you doing this weekend? Hope you're having a good weekend. Good to see you as always. Can we buy stuff now? We've still only got five pounds in our pocket, so. I suspect probably not. <laughs> I'm thinking probably not yet. We gotta get some more money. Oh, it prompted you. All right, I keep forgetting that's a thing now. I haven't actually seen that prompt much myself, so I can't remember about it. You couldn't remove the text. That's a nice text. Kind text. I'll take it. That's good. <laughs> but either way, welcome in, Viltrican. How are you doing today? Back in my day, five pounds could buy you the world. This is, uh, 2003, I believe, is when the game takes place, so it's possible that five pounds could take us a long way, but I'm not sure that she's going to want to spend that five pounds if we don't necessarily have anything to spend it on. Hello, what's this over here? Coat of arms plaque? Excuse me? Excuse me? What is this? Well, how motherfucking convenient. All right. Uh, ooh. Um, let's see, we've already got, we already got it loaded up. So we just need to identify that coat of arms that's on there, right? So let's take a close look. Uh, it's got a cross with a lion in the center and three green dots around it. I don't actually see that spe specific coat of arms on here. Interesting. Um, no, I don't think I see that exact one on here. Can I look at it? This represents one of the colleges. But which one? Nah, I can't get a closer look at it. That's about as close a look as we're going to get. It's got that gold seal across the top. You'd think it'd be pretty obvious because that big white cross in the black background. Not seeing it on here. 
Regent's Park? Which one is there? Where is that? Oh, it does kind of look like that one. That could be it right there. I don't appear to be able to... Oh, I didn't load it. Right there we go. Each college has its own coat of arms. Classy. That kind of has a plus on it. That doesn't match. No, apparently it's not Regent's Park. Um, I'm squinting here. I don't see anything that looks like that. This one, maybe? That doesn't match. No. I'm gonna try this one just for shits and giggles. That doesn't match. No. Um. Hmm. Campion Hall? Oh, that does have a plus sign on it. That doesn't match. Apparently not that one either. Yes, Spinach, I am more than ready for a hint. Are there more plaques? I hope not. How many colleges can there be around here? Christchurch, maybe? Oh, yeah, it's tiny. It's tiny, tiny, but I think that's the one spinach because it's got that red thing on the side. It's tiny, 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 but I definitely see that now. That's it. Christchurch College. Excellent. Good catch there, spinach. All right. So... Can we go to Christchurch College? Yes, we can! Hell yes! And that's apparently where we need to go next. Yeah, alright. Shiny blind when? I, I, I'm so bad at this. <laughs> alright. Alright, let's take a look around here. Uh, ooh, what do we... Ooh, there's a black box right here, actually. Maybe we don't need to look far. Could this box immediately be what we're trying to do? Might be. You could have met Batman, damn it! I wanted to meet Batman. There's something here. It's definitely a Daedalus Club box. It has their logo. Alright, cool. How do I open it? So I found the puzzle box. Ooh, hello. Litmus paper. That paper on the top. It must be related to the opening mechanism. Is this the water one? Let's see. What was the clue? This one is the water clue. All right. So maybe we have to put water in that this water bottle. Deedless. Maybe we have to put water in the water bottle and then uh, dump some water on it. Except we don't have the water bottle anymore. Shoot. There's no problem finding water around here if I need it. You do need it. That won't work. You need to you need to put the water in there. Oh, here we go. We've got a drop of water now. There we go. Let's go ahead and load that up and put a droplet on the litmus paper. It worked. All right. That must be a clue to the next location. It has the Christchurch coat of arms in it, so it must be around here somewhere. Um I'm not sure what the rest of that clue is. But, uh, could be a flower, maybe? P possibly? I guess we'll look around a little bit. But we solved that part of the puzzle, at least. Can we just stick a blindfold on it? That could be a thing. Ready-made shady blind? That could work right there. I could have brute forced it, true. I'm glad that we didn't, though. I'm glad somebody spotted the right one. Alright, let's, let's look around to see what we can spot. There are some flowers in here. Uh, nothing I can interact with there, I don't see. It's a naked guy with wings on his hat. I think it's a statue of Mercury, the Roman messenger. All right. Uh, nothing else I can interact with in the pond. There's a cathedral and a dining hall inside, apparently. I don't need to go in there right now. It says there's a garden on the right, too. All right, garden sounds like somewhere we might find a flower. Let's take another good look at that uh, silhouette, and then we'll head to the garden. All right. I have captured it in my mind's eye, more or less. Let's see, can we get to the garden? We can get to the gardens. Cool, let's head over there. Is it a balled up tissue? I, I mean, we can't interact with it anymore there. It's not letting me, giving me anything else. 
All right, we got a bunch of flower beds here. Let's see what we can do with these. We were supposed to get some gold, I think, but it might still be here because we're still in the same location. I'd better look around more closely. All right, none of these flowers look like the right thing. I don't think. Looks like normal plant stuff to me. Nothing unusual. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything weird here. Keep looking around. Check the other flower bed. I don't see anything there. Nothing special there. Nothing. Nothing special up there. I don't see anything suspicious. No, nothing weird looking here. Flowers. That was supposed to be humor? Oh, no worries. No worries. Um, we got some more flowers down here. We'll check those out. Yeah, there is a bunch of spots to check, so we'll check everything here. Hello, that looks suspicious, but we can't click on it, though. Nothing unusual. Looks like normal plant stuff to me. Looks like normal plant stuff to me. Apparently there's nothing here. Hmm. Looks like that dirt has been freshly dug. That could be a thing. Hello, there's a tiny little flag in it too. That flag has the Daedalus Club logo on it. Suspicious. I think there's something down there. Keep dig a beer coaster? I'm sorry? It's a piece of the ideogram and a beer coaster. The beer coaster must be a clue to the next location. Alright, cool, cool, cool. So let's see. I still need to find a few more of these pieces of gold. It looks like they'll form an image when I have them all. Alright, let's see. Can we fit these together at least? We can. There we go. Alright, so it looks like it's going to be some sort of word puzzle or, uh, like, pictogram riddle type thing. But we're making progress, at least. This has to be a clue to the next location. I guess it means I'm looking for a pub, but which one? Well, we've only seen one pub in the game, so that seems like it's pretty easy, at least. So we'll head over there. Rebus! That was the word I was looking for, Wobbin. Thank you, Rebus. That is not a word I've had to use in a very long time. So now we've got the gold from fire and the gold from water. What's the next one going to be? Uh, the next one is going to be earth. So I have to see what... Or actually, it might have already just got earth. I suppose. Was there a water one right here? Did we miss a piece of gold from this? Was there something else we were supposed to do here? No, I don't see anything else to get here. That's really weird. Alright, that's weird. Let's see, how are we in Oxford? We've only seen one pub. We haven't really been around much. I suppose that's the only problem right there. We only need a heart and we can summon Captain Planet. We're so close. We're so close. Alright, let's go ahead and save our game. 99% uh, chapter completion. Holy shit. We are just about there. Uh, how do we get out of here? Over this way? Alright, let's do it. If the answer for Earth isn't bash it with a rock, I'll be upset. I wonder if that was Earth that we just did. But in that case, we didn't get a piece of gold for water. I don't know. We'll find out what's going on in the pub. Once we get to the pub, we'll see what's going on there. Actually... Says we still have to do something in Christchurch? Maybe there was something in the water we're supposed to get. I mean, we used water to activate it, but we didn't get a clue from that. Hit it with a rock sounds like a good solution. I'm very tempted. I have a feeling the Daedalus Club would be very pissed off when they saw their box had been bashed open. 
Oh, here we go. I had to click on the Daedalus logo again. God damn it. It's another piece of the ideogram. All right. Yeah, I just had to click on the Daedalus Club logo. Hello? Get back here immediately. You're late. Uh, maybe you have the wrong person. This is not normally my phone. I know exactly who this is. We have a lot to do to prepare for tonight. Get back here at once. Dr. Stiles? Um, look, I've got four people, but I still need two more. If you give me an hour. You found four volunteers? Yes, it wasn't easy. That's enough. I had another student call to volunteer today, and you'll be the sixth. A what? Now get back here at once. Wonderful. Now instead of finding suckers, I am one. Who calls people? 2003 was a very different time, Wobbin. Okay, so I'm a little bit freaked here. Damn all those stupid stories. If he's some kind of monster, I can just leave, right? Right. I'm a fast runner. Come on, Samantha, suck it up. Time to do some neurobiology! Woo! Woo! Dr. Stiles? Didn't your mother tell you it's not polite to stare? I'm oh, sorry. The stairs are behind you. Leave now if you can't do better than that. No, I thought you'd be old or something. Mrs. Dalton said... Uh, never mind. You kept me waiting. Bad way to start your tenure here, Miss... What the hell is your name, anyway? Sam Everett. What the hell is yours? I'll take that as a rhetorical question. If you don't know who you're working for, you really are a fool. What's your area of study? English lit. <laughs> Appropriately worthless. Wow. Yeah, well, I considered studying acts of war, but I failed the howitzer's test. That gets a lot of freshmen, I'm told. Where did you get this? A jumble sale in a village outside Liverpool. I like old things. Why? My mother wore a necklace identical to this one. It was probably given to charity after her death. How bizarre. I've had to make most of the preparation myself. That's why I pay you, because your time can be wasted on menial tasks mine can't. Next time, come when I ask or don't bother showing up at all. Next time? So I have the job? As if I have nothing better to do than to try out new assistants. In that case, I'd like a room, board, and a hundred pounds a week. First week paid in advance. Are you quite insane? Wow. You'll practically have me full time since I'll be living here. You can run me ragged. Menially speaking. Besides, you don't have time to look for someone else. Make these beds. The linens are on the counter. I'll return at a quarter to. When the students arrive, make sure they know what to expect before bringing them down here. But you haven't told me anything about tonight. Inform them about me. Ah. Gotcha. Do we get a last request, Doc? How about an appeal? I have a wife and kids to support, you know. <laughs> okay, not really, but uh, I have a, a grandmother who liked me once. Yeah, it was 1989. Sit still. This isn't going to hurt. These machines are about as painful as x-rays and far less carcinogenic. I trust you, Dr. Stiles. Good. This will require nothing from any of you except a bit of imagination. Now, I want you to relax. Relax, lay back, and close your eyes. You're not going to fall asleep, but you will be deeply, deeply relaxed. 
Let go of all thoughts, all tensions. Let go of everything but the sound of my voice. You're standing in a field and your eyes are closed. It's night and the air is chilly. You're a little cold in the athletic suit you have on, but you know you'll be warming up soon. You smell freshly mown grass on the night breeze. Your eyes remain closed as you reach up in a stretch. Up and up, fingers reaching for the sky. You feel the pull all the way down your arms, your sides, your legs, all the way to your toes. Take a deep breath of cold air and push higher. Hold it and exhale. Swing your arms down, relax. In a moment, you will open your eyes and see that you are at Horsepath Track. You came here for a night run. Your muscles are in need of a run and you're looking forward to this immensely. When you open your eyes, you will see that it is a clear night. The field is lit with incandescent light from the lampposts and the track is a dark, muddy red. You have the entire place to yourself. Now, in your mind, open your eyes and begin, very slowly at first, very easily, to run. Whoa. Well, that mm. took a turn. That experiment made me so relaxed. I slept like a log. That bed doesn't suck either. So as far as she and the she knows nothing I'll happened. Up. I was about to go and wake you. Good morning, Mrs. Dalton. Smells wonderful. So, you're still here then? Still here. You got on all right with Dr. Stiles? He's a toad, but I've dealt with worse. It's fine. Glad I am to hear it. He needs things done, and seems like you could use the job. Why? Did he say something about me? Well, not to me. He's not even up yet. He doesn't sleep at night, you know. Sometimes I don't see a lick of him before noon. Sorry to hear that. Did he leave instructions for me? Well, he might have done down in the lab. Oh, and someone left this paper on the step this morning. Must have been a mistake. We don't take a paper. You have it if you like. Thanks. Mmm, that was delicious. All right, we can grab the paper in case we need to do the ripped paper tri trick later. That'll be handy. Uh, but yeah, so as far as she knows, nothing really happened in that experiment, but we saw it, the actual track, it looked like the actual track he was describing, something went crazy. So we're not sure exactly what went on there. Yeah, that was an interesting turn of events right there. Like I said, this is, this is a cool kind of mystery in this game, a little bit gothic, it's really unique. Go ahead and grab the newspaper. Prank at Hornsmith track almost blinds custodian. Crop circles at Oxford. An elaborate, bewildering ruse occurred at the Horsemith Athletics track last night. Someone adorned the gravel track with an elaborate pattern. Crop circles at Oxford? It seems the pranksters might have been inspired by crop circle con men, but the Horsemith director was not impressed, especially since one of the maintenance personnel was nearly injured. Horsepath track? That's the track we imagined last night. How weird. Hmm, this is not good. I need to look into this. Also, you notice the rest of the newspaper is blurred out, but if you notice, the, the story in the top, in the left side of the red banner clearly says he killed for his video game. I kind of want to know what that was. What's that story? What's going on there? <laughs> I think the one in the lower left says American football at Chelsea Stadium? Question mark? I can't imagine that it ever, no one ever stand for that. <laughs> he can't, I noticed they put killed in yellow too. He killed for his video game. 
It sounds so uh, brutal, but no, there's nothing else we can read here, unfortunately. That's all we get. <laughs> they do do that? Seriously? I didn't know there was any uh, American football in uh, uh, the UK. Oh, exhibition games. I suppose that makes sense. I'm like, they wouldn't play like an entire season there. As far as I know, it's not tremendously popular. I did not know that. That's interesting. Thank you for letting me know. All right, so... I think that's everything we need to do here. Let's go ahead and make a save for a new chapter. Go ahead and make a new save slot for it. All right, and... Let's see. I think I'm going to go turn off the EC and refresh my uh, drink real quick because I'm very thirsty. Do I need to bring up the glass of diamonds again? Do I? Please, no, Rin. Please, I, I, I understand. I'm nodding. I'm not. You can see it going on here. <laughs> uh, so give me just a moment. I'm going to uh, turn off the EC so it doesn't get too cold in here and get another glass of water because I want to see if we can dig into this next chapter as well. I'm not quite ready to end for the evening yet, and I hope you folks aren't either. Uh, so... Give me just a moment and then I'll be right back. I promise I'm not fleeing from that video that Rin posted. I'm actually needing to get a glass of water. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. So I will be right back in a second, folks. That might... All right, sorry about the delay there, folks. Thank you for being patient. I appreciate that. Let's get back to the game, shall we? Now, when Rin showed me that, I wasn't actually too deeply affected. And I'll tell you why. That's because I come from Chicago. And here in Chicago, we have something called the Super Bowl Shuffle, which is basically the Chicago Bears version of that. And it's 
it's pretty goofy too. If you've never seen that before, I'd look into that as well. It's it's a thing, let me tell you. <laughs> Saturday, get ready, head to bed. Hasn't been a good week. I'm sorry to hear that, but hopefully uh, some rest and a little bit of a weekend will uh, help turn things around. I'm going to keep my fingers crossed for you, but I appreciate you stopping by Saturn and hanging out. And uh, we will see you around. You take care of yourself. All right, so what do we need to do today? Uh, is there anything out here? Let's see. No, let's head down to the basement then, see if we can talk to the doctor. I don't think she said anything about instructions being left. Oh, jeez. Well, this looks creepy as hell. Let's uh, explore around here a little bit now. Nice effect seeing those faces look down at you from the darkness. Maybe I can incorporate something like that into my act. Good thinking, good thinking. There's a grate on the floor here. Um, not gonna happen. Not without a few sticks of dynamite anyway. Alright, no easy way to get that out then. Gotcha. Big old wine rack over here. Into wine much? This one wall probably costs more than I've made in the past five years. Damn. All right, Saturn, sounds good. Now, there's a big gate in the back. Take a look at that. That must be where Dr. Stiles keeps his past victims. Oh, boy. <laughs> I see Sam is starting to buy into all the rumors. Uh, so we've got a door labeled Main Lab and a door labeled Private Lab. Well, let's start with Main Lab. And see what we can find in there, and then we'll go from there. Ah, oh, that is good. And I don't see anybody in here. But there is a note of instructions on his desk over there, so we'll look around, and then hopefully that note will be what we need to do next. It looks like a full-body medical scanner. Must have cost a fortune. Yeah, and how do they even get it into this basement? That's another question I got right there. Doesn't exactly look like there's any spacious entrances down here. Someone in the Stiles' family had a thing for stuffed birds. That one's just plain evil. Bob, it was magic. That would fit the theme very well. I can see it. The shape of some of those is a little odd. I wonder if they had abnormal brains. Oh, not only does he have a shelf full of skulls, they're spooky skulls, because of course, of course they are. Uh, let's see, anything else to see over here? You never know when you're going to need a spare brain. He's actually got brains in jars, that's kind of epic. Assembled it on site clearly? I wonder how exactly, like, how small you can break down these before you need to, like, re, re uh. Like, how small can they be broken down for a transport? I'm curious. They just built the house around the spaceship, goddammit, Rin. <laughs> uh, let's check out this photo over here. That's the woman from the portrait in the hall. The one we're not supposed to ask about ever, apparently. That looks Victorian. Very cool. I can see that in my dressing room someday, when I'm famous. Phrenology head, back when they thought the shape of your skull could tell you about your psyche. A little light reading? No thanks. Those are some very large textbooks. This is your brain on a blackboard. Ha! <laughs> it actually is a brain on a blackboard. Well played. Well played. Alright, let's go ahead and grab the note. Alright, see you. Oh, the real welcome in. Hey, Shane, I bet there are spiders living in those skull eye sockets. That would be the correct gothic aesthetic. That does make sense. Welcome in, other real. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing well. Miss Everett, as mentioned, I need you to sort my files. That was the reason for your employment. Instructions are as follows. In general, file folder by the first letter on the tab, except... If it's a publication of mine, file under P for publications. If it concerns Oxford, file under O. I don't expect you to finish today, but do begin if that isn't straining you too awfully. 
DS. All right, there's our instructions. We need to sort files. Yay! All right, dear Dr. Styles, we are in desperate need of the contractor's report for the equipment you donated to the FMRIB Center at John Radcliffe Hospital in 2002. This is the fifth notice we have sent you in the last two months. Please send the receipt to me by Friday at the latest, as is required by our auditors. Desperately, Susan Whittier, assistant to Mr. Headley, the Department of Clinical Neurology, Radcliffe Infirmary. Contractor's report? Wonder what that's all about. I should keep my eyes open for that contractor's report. All right, yeah, we'll see if we can spot that anywhere. All right, I don't see anything else to spot on the table there. Anything else to see in here? Oh, a couple things. There's a dead rose down here? Those dead flowers are pitiful. I guess Styles doesn't let Mrs. Dalton clean down here. Apparently. We could put some water in the vase, I suppose, if we had some water. We don't have anything to carry water right, th right now, though. I bet that's some bonus points, though. I would assume. 2002? Someone's a pack rat. His appointment book from last year. That's not something you need to keep around, necessarily. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Lost, welcome in. It's kind of cozy. I think the skulls really spruce the place up. How are you doing today, Lost? Hope you're having a good weekend. Let's see, Peggy. Yeah, that's what I think that was what she was referencing is the old This Is Your Brain on Drugs ad from way back when. Um, Alright, so there's the uh, filing cabinet right there. So let's see where we get started on that. It's a lot of files. Alright, so let's remember right here, in general file folder by the first letter on the tab. Except if it's a publication of David Stiles, put it under P. If it concerns Oxford, put it under O. Excuse me. Trying to remember that. Radivarius, welcome in. This is your brain on Pokemon. Puts it on Ash Ketchum hat. I can see it. My brain has definitely been on Pokemon for a very long time. How are you doing today, Radivarius? Hopefully you're having a good weekend so far. I want to sort those files before Dr. Charm gets up. Straining me too awfully. My ass. <laughs> All right. Art and the brain. That goes under A. To be or not to be. That goes under T. Let's see. HR MRI published 1999. Um, how am I supposed to know if that's something he published or not? I don't know. I'm going to assume he didn't publish that, so we'll put that under M. No, apparently no, that goes under P. Lobotomy, that goes under L. Yellow lights, science at a crossroad, that goes under XYZ. My way or the on the highway, that's a nice title right there, that goes under M. Organic life, that's an O. How would not to work? Man, I need to know how to do that. Uh, it's G-H-I. E-science. It's under E. There. That was fast. And that, now I can snoop. What fun. That actually was ridiculously fast. All right. It said published by him. Was goes under P. It didn't have any indication it was actually published by him. So I wasn't sure. I was, I was, I was a little uh, confused. I'm doing good, Radivarius. Thanks for asking. That's the only one more day of work before your weekend starts lost. Good to hear. Hopefully you have got a good weekend coming up. Are you saying that my brain on drugs is a nutritious breakfast? Are you saying I have options on how to cook my brain on drugs? That sounds actually kind of exciting. <laughs> What's the thing with the lights? I don't know. I don't think there's anything we can look at. It. Yeah, there's nothing we can look at in this scene, unfortunately. All right. Uh, let's see. So this leads to the basement hall. And this says it leads to the main lab. I thought we were already in the main lab. Go take a look. There's a lot to see down here, uh, Bob, and they're not letting us look at all of it, unfortunately. 
Hard-boiled brain? Scrambled brain? Brains Benedict. All right, so this is where we did the actual uh, study the previous night. It was nice of Dr. Styles to spring for the super deluxe lobotomy beds. She didn't lobotomize you. Don't be dramatic. I better not touch Dr. Styles' computer. He's not exactly the forgiving type. He seems like a bit of a jerk. This is true. That's the fMRI equipment. Supposedly harmless. It is harmless. What's wrong with you? Stop being paranoid, Sam, for crying out loud. Let's see. Sludgefest, welcome in. How are you doing today, Sludgefest? Hopefully you are having a good weekend so far. Oh, you were thinking iZombie. I haven't seen all of that. I've seen, like, a good chunk of the first season, and that's about it. Oh, uh, let's see. Cosplay Diver. Have you heard of this one before? It's a pretty cool game. I do like it. Perspective reminds you of Disco Elysium. They don't have every scene like this, just this kind of one, but it's a cool perspective, isn't it? And how did you like Disco Elysium, Cosplay Diver? I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, I haven't played it yet, but it's everyone has told me good, good things about it. All right, we can look at the curtains in here. I think I prefer those open, just so I have the illusion that I know what's going on. <laughs> there you go. You enjoyed it, Freya's? Excellent, excellent. There was something else to look in here, too. Uh, where was that? It says restraining straps, but I don't see where that is. Somewhere around here? You know? Just the beds. I see straps on the beds. It's not the thing, though. Where is it seeing a restraining strap at? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, I probably don't need to look at that. It's not any huge necessity. Uh, so let's go ahead and take off from here. Let's uh, see. Lost, you really want to try it sometime? I, I do too. I really do as well. Cosplay Diver, you enjoyed it for what it was? Excellent, excellent. Sludgefest, you are all right. I hope you're well today. I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. I am feeling pretty good. Been a good weekend so far, and I'm having a lot of fun with this game as well. Interesting little title. All right. So that it said was the main lab, but also there was a door to go in the main lab there. So can we go in the private lab? Is that a thing? The door's locked. All right. Uh, apparently we can't go in there. That one's locked. Suspicious. This guy is kind of creepy, you gotta admit. So we'll uh, see what we can see eventually. All right. So we did our mission today, so we don't really have anything else we need to do for the good doctor for the time being. Uh, so I guess we got the day to ourselves, so we can go see if we can do some more Daedalus Club stuff and possibly investigate what happened at the uh, track as well. We've got some options here. Um, so let's head outside first. Or actually, let's, let's poke around the house a little bit more and see if uh, the good doctor himself is around anywhere. Although she did say that she usually doesn't see him before noon. So no... I don't see him anywhere. Can we, can we do anything with the money yet? Doesn't look like it. I don't know if we've actually gotten paid. I'll check her wallet. See if we've actually done anything uh, worth getting paid yet. Styles paid me a week in advance. It feels good not to be stone broke. All of right. Course, that means I actually have to stay here for at least a week. All right. So we've got the money, at least. We've got so we can buy some stuff at the magic shop if need be. That's a good thing. Items of the magic shop, yay! We can go to the shop! It's not an RPG, but it still gives me joy being able to hit up the shop and just buy stuff. It's a good feeling. A little bit of retail therapy in the digital universe.
All right, so... Looks like uh, every location is gold here right now, including Dread Hill House. So we've got a lot we're going to need to do today, but let's start... Uh, by checking out the Horsemith track and see what exactly happened over there. Only retail, th retail therapy you can afford? That's fair. That's fair. That pattern, holy crap. That's an elaborate pattern. Someone went to a lot of trouble. Except we saw in that vision, it looked like it happened almost instantaneously. Which is suspicious. Let's see if we can talk to this gentleman over here. Ten to one, he's not an Oxford student. Looks like a headbanger to me. He does have the, uh, the mohawk going on right there. It's got some sinister elements to it, Lost, but it's got some cozy elements too. It's, it's a nice balance, I think. Whoa. Hey. Hi. I heard something happened out here. Damn, that is freaky. Yeah. You a student? Me? Hell no. Well, that's all right then. I'm sick and tired of those spooners trying to tell me I've lost my mind. They wasn't here, was they? They always think they know everything. And that's straight up. I'm Eddie. I'm Sam. So why can't a headbanger study at Oxford? I think her idea is why would a headbanger want to study at Oxford? It's so stuffy there. I'm told. Let's see. Sludge Fest, the presentation of this game reminds me of Still Life, though much less graphic. I We gotta play Still Life at some point, even though... Oh, I don't like Still Life. Still Life had a puzzle that made me rage quit harder than I ever have any adventure game I've ever played, but eventually we will be playing Still Life on stream. Maybe that could be the uh, third game for a charity stream for Mass Effect 2. Since I really don't care for it. That's a possibility. That is a possibility. You were here when that happened then? Yeah. So what was it? A bunch of spooners messing about? Yeah. I think you can handle the truth. Because no one else can. Screw them, right? I've got an open mind. Alright. You ready? I was here, painting lines on the track. Every few months I gotta do it. Had my headphones on, you know? Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> Rocking out. Yeah? All of a sudden, bam, like that. I'm in the middle of this wind. I'm in a huge cloud of dirt, right? It was moving too. The little pebbles and shit stinging me. It was like one of them cyclones or something. No way. Scared the crap out of me. I can't breathe, can I? So I legged it. Can't see nothing. Finally, I get out of it, onto the grass. A cloud of dust, like a dust storm? Yeah. So then I looks back at the track. Them lines were there. Just like that, eh, up. You want to know what I think? Yeah, I do. <laughs> you heard of crop circles, right? Well, this was just like that crap. Only I saw it happen. <laughs> God. I think it was aliens. I swear to God. I mean, I don't know about the aliens part, but we did see it happen. So it is a little bit spooky. What time did all this come down? Um, maybe half past? I came in at 11. It took me a bit to get the paint mixed and stuff. Did you hear anything? Maybe the sound of a motor? Nah, no, 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 no. Anyway, I had my pod cranked. Back in the day when iPods were the choice way to listen to music. Let's see, did anyone here ever play the Usborne Puzzle Adventure books? That sounds really familiar, Lost. I'm pretty sure I have because the name sounds familiar, but I'm drawing a blank on the actual puzzle books. Um, can you describe any of them or give any titles? I'm really curious now. 
Pod is the euphemism. I know it's it's what all the cool kids call them. Did you see anything else at all? My eyes are all clogged from the dust. I don't know what. What? You did see something else, didn't you? Come on, Eddie. We're cool, right? Well, I, 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 I ain't said this to nobody, but there, there was something on the track. What? I saw the funnel still going around. This cloud of just chaos, right? Dust and pebbles and shit whirling around. Like something from a sci-fi movie. The thing is... It was following the track. What do you mean, following the track? I mean, I saw it turn the bleeding corner. Who ever heard of wind doing that? It is pretty spooky, most definitely. Oh, shit! Oh, shit, Rin! I haven't heard those titles in about a million years. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I had at least one of those when I was a kid. Oh my god, as a matter of fact, hang on, I need to look up... I think Puzzle Island sounds familiar. That sounds so familiar, but I, I haven't heard that in so long. Hang on, hang on, I gotta get a picture of this. Uh, Puzzle Island... Uh, book, there we go. Let's see if this looks familiar. Oh my god, yes! I don't know if Puzzle Island is the one I had specifically, but I've definitely done some of these back in the day lost. Holy crap. Yes, I, I've done at least a couple of those from uh, probably the local library back in the day. That's wild. I'd completely forgotten about those. Norman Osborn, the Gurn Goblin. <laughs> Radivarius, well played. <laughs> How long was it from the time the wind hit you till you saw the lines? Oh. Smart, ain't ya? That's the thing. Couldn't have taken me more than five minutes, maybe ten max to get clear of it. Them lines was already painted when I looked back. In all that dust, too. Oh, you tell me how that's possible. No way they could have been there before. It must have been pretty dark out. You see them lights? Oh, have a look. I would have seen it. Maybe you passed out for a while. You said you couldn't breathe. Oh, you sound like Mr. Gerald, my boss, bloody wanker. Look, I'm not saying it's impossible. I mean, I'm not God Almighty, am I? But that ain't the way I remember it. Hey, Eddie. Thanks, man. You're pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anytime. <laughs> See you around. See ya. Alright, so, there's that. I suppose Eddie could be right about the time. Magicians have been known to pull off big stunts in minutes, but not without a lot of planning and practice. Someone knew what they were doing. I'd better see what I can find out about the skilled magicians in this area. So, it's... We saw it happen. We saw a big cloud of dust and then it basically appeared, just like Eddie said. And that is... Quite a feat, but Sam thinks it's not completely impossible for a skilled magician that had done a lot of planning, so that's interesting. Emperor, you say dress code is definitely not too much of a concern at UD in the UK? I suppose you'd know. That's interesting. Uh, let's see. Rin, no uniforms at the university. The clothing uni is still very much steeped in classism, depending on where you are. That makes sense, too. Alright, I don't think there's anything else to see here. So let's go ahead and take off. So Sam says we need to learn about magicians in the area, so that sounds like we need to pay a visit to Mephistopheles again and see what he's got to say. I'm not sure who else would know but him. But it looks like we're done at the track at least, so we're good there. That's a one item crossed off the old to-do list. Let's see, I suppose the most you get are the dinner gallons at Oxford and Cambridge? I don't know much about those. I don't know much about anything of uh, Oxford University culture, or UK University culture in uh, any way. Completely blind to uh, all of that, unfortunately. But I enjoy learning, I do. Alright. This is spooky, though. The fact that everyone in the, uh, the lab was all thinking about that track. 
and then suddenly, you know, stuff happened at the track. Weird. I mean, is it a coincidence or some sort of weird con that the doctor is in? I don't know. But it looks like we can get into the pub at least, and we do need to get in here for the next part of the Daedalus Club puzzle. Let's pop in here. Miss. Hi. Yeah, I saw the pub light was on on the sign, so I figured we should pop in to the pub while we're in Oxford pub. The power of the mind at work, apparently? That seems strange. But yeah, we'll look into that a little bit more, Peggy. I think while we're here, while we're working for Dr. Styles, we're going to have to figure out what he's up to, at least. It's too spooky to not investigate, most definitely. Graduation gowns, but you wear them to dinner. That's very elaborate. <laughs> What did I usually wear to dinner at college? At least half the time I was wearing sweatpants. <laughs> I did not care at that point, I'll tell you that much. Let's see, Rain, it is 3 p.m., my workday is over, it's Friday and it's 30 C out, too early for beer? I suppose that depends on how cold the beer is at this point. Uh, but let's see, this is the error clue and there is a hunting horn right here, so I assume that's what we're looking for. Let's see. That's a curious piece. It is. It's not every day you see a wishing horn. All right. What do you do with it? Can we just blow into it? Barrel of laughs. <laughs> I don't know a lot about horns, but that doesn't look right. I think there's a piece missing. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh, that, oh my god, that tiny little noise. That tiny little noise. Let's see. Rin, the beer has been in the fridge for many, many days. Ooh. Hiding in the crisper drawer. Clever. No one would think to look for it in there. <laughs> She did give it a big old try there, Peggy. I'll give her an A for effort, if nothing else. It did sound like a wet fart. Oh my god, it's probably part of the hilarity there. All right, can we talk to the barkeep about what the hell? Let's talk to the barkeep about what the hell. Hi, my name's Sam. Can I bother you for a minute? I doubt that you could bother me, a nice-looking girl like you. <laughs> but I'm all ears if you want to try. All right. Can you tell me about the pub? Curious name, the Windy Dog. Oh, well, you see, it was named after the digestive problems of the original owner's pet. Call it. <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> no, I'm just joshing you. Not oh, damn it. It was named for a ship, you know. The founder was a retired sea captain. Damn it! I was sure it was a fart joke. He, at least he knows that it sounds like a fart joke. I'm glad about that. And the fact that she did not try it once, nah, she tried it twice. See, that's, that's effort. She's like, huh, maybe somehow I have blown into this hole incorrectly. Let me try doing it again, but in a different way. Oh no, I've gotten the same results. I appreciate her, uh, her effort, though. That is good. We do need to get these clues, so she's got to do what we got to do. Do you know the Daedalus Club? Is this pub in one of their riddles? Uh, Daedalus Club? Uh... I couldn't tell you a thing about that, lass. Hmm. Cute gimmick with that horn. Do many tourists fall for it? Do you mean the wishing horn? It isn't a gimmick. The horn was on the captain's boat. It was blown at any sign of danger. See, the captain still haunts this place. And if you blow the horn, his spirit will come to you. And if you speak your wish, <laughs> he might just grant it. Like I said, cute. Not very sanitary, though. Not a bit of it. I soaked the mouthpiece in a hundred proof all day. Cleanest damned spot in all of England. Well, I appreciate that, at least. But hey, if he's soaking the mouthpiece all day, that means he's got it separate. Is there something missing from the horn, like a mouthpiece? I told you I soaked it in a hundred proof all day, didn't I? <laughs> Yeah. 
Here you be. Gee, thanks. All right. Now let's see if we can try this again. Yeah, that guy is determined to get that thing clean. I appreciate his effort as well. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, let's try this again. So... There we go. Uh, apparently we can't inspect the mouthpiece, so let's grab it and pop it in here. Told you she wasn't stupid. That a girl! The captain was sure to hear that. Go on. I want a piece of gold. Piece of gold? What the hell is that? If it's money you want, ask for a hundred pounds. Crikey. Whatever happened to love? That's what I'd like to know. Thought you looked the type. There's your piece of gold and a little something extra. Thanks. My pleasure. Good luck. The Trial of Archbishop Cranmer, Christ Church Cathedral. Alright, so that was a pretty easy puzzle. Just Can you solve the clever riddle of asking the barman for the mouthpiece? And then telling him I want the thing. <laughs> Alright, I'm not going to complain too much. Easy puzzle is, is a puzzle solved. The postcard says the Trial of Archbishop Cranmer, Christ Church Cathedral. All right, well, we've been to Christchurch at least, so we know where that is. And let's see. Oh, no, not that. Let's take a look at what we've got in the puzzle yet. Just need one more piece of gold. All right, so we've got all that. And we've got all this. Boom. Ooh, we're almost done. We're almost done, and then we can start solving this thing. Look at the back of it, unfortunately, they don't give me an option to. Oh, oh the, the postcard, I suppose we could do that. But let's try going to Christchurch first, because there's a bunch of places we haven't explored at Christchurch. So I think we might need to actually check out the, the actual chapel there, quite possibly. Uh, but for now, uh, we, we got uh, some clues here, but we'll try and solve that once we actually finish the rebus with that last thing. What did it say about the last piece of the puzzle? Um, fire, water, earth, wind, and the fifth is at the end where souls choose their fate. That could be a chapel. Probably something churchy, I imagine. Quite possibly. So, let's head over there and see what we can find. Trial of Archbishop Cranmer. We'll have to see what that means. Uh, let's go ahead and save with another puzzle accomplished. And that puts us at 33% for the chapter. Not bad. All right, and let's go ahead and uh, teleport over to Christchurch. Save us a little bit of time there. All right, so over here is the Christchurch Cathedral nave. So let's poke our heads in there. And see if maybe we can get any clues in there as to what that phrase on the postcard meant. Because that's what I'm guessing. I'm guessing it refers to something we haven't I seen. I guess a church could be a place where souls choose their fate. That was my thinking. Alright, lots to look at around here. Let's talk to this guy. The guide! Oh, the guide might know some stuff. And so the cathedral was... Yes, uh, may I help you? You're a little early for the guided tour, but if I can be of assistance... Oh no, I'm not really visiting for now. I'm not with a guided tour anyway. Really? Maybe you could help me then. Ask me some questions about the cathedral, like you're a tourist. Well, I guess I can. All right, um... And what can you tell me about these stained glass windows? There are many stained glass windows in the cathedral, and we have one of the few specimens of flaming heart angels in Western England, uh, just right here. All right. So what about this altar over there? It's almost as old as the cathedral itself, and it features a triptych where some say Judas the Betrayer appears. It is rather unlikely, but this theory is based upon the fact that this character has a small purse attached to his belt. 
All right, the last part of the puzzle has to do with Judas, so we'll try and remember that has to do with the altar. How old is the cathedral? Henry VIII officially opened it in 1546 under the name of Ecclesia Christi Cathedralis Oxoniensis. Anything else special about the cathedral? The cathedral was the smallest in the United Kingdom until 1905, when the previous parish churches became cathedrals on their own. Birmingham took the title then, and nowadays it's Derby Cathedral. So I guess you've done pretty well. Really? Oh, thank you, miss. All right. We might have to ask him some more questions after we <coughs> poke around a bit, but we'll see what we can find. Give me just a second, folks. Sorry about that, folks. Got a little bit of a tickle in my throat there. That was weird. All right. Let's investigate. See what we can find around this place. See if we can find any weird clues or anything. All right. We can go over to the altar. I suppose let's go approach the altar and see what's over there. Since that was supposedly where the uh, picture of Judas appeared, according to legend. All right. What have we got here? Baptism pool. There's something under there. Something under there? It sounds echoey. Alright, so that's hollow. It sounds echoey. Interesting. Uh, did they say anything about that in the clue? Nope, just in the fifth is at the end where souls choose their fate. Interesting. Well, let's keep looking around and see if there's anything else to see. There doesn't appear to be anything else to see here. Oh, there's a switch over here. What is that? Could it be a secret passage? I want to see a secret passage. That sounds cool as hell. I wonder what this does. I did not expect that. Huh, fills the pool with water. Alright, so is that something something enchantment? <laughs> oh, I'm so excited for Dragon Age 4. I need more Dragon Age in my life. It's a baptism pool. Alright, so there's that. Can we drain it again? We pull the switch a second time? Oh, uh, yeah, we can't drain it. Interesting. Sounds echoey. Supposed to spell Judas out somewhere, but I think that was only after we have all the pieces, right? All together, they point to a place. So we're supposed to get all five pieces of gold, assemble them, solve the rebus, go to the place they point to, and then enter the name Judas. So we still got a few steps before we get to there. How are we supposed to get that last piece of gold? Sounds echoey. Says it sounds hollow. What can we do with that? Nothing else to see here, is there? No. Maybe we can go ask the tour guide about the baptism pool. Maybe he'll have, have some more information about it. If it was another type of game, I'd probably just grab a hammer and smash it open, but somehow I don't think that's what we're supposed to be doing here. And there is... We can't talk to him again. That's weird. That is a nice piece of stained glass. 
beautiful stained glass window. I especially like the bloody heart. Nice touch. It is pretty metal. Agreed. Agreed. Alright, nothing else to see there. Hmm. Alright. I feel pretty confident this is the place. But I'm not sure what else to do. Sounds echoey. We get an action command to click on the baptism pool. It means we can usually do something with if we click on it. What all it really has or do is say it sounds echoey. Bob, you think you got a hint? All right, I'll, I'll, I'll hear you out. What do you got, Bob? What are you thinking for this one? I'm curious. I did not expect that. You should have since that happened last time. It's a baptism pool. Put the postcard in the pool, possibly. That could be a thing. Maybe it's uh, some sort of... Another litmus paper puzzle, possibly? Or maybe we can uh, load this up in our inventory and ask the uh, tour guide about it, possibly. That could be a thing as well. The postcard says the trial of Archbishop Cranmer, Christ Church Cathedral. All right, let's go ahead and load that up. We cannot use that with the water, unfortunately. That's not going to work. There are other places to see at Christchurch, so this might not be the right location either. We might have to look around Christchurch a little bit more. Although she did say this could be the right place when we came in here. Doesn't look like we can do anything with the postcard at the empty pool either, so let's go ahead and leave. Was there more in the pub? More what? Like, things to look at? I don't think so. We got our clue... We got our piece of gold and we got our key to the next location. That's usually all we need to do at the locations. No, I don't see anything else here. So let's poke around Christchurch a little bit more. Let's walk around a little bit more and see if there's any other interesting locations we might need to do something with here. Because there are a couple other places to check. For example, I know the gardens said they led to somewhere else. I want to take a look at that real quick, see where those led. What's on the back of the postcard? I don't think we can check. I don't think we have any way to rotate, rotate the postcard. Um. The postcard says the tr- The postcard- nope. Yeah, we can move it around, but we can't rotate it any. We can zoom in on it. But that's it. That's weird. So it does say the cathedral right there. Looks like we can't actually go to the meadows though. So there's something we gotta do with the cathedral. I can't see what there's so little to do in there. There's a big meadow out that way. I don't have time for a stroll at the moment. All right, so we can't go to the meadow over there. Good to know. All right, so let's head back to the quad. Um, all right, so no, that is the only place we can go here then, I suppose. Oh, maybe we can go to the hall? Possibly. Let's see if we can go over to the Christchurch no Hall. No point going in there right now. All right, so she says there's no point to go in there right now, which is correct. We don't actually have a legitimate reason to go there. All right, so it's gotta be somewhere in the cathedral itself because that's literally what the clue says. Unfortunately, we can't talk to him again. You think he'd know? You would think. So all we've got is this altar. And all there is to see back here is the baptism pool and the switch. Sounds echoey. That's it. That is all there is to see here. Um, what else have we got in our inventory? The postcard. 
Bermerly letter, the note of instructions, the newspaper, the beer coaster, the matchbook, the clues, the cell phone, the magic handbook. I suppose we could try using the Swiss Army knife on it. Sounds echoey. We cannot use the Swiss Army knife. Right. What are we looking for? We're trying to figure out what to do in the Christchurch Cathedral to get the fifth and final clue for the betrayer's price. It's possible it's something we have to come back to, but the fact that we can get here right now leads me to think that maybe we can do it right now, but I'm not 100% positive. We can't always come back because there just doesn't seem to be much to do here. And it doesn't seem like we have anything in the inventory that come in handy at this moment. I'm gonna pull out the diary real quick and take a quick look at the other stuff that he said. Would you like to know if I can do it now or not? Yes. If, if you know if I can do it now or not, or if I have to wait, that I would like to know. Give you, you know what makes your day Coke in a glass bottle? I don't know why Coke in a glass bottle tastes different, but it does. Something special about it. Something it feels summery just seeing the little sweat droplets on the outside of the glass bottle as well. And to me, at least. Most definitely. All right, so we'll look at the tour guide's uh, answers right here. Uh, there's a stained glass window, which we can look at, but I don't know if there's anything else to do with that. With some ice cubes, Coke on the Rocks is nice as well, especially in summer. That is a very refreshing beverage right there. All right, Alter has the triptych, which features, uh, which some say features Judas. Um... Nothing else really interesting. We should be able to do it now. All right. All right, so something we should be able to do with this. That's interesting. Well, I understand it's being told to me. All right. We are in Chapter 2, if that helps, right now. All right, no, nothing really interesting in what the guide told us. The Judas thing is kind of cool, but we can't actually look at the altar. Sounds echoey. There's something we're supposed to do with the baptism pool, and we can pull the switch... To fill it with water, but that's about it. I'll try pulling the switch again. Emperor, you got a lurk to go to a meeting? Alright, well, I hope your meeting goes smoothly for you. I know meetings are rarely fun, but I'll wish you best of luck. And thanks for lurking, Emperor. I appreciate it. I did not expect that. See, it looks like there's something in the Oh, there is something in the water right there. Son of a bitch. I thought that was a reflection or something in the water and I didn't pay it any more mind, but there is something in the water. Once again, I'm blind and that's what was holding me back. Appreciate your face, thank you. Another piece of the ideogram. All right, there we go. All we have to do is pull the switch and receive the final piece of the ideogram. All right, let's assemble this some bitch then. Do that, oops, nope. Put you over here. You. All right. And that's it. Now, if I can just solve this rebus, I should be able to finish the game. See, she just, she knows what a rebus is. All right. So we've got car plus axe plus F. Carfax. Well, that's the uh, the central area with the tower right there. Uh, flower minus F L plus T. Carfax Tower, that's easy enough. Bone minus B plus PH. Carfax Tower phone? And it's got a picture of a phone booth on the side in case that was uh, a bit too much of a struggle for us. All right. All right, we can do that. Sure. <laughs> not the most challenging puzzle I've ever seen, but again, I'm not going to complain too much about the uh, easy win. Rin, you're caressing the cold drink. Have you actually cracked it open yet, or are you just uh, enjoying the presence of it in your immediate vicinity so far? I'm curious now. Either way, I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't. Bob, you're still having coffee? Coffee's never a bad idea. Except maybe, like, right before you go into bed. That's a bad time for coffee. This is true. But otherwise, most of the time, not a terrible idea. All right, um... I suppose we can just jump out to it on the map. And we're done at Christchurch as well. Awesome. Making good progress here. Both? Both. Both is a good answer. I think both is the optimum answer right there. <laughs> All 
Let's see. Carfax Abbey was where Dracula hold up. Oh, yeah, I do remember that. It's been a long time since I thought about the actual novel, but you are correct, Lost. All right. Let's pop into the phone booth, then. What are we doing there, I wonder? Also, I noticed there's a street vendor here that wasn't there before. All right. What are we doing here? Oh, and here's where we put in Judas, right. So, five, eight, three, two, seven. Congratulations on mastering the game. Here is your reward. Ooh, what did we get here? Wow, this is amazing. I sold my first Daedalus Club riddle. How cool is that? All right, we got a coin that says Houses of Parliament, the Betrayer's Price. And on the flip side, it says St. Paul's Cathedral, and then the Betrayer's Price again. So this is probably just a, a challenge coin that indicates that we solved the puzzle. That's badass. All right. A girl what? traveling on her own. Well, I suppose we should probably go talk to uh, Mephistopheles, see if he has anything to say after solving the puzzle. Let's see, Gaming Guma, I've also got a glass mug in the freezer for emergency root beer purposes. You can never be too sure when a root beer emergency is going to strike. That's just smart business, Gaming Guma. I respect that. She's selling wildflowers. All right, so there's a wildflower seller over here as well. Hi. I'll take a bunch of flowers. God bless you, miss. Now I've got a flower for you. Ready? Ooh, ain't that lovely? Beautiful. Thank you, miss. Don't stay out here too long, will you? You'll catch a cold. Oh, God bless you. All right, and apparently she's feeling generous with her money. So we have a bunch of flowers now. I have just the place for these. Oh, we're going to put those in the basement for the good doctor, since he had that dead rose down there. I like that idea. Alright, let's uh, pop over and do that right now, actually. Go ahead and take care of business. May as well, while we're in the neighborhood. And we're always... It really is a beautiful house. And we're always in the neighborhood, it turns out. Let's see, that's a smart way to do it. Emergency root beer is a life-saving thing. It is. This it is. All right, let's get down to the doctor's lab. I just remembered if I double click, it uh, sort of teleports where I need to go. I have just. The All right, so let's go ahead and load those and pop those into the vase over there. There. Huh, that does look nice, actually. The flowers are silly, I guess. But it makes me feel better. Fair enough. Bobby, try to carry a fork with you for emergency cheesecake? See, it sounds silly, but if you were caught out in a, with someone offering you cheesecake and you didn't have a fork, you'd feel crippled. You'd feel absolutely broken inside that you didn't have a fork available. Because there's cheesecake and you can't have any. And what could be worse than that? It's a dessert disaster, I tell you. Resuscitate him with the root beer? There you go. There you go. All right, so I think we're good here for right now. So where are we headed to next? Um. Oh, we need to go talk to Mephistopheles. Let him know that we've completed the first puzzle and see if maybe he has anything for us to do next. We can also possibly buy some items at the shop too. Now that we've got a little bit of cash on us. That might be a nice thing to do so we don't have to come back later. The word angel comes from the Greek angelos, meaning messenger or messenger of God. Interesting. Let's see. Well, there's always the tools we're born with, but it would be messy. It's true. It's true. And uh, not considered polite in I certain circles. Please. Miss Everett, how kind of you to visit. You gotta watch out for that, too. All right, let's go ahead and load the coin and see if we can talk to him now. What can I do for you today, Miss Everett? Mind if I ask a few questions? 
the asker always reveals more than the one who answers. Ask away. I finished the betrayer's price. Did you? Congratulations are in order. You might want to check the box again. One never knows. I'll do that. Ooh, possibly another puzzle. Are you a member of the Daedalus Club? If I were a member, I'd be sworn by oath not to reveal the name of any member, and that would include myself. Do you know what the penalty is for breaking an oath? No. What? Having your eye plucked out. I hope that's not the kind of trick you pull for the Taurus. It's pretty convincing with a bit of stage blood. Is it true that every member of the Daedalus Club once pulled off a grand game? Oh, yes. It doesn't matter who you know or how successful you might be. Even CIA codebreakers have to create a game. There are CIA codebreakers in the Daedalus Club? Certainly. It's about the game in all its forms. Though magic and illusion play a large role, naturally. Naturally. So... Can you tell me more about what a grand game is, exactly? I suppose I might tell you about some of the famous games of the past. Those that became so well-known, they can't really be considered secret anymore. All right. You have my attention. Tell me about some of the famous grand games. Let's see. There was the successful TV illusionist. He was famous for making large things disappear. David you Copperfield? Mean... Ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. no names, please. As it happens, one of his most legendary stunts was to make the Statue of Liberty disappear from the New York Harbor for 30 minutes. I remember seeing I remember that on TV. That. It wasn't just for the TV cameras. That feat was a bid for entry to the Daedalus Club. No way! Did he get in? Remember the eye, my dear. Remember the eye. All right, so is that. Tell me about another grand game. And this one caused quite a scandal. Uh, Tiffany's in London had a window display of a ring called the Crensfield Star. The pink diamond in this ring was worth millions. Yeah? One day, the Tiffany's manager noticed that the ring was gone. The security guards remembered a well-dressed, frail old lady who had stopped to ask questions. Within hours, the theft was all over the news and the police were searching the city. They kept getting strange tips about this little old lady and were led on a merry chase. It was on the news all day, getting more and more bizarre. But... What is it? Did they really steal the ring? My dear, do you think the Daedalus Club would accept a thief? Let me finish the story. No, in the end, the ring was found the next morning in Scotland Yard in the cup of coffee of the chief detective on the case. Oh, that is awesome. With my luck, though, I'd end up in jail. There's always risk in a great game. Managing it is the sign of a master. But it's not a stunt I would recommend to you, no. All right, that was, that was pretty badass, I'll admit. Any more grand games you can tell me about? Just one more, I think. This was a game a potential member designed for his wife. She was a twin and had been separated from her sister when they were small. The man found the twin and plotted a way for the two women to meet. One of the sisters was an antique collector and the other worked for Sotheby's. He designed a beautiful game that had them both tracking down pieces of an ancient chess set until the quest brought them together. <laughs> a lovely piece of work and touching very delicately done. Hmm, I see what you mean. There are all kinds of games. Perhaps someday you will invent yet another kind, Miss Everett. I look forward to it. Do you think it's possible that someone could be running a grand game in Oxford? Right now? Is it possible? Well, not me. Not me. All right, so she's thinking maybe that whoever is, uh, she's thinking it's possible that whatever is happening at the track might be part of a grand game. I see what she's going with right there. That was some cool stories there. I do enjoy cool storytelling in a video game, even if it is just literally someone telling a story.
All right, let's see if we can buy anything now or if we have to wait until we have a need for it. Yeah, oh, no, we can buy some stuff here now. All right, let's see if we can buy some stage blood. I was going to buy a few things today for my nephew. He's just starting out. Your nephew has good taste. I still find those items useful myself. Take what you need and pay me on the way out. Thanks. All right, so we'll grab the stage blood there. Uh, what else are we going to need? I don't think there's anything else in this cabinet. Oh, the disappearing ink apparently we can't get yet. All right, we might not need any of that yet. And then we go over to the other cabinet. And out of here, we need to get the fake thumb and the spirit gum, I believe. We have fake gum, uh, fake thumb, and spirit gum, and the shredded paper noisemaker. We'll grab that as well, just to make sure we have that. And I don't think there's any. Oh, a magnet! Yeah, we'll grab that too. I do remember that was one of our uh, one of our tricks, so we'll take that now. And I think that's everything we need out of here for right now. Let's go ahead and pay for the items as we leave. I picked up a few things. I need to pay you before I go. I know what you took. Twelve pounds, please. Neat trick, that one. Merely a shopkeeper's necessity, Miss Everett. Enjoy your day. Thanks, I will. All right, we need to check the box again. Right, right. We need to see if we've got another riddle to do. Thank you for reminding me, Bob. I almost forget. All right. We'll pop back in there and check the box and see if we've got a clue to what we're doing next in order to find the Daedalus Club. Hi, Mephistopheles. Miss Everett, how kind of you to visit. All right, so... We can't check the box. Maybe we have to check the box later? I guess we have to check the box later because we can't actually interact with it right now. I'll assume we have to check the box later then. Alright. So perhaps we'll come back at another time and then the box will uh, have something to do. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, for right now... I think that's about all we have to do. Yep, we are done in Oxford Town Center for right now, so let's pop over to St. Edmund Hall and see what the uh, freshmen are doing after that weird experiment, see if everyone's doing okay. Hey, it's the head lab rat. Don't call us that. Where have you been, Sam? We've been trying to find you for an hour. I checked in the lobby, and your name wasn't in the register. Oh, damn. It's the Sam thing. They always have me listed as a boy. Good cover. I thought of that. There are no Everett's at St. Edmund Hall, and I thought you said... After the divorce, I went to my mother's name. Then I changed my mind again. Why don't I just give you my cell phone number? Cool. I'll take it. That will give me a grand total of three on my contact list. Uh. 555 five, five. 7866 Got that. Got that one. Got it. Did you get mine? 555-2234. I don't... I don't have one. I don't get a lot of calls. Yes, well, how can you, darling? Well, you don't have a phone. Can we get back to the point? Did you read Ox Stew today? About what happened at the track? Maybe Styles has some kind of secret power generator hooked up to our brains. <laughs> I mean, did you get a look at him? He's like a refugee from a Dark Shadows convention. He is not. He is not. You have to admit it's bizarre. And my legs are actually sore today. As if I really did run last night. Mm. Now that you mention it. Yeah, mine too. Really? Let me see. <laughs> the truth is, we don't know what Styles is doing. He could be capable of anything. Unless you know Sam. You do know him well, right? Yes. You got us all into this. You wouldn't have recruited us unless you trusted the man. Hmm? Of course. I've known Dr. Styles for... Sheesh. A while now. I'm sure this whole thing is just a coincidence. 
But if it'll make you feel better, I'll do some checking around before we go back tonight. Well, as long as you're volunteering. A try the library. I hear they have books there and stuff. Shall we meet back here? What time? Noon? I'll let you know what I find out. Don't let us down, Samantha. Bye, Sam. Bye, Charles. Alright, so that's spooky. So everyone feels like their legs are tired, like they actually were running, even though they only imagined running. That's weird. Master V, thank you so much for the bits. I appreciate that. Great gaming tonight, Biz Support. I appreciate that. I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. Alright, so... Are we all done here? We are all done at uh, Edmund Hall. So let's head over to the uh, Bodleian Library. I think that was what someone mentioned before. I think someone mentioned that one by name. Let's pop over to the library, see what we can see over there. Damn. You need a student ID to use the library. Whatever happened to freedom of information? Damn it! Alright, so I don't think we're getting in here, unfortunately. I'm not getting into the library without a student ID. Guess it's time to scare one up. <sighs> Alright, so we need to probably steal a student ID. It's a paper shredder. Also, there's a paper shredder over here, and we do have a paper shredder noisemaker, so we might have to run a con with that. Potentially. Borrow! Sorry, my bad. Helena! Helena! Oh, hey, Helena's in here. What are you doing? Why don't you come inside? I didn't expect to find you in the library. How hard can art history be? Hard enough. But if you want to know why I'm here, Charles Ettington. Well, good luck with the stalking. <laughs> She's definitely got a type. I left my ID in my room. Can I swipe yours? No, you'll get me expelled, goth girl. Besides, walking is good exercise. <sighs> Come on, just one swipe. I'll do it so no one can see. No. I had to go twice to get a decent picture on my ID. I'm not going to risk getting it confiscated. You can do that? Get your ID redone? I told them I lost it. What can they say? I had no choice. The picture was hideous. That bad, huh? Hard to believe. Do you still have the old ID? Let me see. It's awful. Let me see. The second one is much better. Don't you agree? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, one of those is a mistake. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm like, oh, she's just exaggerating. I'm sure it's... Oh, God. Yeah, the, the one on the left looks very nice. And the one on the right... Oh, oh jeez. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. Wait, what did Emperor do? What did I miss? Did I miss something here? I see I see people saying Emperor did something. I hope I didn't miss something. Sounds a little bit like Cruella de Vil. I can kind of see that, most definitely. They did the adventure game synchronized walk off. Oh my god. Oh, I said the name of the library. Alright, that was the Emperor that, uh, that mentioned it before. I thought it might have been him. Drav, your timing is flawless. <laughs> Perfect timing. Drav, how are you doing today? Hope you were having a good weekend. I mean, she's got the black and white outfit and tons and tons of eyeshadow. So she's, and she mentioned she's a former goth as well. So she's got a little bit of goth going on. Quite, quite. She does look kind of like she has black eyes there too. That is, that is not great. Most definitely. Ah, thank you. Thank you for uh, pointing out or reminding me. I appreciate that. All right, so, let's see. Select three comments for the card? Oh no. Wow. Uh, what are we, oh no. I think we're trying to convince her to destroy it. 
Because we do have the paper shredder trick to do. So I think that's what we gotta select three comments to convince her to destroy it. Uh, so let's see, you should charge that photographer with libel. Um... Uh, sure. You look like you're on drugs. I was thinking the nose one, I'm thinking maybe the nose one. <laughs> I'm tempted. Lost, nice all in win right there. God, I didn't think it was that hideous. I'll burn it when I get back to my room. No, no, don't, don't burn it. Don't burn it. So I have three comments for the new ID card. Let's see, that's a good picture. Let's see, you look like a top model. Uh, you're right, that's much better. Well, I think the new one is much better. Oh wait, am I trying to convince her that the old one is better? I could use that paper shredder in tricking Helena, but I need to put the right prop in it. Alright, let's start getting things set up then. So, let's go find our shredded paper noisemaker. Go ahead and load that up, and we'll use the shredded paper noisemaker on the paper shredder. There. Alright, we've got our prep work set up, and let's check out the trick real quick and see if there's any other prep work that needs to be done for this one. I don't think there is, but let's make sure before we try and do this again. Uh, let's see. The shredded and restored newspaper. Or no, not the newspaper one. Um, we need... Oh, was it that one? Oh, no, it must have been that one. Let's go check that one again. Yeah, I suppose if the last copy is manipulate, that's probably where we do the, uh... I don't know, but we've got an actual newspaper, though. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Uh, let's see. Dr. Belvin, welcome in. How are you doing today, Dr. Belvin? Hope you are having a good weekend so far. Good to see you. And uh, Sludgefest, nice win as well. Congratulations. Peggy, it's 29C right now. Yeah, you ain't going outside. Probably for the best. Hopefully you've got a nice, cool house to chill out in, at least. All right. Let's talk to Helena again. And Oh, we have to choose the trick now. So let's go ahead and choose the shredded and restored newspaper. Huh, I like that one. But it doesn't really make sense in this case. All right, so that's not what we're doing. So I assume that... It oh, no, what we're doing is uh, the destroyed and restored ring. There you go. Because that uses a garbage disposal, and we're just swapping it out for the actual paper shredder. Gotcha, gotcha. That's so we're, we're doing a different trick, basically. Let's see. Did you know gaming? Welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you're having a good weekend. Hope you're staying cool as well. It is good to see you, as always. Let's see. Peggy, not really, but I got a fan that can move a large amount of air. That'll work. Fans aren't perfect, but they're, they're something, definitely. Alright, so let's do this trick. The destroyed and restored ring trick. How are we going to do this? Well, let's see. Palm the noisemaker in the left hand. Well, let's do that. Alright, cool. Let's see. Take the ring, in this case the ID card, take that into your right hand. Cool. Uh, manipulate the ID card. There we go. Then misdirect. Gotcha. 
Um, then manipulate the remote control. And finally, vanish the card. There we go. I think we've got the trick put together. I think we are set. Oh, jeez, Dr. Belvin, I'm so sorry. Is now as upset there's no water to drink from. Unfortunately, puppies are not very good on the whole actions and consequences thing, unfortunately. I don't know if there's any way to train them on that. Let's see. Did you know gaming? Doing well. Hope you're doing the same. Had a bit of a bastard with her latest video to be demonetized. Oh, I'm so sorry. That is a hell of a frustrating thing, especially if you put a lot of work into editing it. Uh, so I'm very sorry. Is there any way to fix it, or is it just uh, going to be a, a write-off? Either way, I'm really sorry to hear that. It's it's always just a nightmare. All right, let's go ahead and try running the trick. Hopefully we got everything right. Helena! Helena! Yelling hey. in a library. That's so rude. What? I actually like the first photo better. It's the way you were sitting. You're hallucinating. Show me. No, it was a trick at the light. The first one really is awful. God. Ugh. You're right. You should burn it. In fact... Why did you do that? <laughs> you said you were going to burn it. I'm sorry. Did you want it? So kind of you to spare me all that tedious labor. God, you're a freak. And I thought I was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, she definitely doesn't think very good of us right now, but we did get the ID. So we're good now. Her hideous old ID, too. That's classy. That will have to do for now. Luckily, the library card reader doesn't care what the photo looks like. We're set! Excellent. Uh, let's see. This game is really intriguing. You quickly failed, but welcome in. I hope you're doing well. This is a really interesting game. That whole magic system. I'm assuming you saw that. The magic system is really cool. Really, really cool way of solving puzzles. Very unique. So I like that a lot. Uh, let's see. Dr. Belvin, I just realized I need to hope that adult teeth come in sooner than later. Oh, jeez. Yeah, hopefully that'll happen. Hopefully she'll chill out and uh, stop chewing through things as well. It's very much a puppy thing and not so much an adult uh, dog thing. Let's see. Manual review for gore and concentrated violence on a game that doesn't even have blood. Oh, that's frustrating. Just taking the lost three weeks of work for $60 split between the three of us. Ah, oh, shoot. That is really frustrating. I am sorry to hear that. Hopefully the manual review will come out well. At least I know that doesn't exactly make up for it because of uh, timing for video releases. But uh, ah, either way, that is really frustrating. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, hopefully uh, hopefully aside from that, your weekend is going to be good. With any luck, that's the worst thing that will happen to you all weekend. You can at least relax a little bit, have some fun times, play some other video games. I, it's not much, but I'll, I'll keep my fingers crossed that's something for you. you drive the style of this kind of reminds you of Broken Sword. I can see that. I can see that. I know I saw Retrograde Tom play the Broken Sword remake. I think I saw it was him playing it. And the style did look kind of similar. This one kind of has a bit more of a gothic aesthetic to it, which I kind of dig. Uh, but either way, yeah, I can see that. All right, so let's load the ID and we should be able to get through the turnstile now. There we go. And we have gained entrance to the library. Excellent. So what are we going to do in here? Um, let's see. Stack papers right here. Can we grab some papers? Stacks of blank paper. I don't need any right now. But it's nice to know Oxford is generous with office supplies. That is always nice. If you did gothic aesthetic Bloodborne when, I do think I have a copy of Bloodborne somewhere, but... I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's talk to the reference librarian. See if she's got anything she can give us right here. Hi. How may I be of service? Where can I find information about the professors here at Oxford? Ah, oh, that depends. To whom do you refer? Dr. David Stiles, Neurobiology. Hmm. Start with the library catalog. You can access it on the computers over there. 
All right, so we're investigating the good doctor because he is very spooky. Well, let's see if we can find anything about him on the computer terminal. Bloodborne is great to stop thinking of death as a fail state. I think that's probably the best way to go about it. All right. Well, let's see what we've got in here. Uh, November 1996. Remember, this game takes place in 2003. Uh, London Times, November 14th, 1996. The royalty and other distinguished gentlemen, royalty and other distinguished gentlemen, the big event of this past weekend was the Egerton Soiree, an annual event not to be missed by the rich and fabulous. Excuse me. The star of the evening was to be Prince Charles, who arrived at the party solo. He seems to be quite enjoying his newly divorced status. But in truth, all of the single dames were not lining up to meet the Prince of Wales, but the Prince of Oxford, Dr. David Stiles. As if being devastatingly handsome and the scion of a wealthy family wasn't enough, he's a shooting star at university. He's become a well-known figure thanks to his popular articles and TV appearances, doing for neurobiology what Stephen Hawking did for physics. This reporter can't help but wonder how he'll find time to fit in his lectures with all the party invitations he's been receiving. That definitely doesn't sound like our David Styles, but the timing lines up in neurobiology. It's got to be the same guy, so clearly something has happened along the line. Hey, Sir Avium, welcome in. Thank you so much for all that. I hope you are doing well this weekend. I hope things are treating you well. Also, I saw you were playing The Calling recently. Uh, I've heard of that one, but uh, I haven't actually ever gotten to play a chance to play it yet. It looked neat. It had that sort of jank I would expect from a Wii horror game, but thank you so much for playing it. You know how much it means to me to see folks playing those obscure games, so thank you for that. And I hope you enjoyed it as, as much as you could enjoy a game that janky anyway. Oxford, Mississippi Sludge Fest. I've never heard of that. That's interesting. Phantom of the Campus? That actually sounds like a really low-rent, uh, like a college, uh, like, parody play. I can see that being a thing. Actually, not bad. A few weird parts. Oh my god, you got a copy of... I didn't know there was a Jew on for Wii. I knew there was a Jew on for... Dreamcast, I think? I know there was a... I know there was a Ring game. I think I'm thinking of the Ring game. Because there was a ring game for Dreamcast, I believe. Juan, that is fantastic, too. And I, I once again, thank you for uh, digging deep into the retro weird there. That's very cool. I don't know if Juan's going to be any good, but I hope it's interesting, at least. I will keep my fingers crossed for that. All right, let's check out the next article in here. May 1997. Extraordinary Powers of Ordinary Vines is not available. Please see the reference librarian for access to the periodical ar archives. All right, so we'll have to look for that book with the reference librarian, see what we can get out of that. That's interesting. I hear it's complete trash. I mean, that would explain why it hasn't been uh, heard of widely. Let's see. Game Gumbo, you saw it be played. It was awful. I've heard nothing good about the ring game. I've heard it's amazingly bad. Sir A.V. we're excited anyway. There is always something exciting about playing a game that's so little known like that, right? And they're even more exciting to present it, I think. Show it to other people. I do enjoy that very much, though. All right, what do we got next? 5 May 1997, same month. Uh, London Times, spring is for lovers. Romance is a hot topic in the spring. All creatures, great and small, get that loving look in their eyes and pair off to do what comes naturally. Hmm... Frederica Fred Friedmont and Jeremy Stanton were seen canoodling over drinks at a posh London nightclub. Canoodling? My God, the scandal. Actress Maria Laurel and businessman Dominic Durst were outed when they were caught red-handed in Hyde Park, but the biggest it couple this spring has to be Dr. David Stiles, the Oxford neurobiologist who has been considered the bachelor of the season, and his new fr flame Laura Edmondthorpe. The pair has been inseparable since meeting in a New Year's Eve celebration, and they don't seem to care who knows it. Ah, young love. All right, so that's David Stiles, and that Laura could possibly be the woman we saw in the paintings. We did see a D plus L in one of those paintings as well, so that seems like it would line up right there. Uh, Sir Avim watched Ekdesis play uh, The Ring. It's such a bad game, but he makes it seem fun and entertaining. 
Oh, you never need to apologize for lurking, Saravium. You know that. I appreciate having you here however you choose to watch, lurking or not. Uh, but yeah, this is a really interesting game. I've played it before. It's got kind of like a gothic, a vaguely gothic horror vibe to it. Um, it's about a aspiring magician trying to join a secret society of magicians. And in order to basically get funds at a home base to do it, she takes a job as a research assistant for a spooky professor who's doing some mysterious experiments. And now she's a little suspicious of what's going on, so she's doing a little bit of research into the professor to see what his deal is. Let's see, Alley Lords would welcome in. This sounds a bit brain intensive for a Friday afternoon. Don't worry, Alley Lords would. I will take care of the braining so you don't have to. No worries. But welcome in. How are you doing today? Uh, let's see, what's the next? Uh, May 18th, 1997. Uh, Styles Hopkins top in student poll. This year's Oxstu Students poll, uh, Students' Choice Poll ranked Christchurch and Queens as the favorite colleges among Oxford students. Favorite local restaurant went to Stew Pot on St. Giles. Fitzgerald's won for Best Oxford Pub, smoking the nearest competitor by 10 to 1. Among professors, Felix Hopkins, who teaches medieval history at Queens, and David Stiles of the Radcliffe Neuro Neurobiology Department, drew this year's top honors. A favorite part of Hopkins' Crusades lectures is a battle reenactment in Christchurch Meadows, which has become a great hurrah for participants and spectators alike. I'd watch that. That sounds cool as hell. Styles is a fave thanks to his fresh and exciting approach to the study of the mind and human potential. Human potential sounds interesting. We haven't heard anything about that angle. All right, so now we jump forward a little over a year to August 1998. Fairy tale weddings. August weddings were bigger and bolder than ever this year. The Marquis de Chin Charlefort and her American husband, Frank Lovitz, overflowed Winchester Cathedral with white roses and created quite a spectacle for the 300-plus guests. Garish? It's all a matter of taste, darling, and money. When it comes to understated elegance, nothing topped the union of Laura Edmondthorpe and Dr. David Stiles in Westminster Abbey. The bride was a radiant blonde beauty in a plain, plain white satin sheath. Excuse me. All the better to create nail-biting envy over her long and lean figure. David Stiles created quite a contrast with his striking dark looks and black tux. Two white horses pulled their carriage off into the sunset, and no doubt, into a perfect future. Come on, how can you have a more ominous line than that? You're basically saying in that last uh, sentence, I'm sure nothing will go wrong. Come on! How, how do you do this? You're killing me here. All right, now we skip forward a good four years to October 23rd, 2002. Uh, less than a year before the game takes place, I believe. Car accident claims the life of a prominent socialite. That looks pretty grisly. Dr. David Stiles and his wife, Laura Edmondthorpe Stiles, left a fundraising dinner in Oxford last evening and were driving home when when their car was hit broadside. According to eyewitnesses, the second vehicle was hurtling down a crossroad at a tremendous speed. It ran a give way sign and plunged into... Laura Stiles was pronounced dead on the scene and David Stiles was rushed. Samantha, please. They're not coming home. Come on, kid, time to go. Come on, kid, time to go. If you stay, if you smart, refuse to share, you said when you in that day. It did mention in her, uh, in her, there was in her uh, suitcase, there was a, uh, a letter from a foster home and a picture of her parents. So I guess she's got some tragedy in her past as well that was kind of brought up there. I'm confused that we're reading movie synopsis, old newspaper articles, actually, it looks like. And then no tragedy happened at all. Oh, man. What a plot twist. What a plot twist. 
All right, so nothing else to see there. So we do want to look into that book, Extraordinary Powers of Ordinary Minds, but I think we've seen about everything else we need to see here. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, angle right there, Peggy. They seem so different at the, the start, but there might be more to it. So let's talk to the reference librarian and see if we can get an angle on that book. Hi. How may I be of service? There's an article I need from a magazine. The computer said to ask you. Name a publication and the date, please. Scientific American, May 1997. I apologize. We had two copies of that issue, but both are listed as missing. Missing? How does that happen? They might have been misfiled. They might have been stolen. In any case, I can't help you. You might try the Central Library in London. How convenient. Dang it. All right, so mysteriously, the exact article we want to read has gone missing. And the next place we might look for it is London, and we're not going all the way to London, unfortunately. Is there no backup anywhere, unfortunately? Whoa! 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 Whoa, Sir Avium! Thank you for the fourth! thousand bits holy shit that is a lot of bits Whew. 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 That's, a <laughs> that's a lot Sarah Sarah thank you for the generosity that is super kind of you I appreciate the support thank you so much for that and for showering emotes all over chat. I'm sure people are going to appreciate those. Thank you so much for that. That is really, really kind of you. The support helps a lot. And as you probably guessed, I'm going to spend it on weird old games. <laughs> so that's only making the stream better. Only making me more powerful. <laughs> so thank you for that. I really appreciate that. I hope you know that. Um, and Peggy, you were asking, is there no backup anywhere? Unfortunately, um digitizing of books and magazine articles is a huge problem for the library system. It seems like, like everyone agrees it would be a good thing, but it is a momentous undertaking and usually takes some equipment to do it automatically that a lot of libraries simply don't do. So while there are a lot of people out there like archive.org that are making a good effort to scan old stuff like that, a lot of it is just not available in electronic form. And especially this is in 2003. At that point, basically nobody started doing electronic scanning at that point. So, uh, you know, we've got pretty much no hope of finding a sort of backup like that. Like she said, we might be able to go to the London library, but we're not prepared to go all the way out to London. We don't have the time or the money for that. Oh, uh, let's see. Sir Avium, I really appreciate that. It was really kind of you to stop by, hang out. It is always a joy hanging out in your channel as well. I hope you know that. Um, I haven't gotten to chat too much because I've been so busy. 2020, as I'm sure you know. But I've been lurking a bunch recently and it has been really nice. Uh, so I appreciate you doing that. And it's, it's just good seeing you in here. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right, so I don't think we have anything else to do in here. I'll take a quick look and see if there's anything else to see. Take a look at the books in general. If I had to search through all this, I'd never see daylight again. There must be a way to look up something specific. There is. The librarian and the computers, which we did. Luckily, all taken care of. Anything else to see in here? Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it. I think we're good. Yeah, 2020 has been, you know, ordeal. I think the word I'm looking for is ordeal. 2020 has been an ordeal. And is going to be an ordeal for a while longer, I suspect. But we've survived this long. As long as we're doing what we need to to stay safe, stay connected to each other, I think we're going to get through it. I think we will. I truly believe this. All right, let me go ahead and save because it feels like it's been a little while since we saved. We are at 79% complete with the chapter. We're making good progress here. We've been knocking out the puzzles this chapter. I'm very happy with that. 2020 is an eldritch being. What have we summoned? What have we unleashed? Are the stars right? I feel like they've got to be. All right, we can stop at the Radcliffe Infirmary, but I don't know why we need to stop up there. Oh, this is so cool. 
That is the coolest statue and I love it. She's both warm and disturbing. Like a crazy mother or something. The lighting here? This statue? I want to live here. I know this is an infirmary, but every infirmary I've been to has been like whites and neutral tones and this is some Tim Burton Batman shit going on here. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Can you tell? Was that obvious? Alright, let's look around and see what else there is to see in here. We got a fire extinguisher. I don't think so. Playing with fire security doesn't seem to be a good idea. Oh, so she'll, you know, borrow things from everybody across the England. But uh, messing with OSHA regulations, that's a no-no. Cthulhu loves you too. Thank you, my dark lord. I mean, what? What? What were we talking about? No, oh, Cthulhu bad. No, I wouldn't. I, I would never worship him. What? All right, let's continue. Let's keep playing. What do we got? We got the staff kitchen over here. Let's check out the map over here. See what they got going on. <laughs> on this floor are all the administration's offices, as well as the professors. Other floors are for classes mainly, so there's no need to go there. Ah, so it's a research hospital or like a teaching hospital. Gotcha. Health and safety will fuck your shit up. It's true. I tease, but I wouldn't actually want to mess with them because they would destroy me. I would not survive. <laughs> I may joke. We have some fun here. But yeah, the health and safety will annihilate me. All right, what else have we got over here? Link Weller's office. I don't know who that is. Susan's office. I'm not sure who she is. And the staff kitchen. Can we go in the staff kitchen? Is that a thing? It says employees only. We shouldn't be going in here. Apparently we can, though. All right. Let's borrow some stuff. Definitely not my style. I'll leave them hanging here. Although we might need to borrow them later. Quite possibly. Uh, what else we got in here? First aid kit? Looks like they're prepared for emergencies. Probably a good idea if Dr. Stiles is in this department. I like how she just completely did a 180 and just like buys into every rumor, even though she hasn't even heard most of them now. <laughs> I don't see the point in taking a peek into their fridge. Snacks! You're taking a peek into the fridge to see if they have any snacks. Because if there's an opportunity to get snacks, you should not pass it up. Like there's pizza right here. Ugh, no thanks gonna discriminate against pizza all pizza is beautiful Sam all pizza is beautiful just because it's been sitting there it, it's probably less than a day old that's fine it's a little cold but cold pizza has its charms I shouldn't have to explain this this is really just basic stuff Emperor thank you for a gift sub to Sir Avium right there that is very kind of you Emperor Gift sub number 463 in the channel. Emperor, thank you for that. I appreciate the support as always. And, uh, Seravium, enjoy my incredibly absurd emotes. I hope you have fun with those. From beneath the deepest lurks comes a bribe. <laughs> Emperor popping out a bribe just to be not only generous, but Lovecraftian. I appreciate that. Thank you, Emperor. Let's see, Game of Google, I for one wouldn't eat someone else's pizza. I don't see anybody else in here. Who else is in here? Is anybody open? Nobody? There's nobody in here. Whose pizza is this? This is nobody's pizza. This pizza belongs to no one. It's orphan pizza, and that's dibs for anybody. Them's the rules, man. I didn't write them. I just obey them. Fanatically. Pizza will never betray you. This is important. Pizza will never betray you. <laughs> All right, looks like there's nothing else to see in here. Well, I have to remember there's lab coats in there. We may need those later. Possibly. Uh, let's see what this office is over here. Linkweller? The nameplate on the door says Dr. Linkweller. All right, let's see what this other door is. See if we can talk to somebody in here. Are you saying pizza is Rick Astley? Can I help you? Hi, I'm Samantha Everett. 
I'm working with Dr. Stiles. Are you? You're not in the department. No, I'm studying English Lit. Well, that's Dr. Stiles' business. When you see him, remind him that I need that equipment receipt today. Oh, yeah, we need to deliver that equipment receipt to her. Right, right. I forgot about that. Let's see. Pizza is never going to give you up. Pizza is never going to let you down. Pizza is never going to turn around and desert you. Pizza is never going to make you cry. Pizza is never going to say goodbye. I should know the next line. I don't. So we're just going to end it right there. But I think I had a good run with that. <laughs> Gamagumo, I'm going to take off GDQ calls. All right, you enjoy that, Gamagumo. GDQ is always a special weekend. I hope there's some... Uh... <laughs> I hope there's some good runs going on, Gamma Gumo. You enjoy, and thanks for hanging out as long as you did. Never gonna run around or hurt you, damn it. I was thinking it was run around in something, but I couldn't remember. Thank you, Rin. I appreciate that. Oh, Bob says turn around. Ooh. Is it? Oh, we've got a dispute now. A Rick Astley dispute, the most essential of all disputes. Let's see, is there anything else to see in here? Let's take a look real quick. There's a copy machine. It's a copy machine. Ooh, I bet we're not going to be able to find the purchase order, and we're going to have to do some shenanigans here. I'm sensing some shenanigans. What about dessert pizza? Dessert pizza is not pizza. I've seen two types of dessert pizza. One of them is just a big old cookie and the other is just a big old dessert pie. They're not pizza. It's, it, it, it's just not how you make pizza. I mean, there's nothing wrong with either of those. I appreciate a really big cookie. I appreciate a gigantic ass pie. That's fine. But it's not really pizza. Not, not really pizza. Run around like cheat on. That would make sense in the context. I could see that. That filing cabinet is off limits with Susan in the room. Way off. All right, so we might need to see if we can distract Susan out of the room, possibly. Mr. Headley might be able to tell me about Dr. Stiles, but I have to get past his assistant first. All right, so we've got a couple things that we need to do in here. But we definitely need to get her out of the room first and foremost. Nancy has letter opener over here. Looks almost as sharp as a knife. All right, that leads back into the hall. Anything else we've missed in here? Nope. Is there anything else she has to say? Let's see. I've only started to work for Dr. Stiles. I was hoping to find out more about him. Well, it's not my place to talk about Dr. Stiles. I can tell you that Mr. Headley... He's the dean of the department. He was quite an admirer of Dr. Stiles. Naturally, we were all deeply saddened by what happened. Can I get in to see Mr. Headley? Absolutely not. He has a very tight schedule today. All right, she's going to be a problem, I can see. I forgot some way to get past her, and I have a feeling it has to do with getting that document we need. All right, I don't think there's anything else we can do in here for right now, though. Let's go ahead and take off. Not yet, Bob, not yet. I've still got some ideas. I'm still thinking some thoughts right here. Let's see, what have we got? So we've got the magnet to the bottomless cup trick. We do have the fake uh, thumb and blood to do that, although I don't see how that ha would help us here. Although there was the, the medical kit in the other room. I'll head back into the staff kitchen and see if we can do anything different in there now. Nope, nothing there. Let's see. The main plate on the... Let's see, the other thing I kind of want to do is I want to pop back over to 
the magic shop. Kind of curious if we can get the other noisemaker there. Although that almost seems too obvious. Yeah, it says the only places we have anything to do left today are the infirmary and Dreadhill House. So there might still be something to do at Dreadhill House. So as a matter of fact, if it's, since it's got a gold text, it means there is definitely something we still have to do at Dreadhill House. So let's pop back there real quick. Bob, you gotta go adult. All right, Bob, thanks for hanging around and thanks for chatting. I hope you had a wonderful time. Good luck with your adulting. Hope everything goes smoothly and quickly for you. And we will see you around. Oh, here we go. Dreadhill House, this is Sam speaking. Oh, um, no, that's okay. You don't need to send anyone else over. Dr. Stiles no longer needs an assistant. I mean, he's already hired someone else. No, not a student. Um, it turned out a family member was available. A niece. So you can just close out that request. Yes, I am sure. All right? Thank you. I am so going to get busted. Mrs. Dalton might have answered that. God, I really should fess up. I can't. They'd hit the eject button in 10 seconds flat. Better give it some more time and show what I can do. Yeah, this, uh, once again, her excuse to, for being here is just paper thin. And I'm, I'm really worried about it all falling apart at any moment. But for right now, we're continuing to skate by. So I guess let's just keep going while we can. All right, let's head into the parlor and see if we can maybe find that document we need on his desk. That might be a place to look. Um, I know there was some stuff on his desk, wasn't there? Maybe? No? No. Can we get into his office? It would probably be in his office. Or it could possibly be in there. If we could get in there. We cannot. It's locked. Shoot. All right. Uh, what else do we need to do here, then? I don't think we can do anything with his computer, but I suppose we can try. And we can poke our head back in the lab and see if we can spot it down there as well. That computer is ancient. It might as well be an abacus. All right. Nothing else to see in there. Quill shot! Oh, my God, Gloomhaven. I haven't gotten to play, play, play Gloomhaven in like four months, Quill Shot. I'm dying. I'm dying of withdrawal. It, it's terrible. It's horrible. But it is a wonderful, wonderful game there. Quill Shot, I do love it. <laughs> that is a hell of a way to slide into a stream. You're a corrector in. It's impressive. How are you doing today, Quill Shot? How is your weekend looking so far? Hope everything is going good for you. Glad to see you. Hope I'm not in trouble. No, you're good. You're good. Honestly, I just enjoy thinking about uh, thinking about uh, Gloomhaven. It makes me happy. I think that's Doctor Styles' room. It's a bit weird that our rooms are so close together. He can move. I'm not giving up my room. No way. A weird sentiment, but all right. Hey, our crew. Welcome in. How are you doing today? Hope you were having a good weekend as well. Good to see you. Let's head down to the basement again. It's got some sort of uh, interaction with the floor grate, but I can't imagine there's anything we need to do with it right now. Why do we still have flowers? Didn't we already place the flowers? Did we just have like a shitload of flowers, I guess? That's kind of weird. All right, is there anything else in here that we missed? There's a lot of stuff in here, but I don't think there's any documents that we missed. Pretty sure we saw everything. Take another look at the filing cabinet, make sure we're done there. Oh, can we actually look in the different files? Patient case files. No, oh, all right. So it highlights when we look over them. Nothing exciting in here. But I don't think there's anything to actually see. Patient case files. Scientific articles and stuff. Patient case. No, I don't nothing think there's anything to see. Scientific article. All right, nothing else to see here then. I think we're taking care of uh, 
Jane, an unrelated information you might be interested in. Gail Simone has received her order of six Lou Malnati's. Hell yeah. Gail Simone likes her some Lou's? Nice. She has good taste in pizza then. Respect. Lou Malnati's is good stuff. Oh no, Quillshot, that is definitely something to stress out about. I'm so sorry, Quillshot. Hopefully they're going to show up real soon. I am going to keep my fingers crossed for you. Chenenen, welcome in. How are you doing today, Chenenen? Hope all is going well with you. Good to see you. Alright, so yeah, I don't see anything else in here. I don't know what else we could be doing. I'll pop into the main lab real quick and I'll make sure I didn't miss anything in here. I better not touch Dr. Stiles. Still can't use his computer or anything. Alright, so maybe that phone call was all we need to do back here. That's possible as well. Let's see. I have played The Neverhood. I think it's really amazing. An absolutely unique and really creative game. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to stream it just because the guy that created it is kind of a piece of shit. And I don't really want to support him. But uh, it is a really cool game, Cool Sean. Absolutely. Just beautiful, beautiful uh, use of claymation used in a way I've never seen it used in a video game before or since. But I gotta respect that. I've never played Armor Krog, but I have played the sequel to Neverhood uh, on PlayStation 1, uh, which was called Skull Monkeys. And instead of being a point-and-click adventure game, it was more of a platformer, actually. Fairly challenging platformer, as a matter of fact. Um, but it has the same great music and the same great sense of humor, and once again is a claymation game as well, so it's very cool. Let's see, one week to Bill and Ted face the music? Is it still... It's coming out on streaming services, right? I think they decided to do that too, eventually. Let's see, Sludge Fest Claymation? Yes, like all of the animation in the game is done with clay models. Like they don't really do any CG or anything. Like every, every character, every background, every piece of the material is uh, made out of clay. And just like that they actually filmed and put film shots of it, it's beautiful. Look it up on YouTube if you can see some uh, shots of it. Let's see. Chenander, what have you missed? So we are playing uh, Sam Everett, an aspiring magician who is trying to get into a secretive society of magicians in England. Um, but along the way, she needs some money and a place to stay, so she pretended to be a research assistant to get a job here with this spooky professor, Dr. David Stiles, who's a neurobiologist doing mysterious experiments. So right now we're doing the dual task of trying to investigate the secret magic society, the Daedalus Club, while also attempting to figure out what the deal is with this strange doctor, and also just sort of doing our job as well. Lots of stuff going on. Oh god, the bonus room song, that's still my favorite. I remember that so clearly. Cool shot, I'm glad you know that one as well. Do you know Hylix? Yes, Sludgefest. Um, the door's locked. Uh, Jessica Fleur, who was just in here I think yesterday, uh, she actually introduced me to Hylix, and the the art in Hylix is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Um, I'd like to get copies of Hylix and Hylix 2, and if I do, I will probably be streaming them eventually, because how could I not? They're so beautiful. Um, I am a huge sucker for a unique art style in a game, and that is a very unique art style. Uh, let's see. Trying to get into the magic circle of being guinea pig, got it? You got it. You got it. All right, let's check the map, see what the map has to say. Map says there's still stuff we need to do at Dreadhill House. Um, I can't imagine what else we need to do here, but it did say in the tutorial that just because it says there's something we need to do here doesn't mean there's something we need to do here right now. So let's... Let's head back over to the infirmary, see if there's anything else we can do over here. Um, hmm. I think I sort of got stuck here the last time I played the game, too. I feel like I did. There's two things I want to check out, even though the game is telling me that I'm not supposed to. I'm going to be stubborn and check them out anyway. I want to poke my head in here and see if I can grab any free paper, which I cannot, it doesn't look like. Stack. Nope, I can't grab that. 
And also, I want to pop back to the magic shop and see if there's anything else we can buy in there. Because there was some other neat looking tools. Like uh, the other noisemaker. The other noisemaker seems like could be helpful in this situation. But again, it seems almost too obvious. So I can see why they might not let me do that. But I'm going to check that out. I am going to poke my head in there and see if there's anything else to do. And if there isn't anything else I can get at the magic shop, I think I will start accepting suggestions. If anyone has any to give. Because I think I am just about out of ideas for this portion. I think I'm almost there. I feel like I'm right on the verge of what I need to do, and there's not much left that I need to pull off. But I'm just, just like an inch away from what I need to do, at least. Let's see. Just got here, so I have no idea what's going on. No worries, cool shots. Just because I'm accepting suggestions doesn't mean anyone should feel obligated to give anything. If you don't got anything to give, just chill out and enjoy the show. No worries about that. I cannot get the other noisemaker right now, so I've got to assume I have all the tools I need. I can't imagine there's anything else that I missed anywhere. I feel like I've just seen everything. You know, you never know with an adventure game. There's always something you might have missed somewhere. Let's see. Use you, with you, on you. That's not appropriate for the stream. My goodness. Even suggesting that there could be children in here. I'm scandalized. <laughs> to buy a potion from Gandalf if he was around. That would be cool. Let me poke my head back in Susan's office and see if anything has changed. Because like I said, I feel like this is the moment for a trick. But it's not giving me the prompt to do it. Rin, if you wouldn't mind, I think I might actually need to do this. We've done almost everything in Chapter 2. Right now, I think I'm trying to deliver some sort of manifest or document to a woman named Susan. Yeah, this game loves its Dutch angles, but I do think it adds to the kind of like weird, unsettling, gothic mood. I think it fits. I think this is a good use of Dutch angles, anyway. I appreciate it, at least. So yeah, we're at Chapter 2 still. We're near the end of Chapter 2. We just need to find... Uh, we're at the infirmary. We need to do something at the infirmary, is what we need to do. The Radcliffe Infirmary Hall, I believe it says. Okay, what have we done with Susan? We talked to her, and she says we need a document. And I don't have the document. That's about it. All we've done is we chatted with her a couple times. Oh, Shadowgate would use use sword self. You just stab yourself and die. I remember that. I have done that trying to equip it. I don't have the things in order to do this. So in that case, I don't know where the things are I need to do this on. Can you give me a hint where I need to go to get the things? Because I feel like I've been just about everywhere. I guess the other, only other place to look would be a uh, Redcliffe House or the uh, Dread Hill House. Ah, there's something in the filing cabinet. Dang it! All right, I think I know where we have to go then. I know we were looking at the filing cabinet, and I thought it was odd that it was letting me interact with the filing cabinet, but I didn't push it far enough. So let's head back there and we'll poke around the filing cabinet. See what else there is to see. Did we check? Oh, scientific art patient no. case file. Patient, patient, scientific. Let's see, is there nothing something nothing here? Scientific. No. There we go. Uh, so not for nothing in anatomy of hearing. Nice brains. That's a hell of a tab right there. And neurobiology department staff list. This lists everyone in the department. All right. Well, there's David Stiles. Got his home number if we need it, and his office extension as well. We could use that, quite possibly. 
And there's Susan's name. Maybe that's where we were supposed to get her name originally. It's an old phone list of the staff in the neurobiology department. Ah, but we have Susan's phone number now. We could possibly pull a gimmick with that, too. That could be a thing. All right. Um, so we got that. That says nice brains, Quillshot, which is even stranger. Can we look at that, actually? Nothing exciting in here. I don't know. That seems pretty exciting. <laughs> that seems really interesting. Abby Normal Chinin, is that what you're thinking of? Emperor, welcome back. I'm glad to see you have survived your meeting in One Piece. Hope everything went well for you. Oh, the library was missing those uh, periodicals. I was looking under O for the title of the actual article, but they would be under S for Scientific American, wouldn't they? Nothing exciting in here. But they're not. Maybe they're misfiled. Patient K. Nothing. Keep looking around. Nothing exciting. Scientific. Here we go. Oh, gee, dang it, I was thinking O for Ordinary, but it was E for Extraordinary Powers of Ordinary Minds. I completely forgot what the title was. This should be enlightening. All right, cool. So we got the article here. <laughs> Extraordinary Powers of Ordinary Minds by David, Dr. David Stiles. We've all heard the news that we only use one-tenth the capacity of our brain, which is not true. Why is that the case, and what intriguing possibilities lay in those dormant sections of gray matter? There are billions of neural connections in the brain. When an infant is born, their neurons are still sending out test flares to other neurons and gauging their response. Our brains prune connections that aren't productive and strengthen connections that are. The early years in which we experience our world sets our neural wiring for life. There are entire networks of potential connections that are unused because in our infant life, we did not find a use for them. We find proof in a few extraordinary cases, such as the boy who was blind from birth and developed a bat-like ability to sense objects. He could ride his bicycle at terrific speeds, despite his lack of sight. And our species continues to evolve new mental capabilities. Scholars believe that the ancient Greeks did not see as many colors as we did today. I doubt that. An early Christian historian commented on how brilliant St. Augustine was because when he read to himself, you couldn't see his lips move. Interesting. Fields outside neurobiology give us clues to the potential of the brain. Physics has shown that our brain has a special relationship with the world of matter. When we are not perceiving a subatomic particle, it is a wave. But when the human brain turns its attention on it, the particle changes form, behaving like solid matter. In the areas of psi research, scientists have demonstrated that the brain is capable of abilities that have no explanation according to our currently understood picture of the brain, or even that of time and space. In the next 50 years, we will begin to discover just how extraordinary our minds may be, how deeply interconnected our brains are to physical reality, and vice versa, and how we can awaken new potential within the human mind. Alright, so he's working on some weird stuff here, most definitely. Most definitely. We did go to the library, Emperor. We ended up going there. <laughs> this is literally Rin's job. It's what she's here for. Somebody needs to yell at me to keep me on the straight and narrow. I would wander far afield and never be seen again otherwise. <laughs> Drunk on Shane's tears. There's so many. Oh my god. <laughs> Pneumatic tubes with vials full of delicious, delicious tears. It's a complicated, expensive system, but worth every penny, let me tell you. Alright, so we got both of those, so I think we're good in here now. There is this too. Oh, here, the delivery receipt. The neurobiology department is looking for a report on an fMRI donation. This must be it. All right, cool. We got the document we need. I should get this to Susan Whittier at the neurobiology department. All I right, sweet. We've got everything we need in here then. I'll just finish Patient clicking on things scientific. just in case. Patient. What is this? Linkweller's article? Something written by Dr. Abraham Linkweller. This might be interesting. This is interesting. It's from a... Uh, it's titled Skeptical Scientist. And the title is Ordinary Powers of Extraordinary Minds. That's the exact opposite of Dr. David Stiles' uh, article. 
Let's see, some of the misguided co some of my misguided colleagues have claimed that the human brain will develop quote extraordinary abilities, unquote, in the future, going as far as to insist it will happen in the next 20 years, 50 years. This is the worst kind of pseudoscience and magical thinking. The truth is, there is no evidence that our brains have undergone any serious evolution since we hunted with bow and arrow and uh, uh, and drug our kill back to the cave. The drive for shelter, food... Actually, can I zoom in? Oh, I can't zoom in on this. That'll make things much easier. Wow. Uh, the drive for shelter, food, sex, and security are as fundamental to our society as they ever were. And we solve problems in the same way, not by developing supernatural powers, but by good old-fashioned cognition. When our modern world made swift travel over long distances desirable, did we evolve the ability to fly? No! We use the same mental thought processes we invented the wheel to invent the airplane. The scientific reality is that the brain is well understood, didn't have any extraordinary powers, and doesn't need any. The ordinary brain is miraculous enough. That is a hell of a takedown. Those guys are probably not friends, I'm going to assume. Not copying, but uh, dissing. That was a diss. That was the, the, the scientific article equivalent of a diss track right there. <laughs> How is the beer, Rin? What kind do you have? Anyway, I'm curious. I don't think you mentioned. Someone's very mad right there, Peggy. Someone is very, very mad. <laughs> That's fair, Rin, but I hope it's good nonetheless. Oh my god, Shira. Didn't even make an overlay with normal text? Oh my god. <laughs> I plan to play that. I've got a copy of that and I want to try that out at some point. Is that game as bad as I've heard, Shira? I've heard not many good things about it. Drinking a Kolsch. Nice, nice. It is not you loved it. Ooh, excellent. That is exciting. I will hope to try it out as soon as I can. Alright, let's head back to the infirmary now. Finished early, I have heard it kind of finished suddenly and had it like a to be continued for a sequel. That is unfortunate. Alright, so let's pop into Susan's office here and give her the paper. Then see if maybe we can sweet talk our way back into that office. Alright, let's go ahead and grab that paper. Donation receipt, cool. It was like, oh, now it's starting to over hot like that. Reminds me of the uh, ending of Halo 2. I still remember being around when that happened. Oh, man, were people mad about that. I have something for you. Oh, my God. I gave up hope of ever laying eyes on this. The auditor's been hounding me for weeks. Thank you, Miss Everett. My pleasure. All right, so we got that, but we still want to get into that back office if we can. Are you sure I can't get five minutes with Mr. Headley? I really would like to talk to him about Dr. Stiles. All right, but only because you brought me that receipt. Thank God I can get the auditor off my back. Boom. Mr. Headley, I have a Miss Everett that would like a brief word. It's about David Stiles. To send her in. In you go. Excellent. Mission accomplished. Let's get in there and see what we can find out about the good doctor. Miss Everett, a pleasure to meet you. Won't you sit down? Thanks, and thanks for seeing me. I'm always happy to make time for David. I've heard from him too little of late. How is he? Um, fine. Very self-directed. Well, that's something. Are you a relative? Me? No, I'm his assistant. He just hired me. It did he? Interesting. Uh, how can I be of service, Miss Everett? Well, let's start some questions. See where we get here. All right. Um, let's go at uh, his background first. Could you give me some background on Dr. Stiles? I don't know much about him. David Stiles was one of the brightest lights at Oxford. A truly brilliant and original thinker. He was the sort of man it was easy to envy. 
wealth, a prestigious family name, good looks, a beautiful wife, effortless public success. Then there was the accident. A horrific, horrific thing. There's a poem by Robert Frost. Nature's first green is gold, her hardest hue to hold. Her early leaps a flower, but only so an hour. Then leaf subsides to leaf, so Eden sank to grief, so dawn goes down to day. Nothing gold can stay. That's beautiful. I wonder... Never mind. We must be honest with each other, you and I, for David's sake. What do you wonder? It's silly. I just wondered which is worse. To have been golden, to have had all that and lost it, or never to have had it at all? Uh, not at all. Perhaps David asks himself the same question. Tim can say whatever she wants about the sights. This background is beautiful. This is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And think about this too, Failed Knot. This is just a little scene where you needed to ask this guy a couple questions and then move on with your life. The fact that they decided, you know what? Let's make this scene gorgeous. That's cool. I respect that. Attention to detail at its very best right there. Are you aware that, that Dr. Stiles is conducting an experiment right now? Of course. He had to submit a plan to the university, standard procedure. And frankly, I was happy to see him working again. Oh, that reminds me. Dr. Stiles wanted me to pick up a copy of the experiment plan he submitted. He misplaced his copy. That's a lie. I think, young lady, that Dr. Stiles will have to call me and ask for that himself. I'll tell him. That was totally a lie, and he called her on it. Absolutely called her on it. Yeah, kudos to the artist in this game. This game is beautiful. I love the aesthetic in this game. Oh, it should end, and that's a good one. That is a good one. <laughs> That emote is the creepiest thing on all of Twitch right there. It is terrifying. I've heard rumors about Dr. Stiles. Students say people have disappeared during his experiments and... Stop. Don't repeat that nonsense in here, please. Sorry. No, it's only natural you would be concerned. He is your employer. There has been a lot of vicious gossip about David. But believe me, there's no truth in it. Then how did it get started? When someone is a little too successful, it inspires a lot of green-eyed spite. Should that paragon fall, let's just say there are certain people who love nothing more than to get out their knives and gather round the carcass. Of course, David hasn't helped himself any. If he insists on living like a hermit in that house, people are bound to believe the worst. That's true. Are you drinking yellow curry? No, I'm drinking water. I'm drinking water out of a yellow cup. <laughs> you mentioned that certain people were jealous of Dr. Stiles and might have spread the rumors. I don't suppose you'd tell me who. Running right. It might be good for me to know in case I run into them. Uh, no, I don't think we need to discuss that. Okay. Sludgefest, thank you so much for the 100 bits. I appreciate that, Sludgefest. Very kind of you, and the support means a lot, so thank you for that. Alright, so he's not going to tell me who Dr. Styles' enemies are, which... You know, I don't think we've run into any of them yet, although we know that Linkweller guy doesn't like him very much. So let's get to the, uh, the ultimate question here. So you're convinced that Dr. Styles poses no danger? No danger to, say, students who are participating in one of his experiments? Absolutely not. He may be on leave, but he's still a valued member of this department. I've reviewed his case personally. There's nothing physically wrong with David Stiles. It's been a pleasure, Miss Everett, but I really must get back to work. Thanks, Mr. Headley. You've been a big help. I only wish the best for David. I hope you'll treat him well and be a support. He allows so few people near him. I'll do my best. Goodbye. Bye. All right, well, that guy knows Dr. Everett a lot better than Sam does, and he trusts him, so... Feels like we got good reason to trust him, at least. Like, he was definitely leaving some I things out. I want to find out who David's enemies are inside the neurobiology department. I should snoop around in David's files. Except we already did that, so... We already know that Linkweller is one of them. Can I go break into Linkweller's office? Is that a thing we can do? That would be pretty cool. The 
nameplate on the door says Dr. Linkweller. Well, I mean, that's the guy from the article. Doesn't look like we can do anything with it, though. Um... Let's see, we've got the phone list, and we've got Dr. Uh, Linkweller's phone number. So what do we need to do next? Um, let's see if the secretary has anything else to say while we're in there. Make the statue with you for scientific purposes? Isn't it cool, Shira? Honestly, it kind of makes me think of like a Bloodborne type thing. I love the whole look of this place, honestly. It's so cool. I guess not everyone in the department is a fan of Dr. Stiles. At least, that's what Mr. Headley says. Hmm. Is there anyone in particular I should watch out for? Mr. Headley doesn't tolerate departmental gossip. And neither do I. Ah. Getting nowhere with that, unfortunately. Well, let's try some more lies. That always works out well. Dr. Stiles asked me to get a copy of his experiment plan. The one he filed with the department? He misplaced his copy. I'm afraid Dr. Stiles will have to come by himself for something like that. Or telephone. We don't give those kind of documents out to students. But... I'll tell him. Alright. Oh, um, Mr. Headley asked if you would bring him a cup of coffee. Did he? That's odd. Mr. Headley gets his own coffee. She bought it! Brilliant. Just uh, leave the office for a second. Don't mind me staying in here. Damn, she took the key. I need to find a way to snatch it somehow. All right, so she keeps the key in a cup on her desk, it sounds like. Gonna need to figure out some way to snatch it. All right. Do you think she has good IT security and locks her computer terminal? I mean, she takes the key to the cabinets with her, so she seems like she's very IT focused. I respect that. Although it's not at all helpful to me right now. Um, let's see. Is there anything new in here now? We can see the cup with the key there right now. Let me look at that. She keeps the key to the filing cabinet in that cup. I could try to take it with sleight of hand, but she's a real hawk. This will require something a little more devious. All right. What are we going to need to do here? I wonder. See, we can look she at her again, too. She keeps the key to the filing cabinet in that cup. This will require... All right, so it looks like we can run a trick on her. So what kind of trick do we have available that might work for this? Let's take a look. Flash paper, we don't have any, unfortunately, and we couldn't buy any today. Let's take a look at our tricks. Let's see what's available to us. Let's see, locked room mystery, we don't have a good noisemaker for it, so I don't think that's it. See, destroyed and restored ring trick. There's no paper shredder in here or anything else we could do, so I don't think that's going to work. Oh, let's see. Shredded and restored newspaper? We do have a newspaper. Maybe we could do something with that. We don't have a fake ring, though, is the problem. Or a fake... We don't have a fake key that we could use for this. Do we have that newspaper? Maybe we could do something with that. Oh, uh, what else have we got in here? Ominous mailbag? We already used that one. I don't think it would work. Telephone psychic? Maybe we could... No, I don't see what we do with that, unfortunately. The bottomless cup, maybe. We do have a magnet as well. Maybe we could do the bottomless cup. That could be a thing. Use the bottomless cup to vanish it? Let's try that. Let's see if we can do something with that. I like that idea. Alright, so we flip back to the bottomless cup. 
Because we do have a cup here, and we've got a magnet, so we're set up for it. All right. So it looks like that was the right one, so let's see what we're doing here. So palm the magnet in our right hand. Gotcha. Then take the cup in our left hand. Gotcha. Move the cup from your left to your right. Gotcha. Uh, manipulate the cup. There we go. Uh, then misdirect. Uh, then take the key into your left hand and then vanish it up the left sleeve. All right, that looks good. Let's go ahead and try it right here. Hey, that key is missing. What? Yeah, see? What on earth? You didn't take it, did you? Me? Why would I want it? You have a spare, I hope. At my flat. That sucks. It even blows. <laughs> this is game to play along. Alright, so we got the key. It's still got a trick icon for her. Probably because we still need to get her out of the office now, don't we? Maybe? Alright, yeah, I guess we need to get her out of the office now. What kind of trick would we do to get her out of the office is the question, though. Um, we do have everything we need for the super gross-out self-healing wound. Oh, and she's got the letter opener. We can pretend to have some sort of horrific accident with the letter opener, maybe. Ooh, that is interesting. All right, let's give that a try. Let's freak her the hell out. I can get Susan out of the room with this trick, but I'll need to get set up for it first. All right, we can do that. What do we need to set up for that trick? Let's double check what the prep work for that one is. And then we'll get rolling on that one. Uh, let's see. Before you approach your victim, you'll need to do some prep work. Put stage blood on the tip of the fake thumb. And then attach it to your right thumb with spirit gum. All right, cool. We can do that. We just got to combine some items in our inventory. Take the fake blood and use it with a fake thumb. Good. Now I just need something to hold it in place. And we've got that, so let's use the spirit gum with a fake thumb. Now it's ready to go. All right, let's run this trick. I'm all set for this trick, but one thing worries me. That Susan won't be gone long enough for me to do what I need to do. I don't want to get caught snooping around. That's fair. So I think we need to do one other thing beforehand, and I think I know exactly what she's thinking about right here. Because if we're in medical danger, she's probably going to run across the hall to the staff kitchen. And to this first aid kit right here, isn't she? Hmm. If she finds this, she might return to her office too soon. Hmm. I think this first aid kit needs to disappear. Abracadabra! Wouldn't it be nice? All right, we'll just hide it back there. Cool, cool. All right, so now when she goes to get us some uh, some bandages, she's going to run into the staff kitchen and not find any, and she's going to have to look somewhere else, and that should delay her hopefully long enough that we can go through her files and find the experiment plan to figure out what exactly Dr. Styles is doing in that lab of his. All right, everything is prepared. Let's do this, folks. I only need to set up the first part of the trick. All right, so let's do this. First part of the trick, take a sharp object with your left hand. All right, that'll be the letter opener. And then manipulate the object, playing with it idly. Then misdirect the victim. Cool. 
and then manipulate the tool to make a slight puncture in the tip of the fake thumb. All right, that should do it right there. Sure, I love the trick. It's so cool. It's like nothing I've ever seen in an adventure game before. I love that. I absolutely love that. It's a cool bit of puzzle solving right there, definitely. Not like they're in an infirmary. I mean, I'm sure she'll find some, but as long as she has to check a couple places before she finds it, that'll hopefully buy us enough time. Ouch! What happened? I cut myself. Ow! Do you have disinfectant or something? I'll get the first aid kit. She is so tired of our bullshit right now. <laughs> and yet, she got to do what she got to do. All right, let's get over to the filing cabinet. It is a cool mechanic. I love it. Abracastabra! Oh, god damn. All right, we need to use some sort of item on the cabinet. Um, oh, the key. The key. We need to use the key. Load the key. There we go. Found it. Nice. All right. If Susan finds this missing, she'll know I took it. I should fix that if I have time. We can fix that quite easily, I think. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab the experiment plan. We're going to use it on the copy machine. Ease peas. I apologize for the delay. You'd think grown students would be above silly pranks. You'd hope. Really? All right then. Let me see it. You mean touch it? Oh God, sorry. I'm such a baby about stuff like this. For heaven's sake, it has to be dealt with. I'll do it. It'll be better that way. Trust me. Is that a first aid kit? I'll take it to the bathroom and do it myself. Thank you so much. As you like. Just don't drip blood in the hall, please. Of course, that's a primary concern. Cutting edge jokes, hey, the sharpest of wits. Me. Hello, hi, you're Malik, right? You're in Dr. Styles' experiment. What do you want? What's the big secret? Nothing. I don't like everyone knowing my business. I just wanted to talk for a minute about Dr. Stiles. All right. But I have class in 10 minutes, so it will have to be fast. So this is the mysterious sixth participant in the group that we haven't really spoken with yet, so that's interesting. Bloody good trick. Oh, my God. What made you sign up for the experiment? What do you mean? I mean, like, what made you sign up for the experiment? It's not a crime. I could use the money. All right. He's a simple man. Since you're in the neurobiology department, you must have known Dr. Stiles before the experiment. Known of him, yes. You heard about him from people in the department? Do you have any idea who Stiles is? He is, or was one of the most famous neurobiologists in the history of the field. I studied him in high school. So yes, I guess I know something about him. Or at least I know the man he used to be when he was a part of this department. Dr. Stiles is still a part of the department, isn't he? He had to submit an experiment plan to Mr. Headley. Or maybe technically. But everyone knows he's suffered brain damage in the accident and is no longer competent. Believe me, he's in possession of all his wits. In fact, he has a few I'd like to extract myself. Then why has he stopped teaching? Why has he not published since the accident? Um, he lost his wife? So? A wife is a wife. Stop, please. Your compassion is making me all teary-eyed. Death is a part of life. Maybe he couldn't face everyone feeling sorry for him all the time and asking about the accident over and over, and then expecting him to have completely forgotten about it in three months and calling him crazy if he hasn't. Styles audit to, to the world, to his students, to continue his work. Says who? Think what you like. I don't think I like this guy. That's what I'm thinking right now. Seriously, jeez. What did you think of the experiment last night? Strange and surprising. Last night was strange, wasn't it? 
What's the point of imagining exercising? That wasn't strange. Research has shown that imagining exercising causes the brain to generate the same impulses to the muscles and the nervous system as actually exercising, providing almost the same health benefits. It's big news for healthcare, especially for disabled people. There are a lot of studies being done on the subject right now. Interesting. I don't think that's quite correct, though. Yeah, failed not. That is a bad first impression. That one's going to stick with me, I tell you that much at least. So, what was strange about the experiment? I need to get to class. Come on. You said strange. Why? Just to finally meet Dr. Stiles. And that mask. That basement. It is rather dramatic. But the strangest thing was that, um, despite all of that, I... I Never mind. Take a drink! He seemed... Oh, no, there we go. Norman. I was expecting... <laughs> I, I don't know what I was expecting. Yeah. Fair enough. Did you notice anything unusual about Styles' equipment? No. Nothing at all? It was a standard fMRI setup. A good one. It's unusual to have a system that expensive in a private home, but otherwise, it's non-invasive. Harmless, as he said. I'm late for class. I have to go. Hey, we're meeting at the St. Edmund Quad at noon. Stop by, or not. I'm guessing it's gonna be or not. He doesn't seem like a very friendly dude right there. Alright, let's take a look at that paper that we grabbed then. Or do we still have to grab it off of the uh, printer? Did we not actually grab it? Or no, we've got it in our hand. Cool. Let's take a look at this there. Experiment plan submitted by Dr. David Stiles, September 2005. Oh, I thought this was 2003. It's 2005, apparently. Purpose of the experiment to test the effects of visualizing different types of exercise on the heart rate, blood pressure, brain activity, and electrical impulses sent to muscle tissue. Time frame, eight sessions running in October 2005. Subjects, six students aged 18 to 24. Location, Dreadhill House Laboratory. Staff, Dr. David Stiles. Equipment, MRI equipment already installed in the Dreadhill House Laboratory. Six beds already in situ. Procedure, the subjects will be led through a mental visualization process for each proposed exercise. The physical activity will be imagined in detail and in real time. FMRI and heart rate monitors will be used to record each subject's heart rate, blood pressure, and brain activity. The data will later be compared to that of subjects of the same age range who participated in actual sporting activities. See Lauren and Weller, The Effects of the Brain on Track and Field Athletics, 2002, to determine what ways and how closely the brain and body are capable of mimicking actual activity using visualization technique. Session 1, Jogging at Horsemouth Track. Session 2, Swimming at St. Edmund Hall Pool. Session 3, Weights at St. Edmund Hall Gymnasium. Session 4, Race Walking at Timmins Lake Park. Session 4, Hurdles at Horsemith Track. Session 6, Jump Rope at St. Edmunds Hall Gymnasium. Session 7, Calisthenics at Horsemith Track. And finally, Session 8, Yoga at Timmins Lake Park. This looks pretty legit, actually. Who knew you could get most of the benefits of exercising just from imagining it? So nothing really weird or spooky there. Certainly nothing that would explain the weird stuff that happened at the track. Good we got to peek, at least, I suppose. Got a good grab on your lightning? Oh my goodness. Lost, unfortunately, sleep is a part of life, but I must have to bed. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for stopping by, Lost. Always a pleasure to have you with us. I hope you have a good rest and we will see you around. Alright, let's go ahead and save here. See where we're at. 98% complete for the chapter. So I don't think we have much to do in this chapter. So let's see what else we gotta do. We just gotta head back to Dread Hill House, it looks like. Well, let's do that. The percent is the statue. I want that statue. Desperately want that statue. Alright, let's see if we can go talk to Dr. Styles. Let him know all the badass stuff we've been doing today, except for the stuff that involves petty larceny. We're gonna leave all of that out. But all the cool stuff we did. We can tell him all the cool stuff. And then he's gonna be like, wow, that's so cool. 
and we're going to be like, shit yeah, man. Hell yeah. And that's exactly how that's going to go down. Your chat disconnects all the time? That's really weird, Shira. That's really strange. I'm sorry to hear that, though. Alright, so it doesn't seem to be down here. Let's see, where is he hanging out right now? Private lab's still locked. The door's locked. Well, let's poke around the house and see if we can locate where he's hanging out. Dread house on a hill? That makes it kind of the house on the hill? Will there be betrayal? There will. But what kind of betrayal there will be all depends on what page we flip to. It's a mystery. <laughs> all right. Well, see if the uh, housekeeper is in the kitchen. Maybe we can do something with her. Oh, hello, Sam. Can I get you anything? Not right now, thanks. All right, nothing there. Can we talk to her? We can talk to her, though. I... I just found out what happened to Laura. Everyone knows about the tragedy. Well, I'm new to Oxford, and I didn't know. I'm really sorry. You didn't ask him, did you? I hope to heaven, Samantha, that you weren't asking him painful questions. No. No. Oh, don't. Poor man doesn't need to be reminded. Not that he isn't every day of his blinking life. But he can't stand people talking about it. That's why he won't let anyone come over here. But this house is full of reminders. Laura's pictures are everywhere. Even that calendar is still set to 2002. He won't let me change any of it. I get it. He wants to be reminded of her for his own self, but he can't bear to hear other people talk about it because there's no way they can possibly understand. And anything they say just seems idiotic. Maybe that's right, I don't know. In any case, I thank you to avoid the subject with him completely. Doesn't he have enough troubles on his mind already? Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. I don't think there's anything else to do in here. Let's go ahead and head out. Don't reveal the haunts. Never. Never. Got to keep that secret. That's very important. All right. Uh, is he down in the basement now? We just got to find Dr. Styles now, I think. Pretty sure that's all we have to do. He might be up in his uh, study, too. We should have checked that as well, I think. I will, Rin, I will. I think I'm... I feel like I'm pretty close to what I need to do. Give me just a second. Let's see, is he hanging out in the study? He is not. Alright, give me a little hit, Rin. We're, we're running dangerously low on options here, so I may as well ask. Let's see, we could call Linkweller, maybe? We do have Linkweller's phone number, and we got a phone right here. I suppose we could do that. I don't think we have any point to that just yet. Jota, welcome in. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well, Jota. Good to see you. Not looking for Dr. Styles. All right, so we got to do something different here. Well, I think the Linkweller angle is the only one we haven't explored yet. I'd rather use my cell phone. Less traceable that way. All right. So can we call Linkweller on the cell phone then? Uh, possibly. Oh, we've got all the students, all the students' uh, phone numbers there as well. That's interesting. Uh, we could call them, but I don't see why we'd want to. Alright, so it doesn't look like it's going to let me call Linkweller. Let's see, Dr. Bellman, wire repaired and dog can have water downstairs again. Excellent, very, uh, very handy of you, Dr. Bellman, to get that fixed so quickly. Congratulations. Alright, what else would there be to do? I'm not sure. I feel like we've done just about everything we need to do today. Um, 
Unless we need to go somewhere else, which I don't think we do. No, it still says we've got something to do here at Dread Hill House. Let's see, I need to do something before I track him down. Alright, what else do I need to do? Do we need to put a Scientific American article back? I don't think so, but it's possible. Not like he'll ever find it in there, but we could. Hmm. We did definitely steal... Oh, it involves Laura in a way. Well, that gives me some ideas, because we do know where a bunch of weird reminders of Laura are around the house. Including that picture that we didn't know what the initials were before. Um, which was in the dining hall, I believe. Last time we looked at it, we didn't know about the initials, so let's go look at that now. And see if we get a different reaction now that we know about all that. Just sits there with her tongue poking out just so slightly, Dr. Belvin, that is freaking adorable. That sounds amazing. I like that. All right. And we cannot look at that painting anymore. Dang it. I thought I was on to something there. Well, there's still other paintings of Laura and whatnot to go look at in here. Let's poke around a little bit. Bluffing is just the cutest thing. One of those thing. blonde and elegant types. In other words, nothing like me. All right, she doesn't seem to realize that's Laura. It's, it's fine, though. Um, where were those other pictures we've seen? They're all over the place. See, I don't think we can get into his office yet, because that's been locked every time we've tried. Um, there's a picture on his desk downstairs, too, I think. I believe so, anyway. Check that out. Yeah, there we go. That's the woman from the portrait in the hall. And that's all we get from that. All right, what else could we do here? Getting warmer. All right, that's good. Can we check the appointment book? Two thousand and two. Someone's a pack rat. We cannot? What else is there to see down here? We already swapped out the flowers. We already did put the new flowers down here, so that's already been done. Um, something in the file cabinet, maybe? Possibly. Let's see what's down there. Uh, let's see, we'll check under L. Here we go. No, we already checked in here. This is just where we found Link Willer's article. Letters? Nothing exciting in here. No. File cabinet warmer. All right, we're getting closer. We've already searched Asian? through here, though. Condolence card. What is this? This is signed by a bunch of people in the neurobiology department. I should see if I can find a personnel list to compare it with. We do have one of those. Uh, here we go, phone list. In this dark time, our thoughts and prayers are with you. I'm kind of curious to see who signed it and who didn't. Well, let's take a look. So let's see, Cynthia Bartlett, oops, we can actually mark these off. So Cynthia Bartlett is right there. Fred Chambers, I'm already pretty sure what we're going to find here, but we'll, we'll go through the motions anyway. Fred Chambers, I see him. Gertrude Cloyd is right here, Gertrude Cloyd. Niall Fitzpatrick, where is he? He's right over there. Chad Headley, he's right down there. Leslie Joss is right there with a nice fancy signature. Abraham Linkweller, I don't think we're going to find him. No, we are not. Let's continue on, though. Grizz Lloyd is right there. Eileen McDonald, we got her. Uh, Simon Pissel, wonderful name right here. He's over on this side. Bill Smythe, 
Where is he at? Right there? Uh, David Styles. I don't imagine he's going to be on here. We don't need to cross him off. That's fine. Uh, Ross Tettenton. Uh, is he on here? He is right in the center. Uh, Susan Whittier, who we've already met. She signed right up there. And Isaac Yamin is right there. Abram Linkweller must be the enemy in the department. Which we already kind of figured out because of that incredibly nasty Scientific American Department uh, article. Abram Linkweller must be the enemy in the department. All right. We got that figured out. And that gets us to the next cinema. The head lab rat has arrived. You call us rats one more time and I'll castrate you. Lambs. What? We're lambs, not rats. The Lambs Club. What's that supposed to mean? I like it. It's better than rats. Brilliant, darling. Oh, fine. The Lambs Club. But what about Styles? What about the mad scientist who's sucking our brains dry? He's doing no such thing. Yeah, well, he's weird enough to do it. Come on, Harvey. He's not your punchline. People are always afraid of what they don't understand. Are you so perfect and popular that you can point the finger of weirdness at David Styles? Are any of you? The man has been through hell. His wife was killed right in front of him in an accident. He himself was badly burned. And he must have gone through God knows how many skin grafts. But he's not mentally damaged. Or even weird. I heard it myself from an expert who's seen Dr. Stiles' medical reports. There's nothing wrong with him. He just likes his privacy. And can you blame him when everyone is so vicious? As for me, if I hear one more person pass on that lame gossip, I'm going to personally stuff it back down their throats. So you don't believe the gossip, then? Who told you about Stiles' medical reports? Mr. Headley. I never believed anything bad about Dr. Stiles. The man can do what he likes as far as I'm concerned. My family is legendary for eccentrics. My grandmama liked to get naked on the roof and wave to planes. Well, who doesn't? But what about the track? I've seen the plan for the experiment myself. It's routine. Even the department head approved it. The prank at the track is completely unrelated. Dr. Styles is perfectly normal! System in America. Hundreds of thousands of children in the U.S. are wards of the state, farmed out to private homes, and sometimes home after home after home. The foster family is paid a stipend, leading some families to take in two or three All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are now playing as Dr. David Stiles. So that's a bit of a change of pace right there. And cute contradictory incident. Here's a, here's a plot twist. We're playing as the good doctor now. So let's go ahead and save the game right here since we got a new chapter. All right, and folks, it is super duper late. Holy crap. So I think this is probably going to be a great place to wrap it up for the evening. I hope you had a wonderful time hanging out at the stream. I'm having a blast with this game. I like this one a lot. I hope you are enjoying it too. Um, so we'll wrap it up for today, but we will be back tomorrow. And we're going to be playing more of this game. See if we can make some more progress. We're going to be playing as Dr. David tomorrow. We're going to see what secrets we can learn when we're playing as him. We'll have access to more of the house, I'm sure. And we might even need to hear his thoughts about some of the goings on around here. So that should be interesting. Um, so I hope I will see you all tomorrow. And I hope you had a good rest of your weekend otherwise. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we'll call it right here. But 
we do have one more thing to do before we call it a night. And ladies and gentlemen, as you may know, that is... How about we go see who else is streaming so we can go find somebody fun to go hang out with. That'll be nice. Nice way to wrap things up or just continue your day if you've got more to watch. So make sure to hit follow if you haven't already so you get notified when I go live tomorrow. And while I'm seeing who all is online right now, there are some links in chat that may very well interest you. We've got a link to my Twitter if you want to see what I'm up to outside of the stream. Uh, we've got a link to my YouTube if you want to see any of the other games I have played in the past. And we've got a link to my Discord if you would like to continue the conversation with us outside of the stream. Feel free to jump in there. Everyone is invited. And matter of fact, I know who we're going to go to today. I see exactly who we're going to go to. Someone who popped in earlier and I think who, someone who deserves um, who deserves a smile? Who deserves uh, some friendly faces popping in with them? So, ladies and gentlemen, I would absolutely love it if you would join me as we go say hi to none other than the myth of the legend themselves, Did You Know Gaming? Um, you may know them from their YouTube content. They are now do uh, doing a stream, and they are exactly as entertaining as you would imagine. It's wonderful to hang out there. I love doing it, and you may do so as well. Uh, today they are playing Enter the Gungeon, um, which is a very cool game you may know of, so why don't you pop over there, say hi to them, throw them a follow if you like what they're doing, stay for a while if you'd like, but if you've got other things to do, I will just say as I always do, have a good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you're at in the world, and I'll see you folks tomorrow for some more Grey Matter. Take care of yourselves, till then everybody.